in Harry Potter. He's uh, one of the um, goblins in the bank as well in Gringotts. Oh, no way. Yeah, he's, okay. Uh, Flitwick, I think, is the name. Uh, oh, Flit, you know what? Flitwick is... Uh, Flitwick, is the professor. Griphook is the Grip goblin. Griphook is the goblin yeah. who ends up with the uh, the sword. Yes. Uh, yeah. Flitwick Mac, right? That's his name? Right. Flitwick Mac? Yeah, yeah I think so. He's a right. precursor to the band. We'll see if we <laughs> can... Oh, my God. I, I couldn't follow what you guys... Okay. Flitwick Mac. Uh, let's see if we can get an answer to the... <laughs> Stupid question, which is, I don't see the correct answer up oh, here. Really? This is from Uh-oh. Craig Lagans. Well, I trust Craig. Who but... sang the theme song to Reading oh, Rainbow? At this point, oh. Preston started to sweat. What case? You said who wrote. I believe we have to check the tape. No, I thought he said who wrote the theme song. I no, I said who sang. sang. It's written right here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. Is this the answer that you have? Uh, wow. No, it is not. But you know what? Uh, we're going to accept that one because you found it on Wikipedia. So, oh, okay, uh, good. we will go to Cindy, see if we can get the answer. Hi, Cindy. Good morning. Cindy! Hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, Tina Cindy. Fabric. Tina Fabric. Yeah, that's yeah! correct. Yes, yes. And, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, and that's possibly the answer. Possibly the answer. Not. Now, Nick looked it up, thank you, because, uh, Craig had Shaka Khan. As the answer. Everybody and Shaka Khan? Maybe, maybe, like, you know, Shaka Khan sometimes backs up artists and, and will yeah. sing little extra parts. Maybe it was that. I don't mm. really know. But no, we found definitively. Here it is. <laughs> Tina Fabrique and Cindy got it right. So. Shaka Khan! <laughs> Craig, you're going to have to double check your answers here, man. We count on you for yeah. correct information. All right, so... Uh, she got it right, and we are going to give her a four-pack of tickets for the Philadelphia Wings game versus the Albany Firewolves, and this is Saturday at the Wells Fargo Center. Be there for lacrosse for all, a celebration of the history of diversity of the game. You get your tickets now at wingslax.com. So she, Shaka Khan, did a, thir a third intro that started um, in January of 2000. So there's been, like, uh, multiple singers. There have been, yeah. So there we go. Details. We're screwed. Yeah. We are so screwed. So if, somebody, if somebody had answered Chaka Khan, they wouldn't have been incorrect. No. The correct real answer is Tina Fabrique. And that's uh, that's a correct answer. Well, you get yeah. it. All right, so I'm going to go through some entertainment stories. Dwayne Johnson's mother is okay following a serious car crash in Los Angeles on um, Wednesday. Uh, the Black Adam star shared a photo of the total vehicle on Instagram and wrote, Thursday... Uh, Angels of Mercy watched over my mom as she was in a car crash late last night. She'll survive and continue to get evaluated. Uh, he noted her resilience, adding this woman has survived lung cancer, tough marriage, head-on collision with a drunk driver, and attempted suicide. Wow. Okay, I didn't know about that. Oh, we had the, so there was the, the series. It was basically his life. Uh, and, um, you know, his mother, is to, he, uh, he has a close relationship with his mom mm -hmm. and his dad as well. But, his you know, his dad was a little bit of a, uh, a player. You oh, know, yeah. And cheated okay. around. Okay. All right. Well, she's apparently doing okay. Jennifer Lopez, Ben Affleck, happily married couple. They're making the, ne uh, the necessary shifts to finally spend their lives together. So uh, they're taking the next steps in their marriage, blending their families. And now... Jennifer has put her Bel Air home up on the market for a, a, a nice price tag. You guys, you guys may want to take a look at this. Yeah. If you're house hunting, uh, she has listed it at forty-two point five million dollars. Oh, now this it? this is a gorgeous house, and it has all sorts. Like I, some of these places look a little too stuffy for me. You know, oh, they're yeah. like they're they don't look like a house you can live in. They look like a museum. Yeah, this looks this like a house you could live yeah. in. Yeah, but you know what? What are the taxes? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> surprisingly yeah. low. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta look into that too. Uh, per TMZ, the couple was originally planning to renovate the property, but now J Lo is going to let go of the house for a one hell of a profit. By the way, uh, the actress bought the eight-acre estate from fellow actress Seal Ward. In 2016, for 28 million, and now wants 42.5 million for it. I mean, and I guess with a name like that, with Jennifer yeah. Lopez, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's part of the selling price. It, it is. Huh? It is. Unless she's selling, you know, I don't know how it works out there. I, I can't even remember the last 42 million dollar house I purchased. Right. But, but right. the in this case, I think that that certainly helps. Uh, but just in general, I think the way the real estate is skyrocketed there. You know, is probably uh, accounting for a lot of that as well. But that's uh, that's more than double. I know that's I know. crazy. I know. Or 
Yeah, yeah, that's more than double. This has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but um, Nick and I were talking about this last night, and I just have to give you guys, tell you guys this information. So George Clooney um, was a co-founder of Casamigos, the tequila, right? right. Um, in just three years, he, he was the co-founder. In three years, he sold it for a billion dollars. So in three <laughs> years, he made one billion dollars. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Insane. Uh, yeah. I was wrong. It's not more than double. Uh, it's uh, twenty eight million. It's triple. Two point five. Yeah, it's wow. not, not triple. But still, I mean, it, <laughs> it's I hope it comes furnished. You know. <laughs> so the massive mansion itself is over twelve thousand square feet. Has nine bedrooms, thirteen bathrooms, and a ton of incredible amenities. Dryer. As you would imagine, J Lo's home includes an infinity pool, a thirty seat screening room, a cozy. 100 seat amphitheater. This is gorgeous. A guest right? house and a gym as well. I love this house. Steve, I, yeah, Ugh. we could actually, maybe we could buy it go together. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. we could easily split it and never Why see it. Why don't we other. do it, guys? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Go have these on J I want yeah, the yeah. pool part. Um, at what point, uh, like when you get these giant houses, they, they tend to have more bathrooms than oh. they do bedrooms. I was okay. just going to comment on that, Casey. So, um, so I feel like when you have this money and they you build these houses, more. well, no, because I I know someone who has a house like <laughs> I, I know someone who has a house like this, and okay. I've stayed in it, and it's very important when they build these houses that like. If, if you have guests, if, if any you know any person in the family has their own bathroom, and right. then, I see. Sure. Because and, you, the, the, the the thinking is you're probably going to be entertaining and having a lot of people over. Right. And and the last th thing you want to be doing is is waiting uh, for Lily Tomlin to get out of the bathroom. Well, so and 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 living there as well. So yeah. everyone, ha every child has their own bathroom. Mm. And then yes, if you're entertaining and people are coming over, you're not using those bathrooms. You're using the three that are downstairs. That Why Santa just guests. stunk up the bathroom? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, that makes sense, actually, because you have to think about th this, and like the amphitheater in the back, it, it, for performances and stuff like that, it's not just a house, it's a showpiece. Right, exactly. Right? Look at ah. this pool, Steve. Yeah, it's all, it's it's awesome. We well, just saw a picture of, uh, of uh, the amphitheater with equipment. The drums weren't set up right. They I was telling they you guys about oh, that. I was telling you. What is going to? Wait, never they set got them that up Lord right. Tom over there? Yeah. yeah. Wait, I mean, why is it? Asses. In the hi-hat? Oh why is it God. not set up properly? Toms are all stuck out like this. Come on, Wait, man. Wait, can you explain quickly why it's not set up properly? Yeah, just the, the, the drums are not in place where you could actually hit them uh, if you were to sit down oh, and like play that Oh, like you wouldn't be able to play how You wouldn't be able to reach them. Oh, exactly. Maybe the liar whore. Yeah. Do I think? What they need is a full-time consultant. Yes. And I'm the man to do it. Yeah. Liar yeah, you're the whore, drum boy. Liar whore, you I'm, know it. I'm J-Lo's drum boy. <laughs> no, you need to be a drum consultant on movies. I do need to. All right, so uh, Jennifer and Ben have been looking for a place to share for some time, and they are... Tell me, how are the schools in this area? Uh, they are allegedly still looking for a place to call their dream home. They reportedly... Uh, previously put in and offered another Bel Air home that included 17 bathrooms yeah, in March. That place was one of those places, Kathy, that looked cold and antiseptic. This looks... They should beautiful. stay yeah. at this house. They were apparently going to shell out $60 million for Beverly Hills Estate. Uh, per the report on the sale, they are in a rental at the moment and are on the hunt for the right home. Both of them can uh, share alongside their families. Uh, previously, Ben sold his own home in the Pacific Palisades for 28.5 mil last year. Jesus. He also owns a Georgia estate where they have their wedding celebration over the summer. Um, and between them, they have five kids that they share yeah, they're blended wild. in their blended family. Get one of those tiny houses. See how that works. See that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Live in a tiny house. Look at the gym. Look at the gym in this freaking wow, house. I don't like the floors in that gym. It's stupid. I mean, if you're really working out, you don't want to be sweating all over wood floors. You have people that can wipe that up for you. I yeah. guess. Just yeah. ask the drum right. boy to do it. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> ben I'm Affleck the drum was, boy. I'm not the sweat boy. Ben Affleck was a pool boy at one point. I know that. That's right. Yes, yeah. that's right. He was Jennifer Garner's. That's true. Yeah, another Jennifer. Pool boy. Yeah, well, yeah I got that way. Hell, I got to give you two seconds. I'll find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can stall for you if you want. Don't worry about it. So, uh, yes, it, when they were together as a couple. Right. Uh, it was standard for Ben to go out and handle the, you know, skimming and uh, changing the uh, the chlorine. And sometimes he would sample the water and make sure that the pH levels were right. And uh, when all said and done, I'm screwing he up was here. the pool boy. I'm under pressure. I we're now fight. moving on. All right. All right. <laughs> Jane Fonda's eating disorder was once so severe. Uh, that she didn't think she would live to see her 30s. It's okay, Steve. You don't have to find it. No, it's not right. And you know uh, she did? She, she, she says that that eating order was caused by the skull sealer. I apologize <laughs> to anyone who's been offended by my fictional creations, Chrysogon, the philosopher of evil, and the skull sealer. 
Uh, okay, we may as well get the pool boy. I'd like to apologize to Jennifer Garner and her pool boy, Ben Affleck, for incorporating them into my fantasy life. There we go. So the 85-year-old, Jane Fonda, uh, said that she, uh, in her 20s, she said, I was starting to be a movie actor, and I suffered from bulimia. Very, very bad. I led a secret life. I was very, very unhappy. I assumed I wouldn't live past 30, and I didn't go out. I didn't hardly date because I was unhappy and I had this eating disorder. So I didn't know that about her. No, never, uh, never her, that. In her 20s. And then she got more health conscious later on. And oh, she was the, uh, with, with the, uh, the the cookbooks and the, uh, the, the, the exercise. exercise. Jane yeah. found her workout was huge. Might have been the most lucrative thing she's ever done in her career. Uh, the 80 for Brady star said she didn't quit until she was in her 40s. Wow. Yeah. Adding that Prozac helped her deal with her anxiety. Wow. All right, we'll see how this works out. Matt, Law Matt Lauer may be plotting his return. I'm back! Uh, once uh, One source told Page Six he thinks that he should be able to have a comeback. He does. While Lauer's friends are said to be pushing him to make a movie like Megyn Kelly and put himself back in the games on his own terms, uh, the Today Show co-anchor was fired in November 2017 for inappropriate sexual behavior in the workplace, of course. Uh, he, I, mean, I remember the story was that in his office he had a button that would close the door and lock it from his desk. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Which was kind of depicted in uh, The Morning Show, was yeah. it not? Yeah. A lot of that uh, Steve Carell character was based on stuff that happened with Matt Lauer. Yeah. Uh, so here's a follow-up to yesterday's story about Jessica Simpson. She had revealed that she once had a secret romance with a major movie star, only to find out he was already taken. Well, Page Six dissected the clues uh -huh. oh, wow. of her blind item published as the Amazon original story movie star. Uh, they always say they're single and came to the conclusion that the mystery man is probably yes. Mark Wahlberg. Oh. Uh, she claimed that she first met her mystery man at the 2001 VMAs while he was wearing jeans and a T-shirt, and that's the exact outfit that Wahlberg wore at the event that year. Um, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think, right. that's, I think that's, so he, he was, um, he's gone through a change in his life, right? Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's super religious now, yeah, and yeah, he's yeah. Uh, morally uh, right. straight and all that stuff. So. And uh, nothing much came of that, but it, listen, we don't know for sure. It yeah. could have been him, but... but yeah. I think he was, was more of a player back then, yeah, probably. absolutely. He, yeah. You know, that's what he did. He did all yeah. the underwear ads and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know those underwear ad people. Oh, man. Oh, please. You Come on, man. Turn me on. Calvin Klein, right? <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, by the way, Vanessa Hudgens is engaged to Cole Tucker. Yay! Who's uh, he? TMZ reported that uh, the Colorado Rockies player popped oh. the question uh, sometime after the end of uh, at the end of 2022, and apparently uh, they are officially engaged. So she's going to be yeah, hopefully walking Good score down the for aisle him. later this year. Absolutely, uh, it's a boy for Heather Ray L. M uh, Mousa and uh, Tarek L. Mousa, the proud papa. Announced the news on Instagram Thursday alongside uh, the little one's first photo, writing, our baby boy is here. Uh, Mama and baby are happy, healthy, tired, but doing well, and our hearts are so happy. I can't follow the the basic uh, tree of this family and the Ta various shows and the mouses and the mooses. and the. Mm -hmm. I, I need to forget the mouse for a moment. <laughs> forget the mouse? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Why don't you forget the moose? Mousa. For a moment. It's um, just too much for but people I don't care about. What was the name of the, the gal? Here's a Christina. Yeah, the Pac. Something like what? That. P, P A A C K. <laughs> Pac. The really hot. Yeah. The whole yes. gal. Yeah. 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 I, yeah I, that's no, his, his ex wife. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right. Pac. <laughs> so, Dave Bautista. May not be in a rom-com just yet, but the action star is taking on a gritty, surreal adventure story with his next film. He teased his upcoming project with screenwriter Drew Pierce, uh, who's behind such uh, movies as Hobbs and Shaw and Hotel Artemis, as a combination of the uh, Safdie brothers and Martin Scorsese's sensibilities. He said, I have a project in the works with Drew Pierce again, and we've collaborated on this film. It's called The Cooler. And it's basically about this crazy weekend of a guy who's a bouncer in Miami who is just trying to redeem himself. Uh, so it's that, but it's kind of an after hours meets uncut gems, he said. Well, there's about nine movies he mentioned. Yeah. Uh, it's quirky and funny and suspenseful and thrilling, uh, but it's also a lot of heart. And I really, uh, really insist on doing stuff that's got heart at the core of it. 
Uh, After Hours is an interesting it movie. It is. Uh, Griffin Dunn. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long, long time. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, trippy. Yeah, 24-hour yeah, bizarre yeah. I adventure. I like movies like that. that I do, too. Within a, uh, like a day. Yeah, you know? a set period of time. Yeah. There's a great movie from years ago. They remade it with uh, Dennis Quaid called DOA, where he is, in, at the beginning, he says, I'm going to find my murderer. I've been poisoned, and there's nothing that can stop the poison. And he spends the next, you know, 24 hours looking for his murderer. Uh, the Denzel movie with uh, Ethan Hawke. Uh, Training Day. Day. Training oh, Day. I love that's that. A, that's a good 24-hour yeah. flick, too. Uh, Bautista gave an update on the script process, adding Drew's uh, busy. He was busy on Mission Impossible, so he's working on that, and now we get a few issues. Uh, he's got a few issues that he's got to deal with, and hopefully he'll start writing the script soon. Uh, by the way, he recently, uh, Dave Bautista recently uh, told uh, in an interview that he feels... Too old to portray Bane in the DCU because people have, have recommended that. He'd be perfect for Bane. But he's opening for joining the Superman universe as Lex Luthor. So who knows if that would end up happening, but he just said that that's something he'd like to do. Uh, so according to James Cameron, Rose probably could have saved Jack at the end of Titanic <laughs> if she had given him her life jacket. Mm-hmm. So that could have worked because she had the door. She did have the door. And she could have given him the life jacket. A, wait, she had a she life jacket? She had a life jacket on. Remember, it had the whistle. Yeah. When, when they uh, <laughs> trying to blow the whistle, her lips are too cold and she can't do it. Dude, what the hell? Right, the, the, Rose! The, the, <laughs> is that the whistle? Yeah. No, that's her calling. And then and then she oh. finally grabs the whistle off the dead guy. Okay. No, actually, she jumped into the water, swam across to a uh, one of the... Uh, guys from the the crew of the Titanic grabbed his whistle and blew it. Isn't that how it happened? I don't remember. Kathy, it's your favorite movie. You should know. I don't remember. He kept saying, come back. Come back. All right, so anyway, we have a clip of... Yeah, he, uh, he already floated down. He was dead at that point. When that's he right. Whistle, yeah. Hey, we have, we have a clip of... Uh, I think he we swam back up, Nick. <laughs> he did not. Of uh, James Cameron talking about Two this. clips, Wait, yes. Oh, okay. All right, let's see if uh, they are sent over. Casey's got a... By the way, this is for the uh, this National Geographic... <laughs> Titanic, the movie, 25 years after, and they go through what they got right and what they got wrong. Here we go. Jack and Rose are able to get on the raft, but now they're both submerged in dangerous levels of freezing water. Out of the water, when violent shaking was helping him, and projecting it out, he could have made it pretty long, like hours. And he stabilized. He got into a place where if we projected that out, he just might have made it until the lifeboat got there. Okay. okay. Then what does clip two say? Here we go. Jack might have lived, but there's a lot of variables. I think his thought process was, I'm not going to do one thing that jeopardizes her. And that's 100% in character. Okay. All right, so he sacrificed himself. He also says that if Jack uh, had been able to get up on the door and was able to sit up, like not lay across it, mm -hmm. that would have helped both of them stay savable. <sighs> also, it's it, a movie that's fiction. It's yeah. a stupid <laughs> argument. And Get over it. Yeah. It's the, how they wrote it. Yeah. And both of them never existed. Yeah. And it's a disgrace. Right. So just a couple more quick things, and we got to move on. Um, although Scott Lang from Ant-Man yes. may be fictional, his autobiography is not. Marvel announced yesterday that uh, Ant-Man's memoir called Look Out for the Little Guy yeah. will be available for purchase from Amazon. And this announcement was made by Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumanium star, Quantumania star Paul Rudd in a clip posted to the Marvel Studios' social media accounts. So if you like these little added-on things, that might be something that you'll want to pick up. I think that's pretty cool. So uh, it is actually a faux biography? Yeah. Autobiography? Yeah, yeah. All right, and then uh, NBC has renewed Night Court for a second season. Uh, Deadline reports that the mm -hmm. revi revival uh, tallied the most viewers for any comedy premiere since The Connors debuted in 2018. Has anybody watched it? No, it but I want to. NBC's best comedy premiere since Will and Grace in 2017. Wow. Yeah. You know, that show was super popular. It, it was, was fun, too. It was just in that, uh, at the time, Cosby was on and they had, NBC was, it was must-see television. Yep. All right, uh, we got new movies opening this weekend. <laughs> Let's tell you about them. All right, we'll begin with 80 for Brady. 
It's a comedy starring Jane Fonda, Sally Field, uh, Lily Tomlin, uh, and 80 for Brady. And also uh, Rita Moreno's in it, yes. too, right? Uh -huh. 80 for Brady is inspired by the true story of four best friends living life to the fullest when they take a wild trip to the 2017 Super Bowl. Uh, to see their hero Tom Brady play. Hour and 38 minutes long. It's PG-13. Wide theater release today. Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 64%. Not bad. Knock at the Cabin. Mystery thriller. Starring Dave Bautista, Jonathan Groff, Ben Aldridge. While vacationing at a remote cabin, a young girl and her parents are taken hostage by four armed strangers who demand that the family make an unthinkable choice to avert the apocalypse. With limited access to the outside world, the family must decide what they believe... Before all is lost. Hour and 40 minutes long. It's rated R. White Theater released today. Rotten Tomatoes with a 71%. That's okay. not bad. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Casey saw it and enjoyed it. I did, and I probably would give it, yeah, around 70%. I mean, there's a... Uh, I, I think it was pretty riveting. Um, and, but you know, like, there's no... I didn't think there was any big crazy twist at the end. Okay. Yeah, I actually... Yeah. I'm glad that he's gotten away from that, feeling obligated mm -hmm. to give us, like, an O. Henry plot twist at the end. Yeah. Because, I mean, I, I think he's really been on his game for a while. Uh, you know, uh, old, some people had issue with, I really enjoyed it. Mm, I haven't seen it. Uh, so, number three is The Amazing Maurice, animated comedy starring Hugh Laurie, Amelia Clark, and Gemma Atherton, Atherton. Uh, Maurice is a streetwise ginger cat who comes up with the money-making scam by befriending a group of talking rats. When Maurice and the rodents reach the stricken town of Bad Blintz, uh, they meet a bookworm named uh, Malicia, and their little con soon goes down the drain. So this really happened? Hour and 33 minutes, rated PG, wide theater release today, and Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 74%. All respectable. All right, we're ready for clips now. Dave Bautista is used to keeping audiences on their toes, but what happens when it happens to him? And here, he discusses the tedious way that M. Night Shyamalan recruited him for the Knock at the Cabin film. Here we go. We had a conversation, and Knight didn't offer me a job or say anything about <laughs> Knock at the Cabin. And then uh, we set up another Zoom call for when I get home, and I think we had another conversation, maybe two more conversations, uh, before he actually told me there was a project he was working on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, big whoop, no one cares. Uh, it's in theaters now, as we said just a little while ago. All right, next clip. <laughs> Jane Fonda, Sally Field, Rita Moreno, and Lily Tomlin team up in the true story of 80 for Brady. In this clip, Jane Fonda talks about filming with... Tom Brady. His presence just filled up the whole trailer, and I, I got so weak in the knees, yeah. And he was so sweet. Could you shut up? <laughs> 80 for Brady is in theaters today <laughs> as well. That's I want it. to see that, I have to say. That's what I have in the entertainment report for you this morning. All right, we got a lot going on today. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, Friday stuff, giving away our Word of the Week prize, all that. We have uh, uh, comedian uh, Kelsey Cook who's going to be at Helium, stopping by this morning as well. And we're getting ourselves ready for Casey's Big Game Adventure, which we announced yesterday. Casey, Jackie, and Kyle are hitting the road again. They're, as we're saying, John the road again. John on the road. Only this time, they're driving to Phoenix. They're driving me to Phoenix! John the road again. All right, so, uh, but they have missions in mind, like we did last time at Casey's Big Adventure when he drove to Los Angeles with the crew. And it's a Philly thing, as the song says. So since it's a Philly thing, Casey is going to take some Philly things with him, and that is to kind of foster a positive vibe, some good juju, as you said, Steve. Bring the good luck. We're bringing what we are bringing, those Philly things there. Now, we are... are, are adding some of our own Philly things yes. and some stuff you would expect, like, you know, uh, tasty cakes and some stuff from Wawa and, and the, this and that. But we want some of your personal items to take with us. Uh, small, the they, little tchotchkes. Casey's going to have a briefcase that he's going to put stuff in. Things that you're okay with, because they're not going to make it back. They're going to be yes. used as a as a sort of protective sacrifice. Yes, I like it. And uh, so you can drop by the studios today and drop those off. We're out front in uh, one ballot plaza. We'll have an intern out there with a uh, there's a tent set up, an yes. MMR tent, ready to collect it. If you don't see anybody there, don't don't worry. Just swing by and and uh, get out. Somebody will come out. They'll probably be in the little vestibule there. Yes, it's quite chilly out this morning. Uh, so we are, are going to gather those items, and then Monday, not only are Casey, Jackie, 
and uh, Kyle going, but we need to add a Philly thing to that. And the Philly thing that we're adding is Anthony Gargano, <laughs> midday host at 97.5 The Fanatic. He's a Philly thing. And he's so excited for this. He can't get more Philadelphia. Yeah. No. Uh, Casey yeah. was on his show yesterday talking about it and just looking at him. Oh I'm just God. like, dude, this is, <laughs> he embodies this city. Yeah. He's uh, so funny. And he was using words that, like, we all know, but Kyle. Kyle didn't Kyle's, understand what he was talking about. Dude, Kyle's like, I didn't know. What uh, do you mean? He didn't know what scratch meant, like, as far as money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, you know? And he's like, I don't know what you're saying. I was like, Kyle goes, I don't understand some of the words that you're saying. He was talking about bail scratch yeah, 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 and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. It was really funny. Funny. Wait, how did Anthony respond to that? Hey, like, Anthony, like, how do you respond to somebody who doesn't know, like, a You're, common word? Yeah, or, you a know, colloquialism. Like, he was like, what, you know, so it was just a bit of, like, what do you mean, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be interesting, uh, nonetheless. And, uh, and on the way, uh, the route that will take them across America to Phoenix, Casey and company are going to stop at every Philadelphia along the way. And yes, there's a Philadelphia, Tennessee. There's a Philadelphia, Arkansas. There is a Philadelphia, New Mexico. Yep. And they will be stopping in each and every one of these cities. It's like it's like um like charging up when um yeah, that's it. When Thor uh, directed lightning towards Iron Man. Yes. And he he charged up that much more. We're getting the power of all these Philadelphias. Yes. Together. Al along the way. So they will be picking up uh, momentum and steam and, and, and all of this at each one of these Philadelphia stops and they're going to plant a gold Steven Singer green rose. It's dipped in gold. It's painted green. You According to Celtic law. This is what we have right. to do. And they will plant one of these, these in each Philadelphia in America. I love it. To get ready for the game. So this is a hell of an adventure uh, that's shaping up. And by the way, it is sponsored by friends at Duncan. We love you guys. Uh, they will be driving in a green Subaru Ascent on loan from our friends at Subaru of America. And uh, the guys are going to be staying at uh, Marriott Hotels around the country uh, to get a good night's sleep to get them ready for the next day's drive. We'll be checking. We'll be doing a lot with them. And I, what I really love, Casey, is your commitment to the stupid station that you yeah. said earlier that a woman had offered you a small love statue, oh. but because it was red, you could not take it. By the way, uh, if you have any, <laughs> do you have any Simply Red on your uh, music system? I do not. You have to get not. that out of there. Yeah, hey, I would have to get oh, that out of there. Oh, but a love statue? That would have been perfect. I know. I know, but it you is. can't. It's red. Yeah. He knows. And it's also apparently not like we have one here in Philly, but they got them all over the country. So. Yeah, but it's that's a Philly, Philly thing. thing. That is absolutely a Philly thing. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Whatever. It's not Listen, Casey is the he, he's the person in charge. He's the head priest of Stupid Stitch. He is. And he will be handling this. He's our Pope of Su Stupid Stitch. He's our Grand Moff Tarkin. That's the one that, that I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I'm like Kyle. I don't know what these words mean. It's like scratch. Yeah. All right. So uh, it gets started on Monday, and uh, we're excited about it. Now, there's another thing coming up that we're going to make an announcement about uh, concerning uh, Eagles fans. Maybe we'll get to that around Bizarre File Time. We'll roll yes. that info out. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. Preston and Steve. On 93.3 WMMR. For two years, it disappeared. But now, the sporting event, unlike any other. I'm sure you heard about this, but it's a big announcement. Princess Kate and Prince William are expecting their third child yeah. together. Yeah. It is official. Kensington Palace confirmed on Monday that they are already, of course, they are already the parents to Prince George IV, and who is four. I'm sorry, not the fourth. Prince George is four. <laughs> How did you pull that one off? <laughs> and uh, Princess Charlotte, who I is... I ricocheted off the ceiling. Uh, who is two. The Royal Highness, here's the official uh, announcement uh, from Kensington Palace. It said, their Royal Highness... The Royal Highness says... The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are very pleased to announce that the Duchess of Cambridge is expecting their third child, Harry the Fourth, the Queen, the Queen and of England member and of members both of Parliament. In conjunction with the Benny Hill estate, <laughs> <laughs> they got both. Uh, both families uh, are delighted and Ringo. with the news. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ringo and Benny Hill. <laughs> Step it up. Fish and chips, fox hunts, tallywacker. Tallywacker. <laughs> 
So uh, Kate is again facing an acute form of morning sickness. Sometimes she had grappled with uh, during her first two pregnancies. It's um, yeah. it's completely debilitating. There's a do they have the name of it there? It's it's uh, yeah yeah it's called uh, hypermesis. Uh, gravidarum. Right, so she's uh, her, her level of nausea and everything is off the charts. Sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Harry she had it with, with each yeah, 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 exactly. So she actually canceled an appearance Monday morning due to the illness. Um, and they had said that uh, in a statement to as with her previous two pregnancies, the Duchess is suffering from hypermesis uh, gravidarum. Uh, her Royal Highness will no longer carry out her planned engagement at the Hornsey Road Children's Center in London today. A uh, 35-year-old royal is expected less than three months, uh, is reportedly, I'm sorry, less than three months pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and they only went public with the information because of how sick she is. Uh, Are you okay in there, sweetheart? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like some milk of magnesia? <laughs> <laughs> The prince recently discussed Kate's it parents to be in a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the prince recently discussed Kate's parenting skills in glowing terms and admitted that uh, there are good days and bad days for every parent. He had said, "We well, as the uh, the other parents in the room will testify, there's wonderful highs and there's wonderful lows. Uh, it's been quite a change for me personally. I'm very lucky in the support I have from Catherine. Uh, she's an ama amazing." <laughs> <laughs> She's an amazing mother and a fantastic wife. Love between a man and a woman is a beautiful thing. Especially if it's on video. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't you agree? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'd have to yeah. agree with you on that. <laughs> and and as wonderful as expressing that love through human touch and yeah. and uh and and well. Getting it on. Right. I'm being nice because Bill's here this morning. Oh, I know. All right. This is about sex. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the withdrawal method. Okay, where you go to the bank and you take everything out in one <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. No, also known as the pullout method. Yeah. Uh, is being used twice by twice as many men as a decade earlier. Uh, there this are... is, for, is a form of birth control. Yeah. It is the most, it is, it is a risky proposition. Oh, yeah. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it um, uh, and that's, that's, I don't know if that's, that's not good news. Listen to this. While 10% of unmarried men between the ages of 15 and 44 use this form of birth control in 2002, that number jumped to 19% in 2015, according to the Center for Disease Control. Yeah, it, but, but the use of condoms is on the rise, but still only a third of men wear them. So in, in my condom days, I, my brand, purchasable at the local mobile station, Bearback. Bareback? Yeah. Really? No. Wow. I was a Trojan guy. Trojan guy. Trojan I went bread. with the most popular product. Trojan bread. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, do they still have the machines in, in men's bathrooms? I haven't seen them in a long time. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the dispensers you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, on the weekends, I work as a lot lizard. <laughs> ah. It's good to know that yeah, those yeah. are there. Yeah. You sure you're a woman? Yeah. I, ha I have on rare occasions seen them before, Case. That's where I saw them for the first time as a child. There was a, a bar across the street from our swim club. Go buy daddy some condoms. <laughs> and no, but I, I didn't know what condoms were. I just knew that they had a machine there. Yep. And so I went over there. I bought some out of there. I bought a French tickler and a regular one. I was oh, going to yeah. ask if they had French ticklers or <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> And then I brought it back to the pool and I inflated them like they were balloons. Of course. <laughs> and there was like an adult who was like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Want to have a pool party? <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Uh, this is a dream come true. Um, according to Planned Parenthood, about 27 of 100 women will get pregnant with her partner uh, when her partner uses the, uh, uh, the withdrawal as uh, control. Comparatively, only about nine out of every 100 women on a contraceptive pill will become pregnant in a year. I um, have you ever seen just one fireman on a hose? That's kind of what I'm like. So uh, with the uh, with the whole withdrawal thing, like I just I'm, I'm I have no control. Okay. Yeah. You probably took it one level into <laughs> yes. the uncomfortable bill area. Yeah. About exactly how you discharge, dude. Okay. Here. We're going to move along now to something else. So we do support our local firefighters. Of course. Yes. Of course. But we had um, four listeners come in. We had Mel, Frank, Kat, and Victoria. Because we had been talking about 
uh, the movie It, which is opening on Friday. I'm going to go see it on Saturday. I already got my tickets. I'm ready. I'm seeing it Friday. All right. So what we did is we took these uh, these four listeners, Mel, Frank, Cat, and Victoria, and we we put them in another room with Dr. Stephen Rosenberg, Philadelphia's number one hypnosis, uh, hypnotist, uh, the Thor of hypnosis. The Thor. He's been referred to quite often yeah. <laughs> as the Thor of hypnosis. But I, I want to, uh, it's going to take a minute, but they're, they're in the other room. I want to bring our listeners in. Aren't you? And I, we're going to have them meet some people. Meet some people. Aren't you pulling for them? Yeah, yeah. I think it would be awesome. <laughs> I, if, I, it'd uh, be so cool. Yeah, if they were able to uh, get past their fears. But we are going to set the stage here. They're, they're making their way in now. There's Kat, and uh, here Mel comes looks scared. Mel. Mel doesn't look happy. And you have uh, Victoria. She was the most scared. And uh, Frank is uh, wearing his glasses. He's got uh, a vision issue, so uh, it, we, we can't quite read him from his eyes. So right. why don't you guys come on over to the microphones over here. And uh, First of all, let's see how you're feeling. Kat, you were the first one in. How are you feeling after that session with Dr. Rosenberg? I'm feeling pretty good. Okay. I'm uh, more relaxed, more all right. calm. Good. Yeah, he, he, it it was it was definitely calming. And okay, he, okay. Uh, but that, now what you may learn is that from now on you're going to smoke. No, uh, no, yeah, that's <laughs> uh, they, they replace the one trade off. Smoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mel, replace your clown fear with a desire to smoke. Mel, you looked really nervous when you walked in here. Is it the fact that we have the room decorated with uh, balloons and circus fair? Does that bother you at all? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's bothered me quite a bit. Oh, okay. really? I was really relaxed until I saw the balloons and the big uh, tent okay. behind me. Then let's go to Victoria. Hello there, Victoria. How you doing? Um. Shaking. All right. Okay. All right, and then fa- last, let's let's talk to uh, Frank. How do you feel? How, what did you think of the session? Did uh, did it resonate with you at all? Not really. Not really. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Well, what would you just so you do you, you just don't like clowns? Correct. We have some clowns here. Okay. Right. And what we we're gonna we're not gonna have nope. people screaming and yelling and running in and going crazy or anything like that. No. We just wanted to get your initial reaction. When we bring a clown into the studio, <laughs> Mel is already. Star- you look like you've gone into. Uh, she is. You're staring off She's into white. the distance. This should be fun. Mel. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I'll be good. Mel's okay. crying, guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think Mel. We should Mel do you yep. want to take a seat, Mel? Are you good? Okay. All right. All right. All right. So. This is a heavy metal version of sending in the clowns. We're bringing in our first clown. This is Cheeks, by the way. Cheeks is a female clown. Yes, yeah, so Cheeks is coming. Cheeks, just stay over by Nick. Don't yeah. don't get any closer. Uh, uh, Mel, how you... Look, do you, is Cheeks is fairly pleasant, right? Yeah, Cheeks is good. Okay, okay Cheeks, Cheeks is good. Could Cat. you normally be this close to a clown? What? Could you normally be this close to a clown? Uh, my other... Past instances have kind of been fight or flight, so I've just run. Okay. okay. All right. So well, you're this doing is, great. This is, this is good. Hey, doing good. Good. well. Cat, you're not looking no, at her. No, she's not looking at all. I, I don't like the black lipstick. It's the black I, lipstick. Yeah. Victoria. <laughs> Victoria is not looking at her either. She's just to her left. Uh-huh. And you're doing okay. You should yeah. feel my pulse because my pulse isn't doing okay. Okay, but can you, you see? Can you look fun. at? Can you look at her? No, I'm good. Really? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. You don't want to look at her. Mm-mm. Because, okay, so we, we've gone to, this was the easiest level, by the way. We're going to bring it up just a notch. Let's bring in Grin next, oh please. Uh, oh, Grin. Connor, let Grin come into the uh, the studio. Now, be nice, Grin. Come on in. Send in. All right, here comes. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, here's Dude. Grin. He's horrible. Victoria's crying now. Victoria, you oh, crying? she is? Yeah, yep. she is. Okay. <laughs> Frank, how you doing? If it wasn't for the fact that I don't have enough money for bail, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. It's, yeah. it's wild that his reaction is to to attack. 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 I can see that, though. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to bring in our last clown, and we'll do this quickly, and then we'll we'll get them out of here because I think it's getting to be too much. Yeah, and get guys. the assessment. So right, other clowns, Carnage. step back. Got Let, the- let's bring Carnage in. Carnage is the, he's the head honcho, and he is... Uh, not only is he wearing the bib overalls, but he also has a, uh, a chicken hanging around his neck, uh, which he was squeaking. And uh, Carnage, come on over to the microphone. How you doing, man? Good, good. How's it going, guys? Good. It's good to see you, as always, sir. It's kind of tough to miss these guys when they no, show they're up. No, they're awesome. Yes. And they, they're, believe it or not, at the camp, a lot of times, kids will come up to them because they think they're so cool. So you guys hearing them speak in normal voices, does that make a difference? Yeah, no, I, I'd say definitely hearing them talk is one thing, and just physically seeing them and hearing, like, sounds sound effects is another so that horn like triggered me oh my god (laughs) carnage is leaning in towards her she is oh he's handing her a bloody rag that's probably not a good idea and then cat how are you doing now uh yeah seeing him just walk in was 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 it made your heart race and stomach drop and then when when they start talking it's 
It's all right. Okay. All right. I think we're making strides I think here. So. Casey, Does anybody want to hug them? Go uh, ahead. A clown? Yes. Uh, no. Mel is saying no. Don't let Frank right. say no. Cat, would you be open to a hug from one of these clowns? I'll hug a clown. Show yeah. Yeah. Breaking down barriers here. All right, Kat. No, let's not have them. No, come no, no. Over. You come over. You, you go to the classes. All right. So, we go. so we're gonna uh, all a group hug. A gr- look at this. Wow. Get a picture of this. This is wonderful. That's re- now that was that was special. Uh, Victoria. You, okay. All right, Victoria. Oh, hey. All right, Victoria. Mel, you don't have to. Don't worry. No, Mel, you're fine. All right, so Victoria's getting in. She's actually smiling. She feels so and she's closing her eyes at the same time. So we're going to get a really good picture for you. Let me ask Mel. Would you like to do it or no? Sure. All right. She's, oh. she's diving in. She's going to do it. We're making friends. We're making friends. <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. Mel, look at Mel's face. You're doing a great job. Oh, yes, I'm on. All right, Frank, we're not even going to answer. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to volunteer that. Yeah, you probably don't, right. do you? No. no, no, no. He doesn't. Right. Oh, my Is this God. Real? Are you really doing that? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's Very good. awesome. I love that. Let's hear it for Mel and Frank and Kat and Victoria. They did wonderful. Fear of clowns. Getting over it right here on the Preston and Steve Show. Yes, we have from the Van Fozzi. Let's give some love, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I walked right. in. There's a whole uh, studio big adventure, big lot. game adventure this time around uh, is going to be leaving our parking lot here at One Battle Plaza on Monday, driving across the country, making our way to Phoenix uh, and stopping at every Philadelphia along the way. Philadelphia, Tennessee, Philadelphia, Arkansas, Philadelphia, New Mexico. And it's part of the trip. What is this? One, two, three, and... Ah, he love. So we're spreading, yeah, we're spreading love from Philly all all over. Good juju, good love. The United States. And this morning we are uh, collecting items to be taken. We're grabbing Philly things because it's a Philly thing and uh, taking them along the route. And uh, we're collecting those this morning. Really don't expect to get a whole lot, but all we need is a little bit. One of the things we are going to get, I got an email. uh, Very cool. uh, From a gentleman I know named Jack Willard who uh, works for the uh, Battleship New Jersey. And he said that, uh, he goes, how about a piece of the New Jersey teak deck from the battleship wow. to take with you? That's pretty wow. cool. I'm like, dude, that's awesome. He offered a six-foot-long plank. Wow. <laughs> I said, if we can get that down to six inches. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be better off. So uh, Caroline Jones, who is from uh, the battleship New Jersey, is going to stop by this morning and drop off a piece of that iconic Military uh, piece of hardware to yes, take with us. Yes, legendary. And, rep- and it is part of Philly. To represent the area. And by the way, they've lit it up green. Yes. Uh, for the uh, for the birds. I love that. Which is pretty awesome. And uh, if you've never been to the battleship, I highly recommend you go there. It's really it's a really cool tour, and it's a, a beautiful piece of history right there. <sighs> Should we take some artillery? Just sure. for the you yeah, one of the, one of the big guns. Yeah, thirty inch gun. One of their uh, one of their projectiles. Yeah. I, I've yeah. received uh, messages from people on social media who are, are going to attempt to get over here. And this person, obviously, this is last minute, so you know it, it, we're, we'll see. What we we get today, but um, a lot of people are bringing sentimental things who want to get them over here. Pictures of someone who they would have loved to have made the game. Someone who perhaps has passed. Yeah, I love the idea of confetti from the victory parade. All of that stuff is exactly what we're looking yeah, for. Yeah, I have confetti from the actual Super Bowl that some uh, listener, I wish I could remember their name, but mm-hmm. they gave me a little jar, and I'm going to take a couple of pieces, not all of them. Yeah, yeah. Because those, those little pieces of confetti, that means something to me. Okay. All right. Yeah. So stuff like that. That's what we're collecting this morning. So stop by the studio until uh, 10 a.m., I believe, or the end of the show, whatever. Yeah. We'll be uh, collecting those items. we got a tent set up out in front here for you. Um, by the way, you know what? I think this is technically the junk drawer. Oh! Uh, yeah, because right. I've got a few different things that I want to go through. Some of, some of them are Eagles-related. Um, and I got this from our... our oh, yeah, let me... I'm sorry. I yeah, did, pretend that you're going through a drawer. Let me pretend I'm going through the drawer and finding a story. 
Uh, this is from our buddy Ike Richmond. He sent over a press release. Uh, a guy named uh, John Calvecchio is the owner of a Doylestown-based sports. Uh, it's called Sports Connection. Yeah. Uh, sports collectible and sneaker boutique. Mm. You familiar with it, Kath? No, I popped up. I'll tell you after you've okay. done this. So apparently he made the commitment to refund every in-store purchase over $300 from Black Friday until January 29th if the Eagles win. Whoa. Uh, wait, why? It's, it's a stunt. Just a promotion. Oh, yeah, what? it's yeah. a promotion. But he made this back. This was something he... He didn't just do this. Oh, this no, was no. before he, this he knew back. they were going to this. <laughs> well, they were 13 and 1 when he did it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. You know, they, they look pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. Look, look solid. You know, that's a great record. So, uh, <laughs> and then after they advanced to the uh, league championship, uh, he's one win away from refunding all of his customers' purchases. Uh, and what's funny. the time frame for the purchases? Uh, from November 25th, Black Friday, yeah. until January 29th. That's <laughs> a lot. Yeah. It's a this line. is like what that mattress guy does, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah exactly. Similar thing. Uh, so a local version of that. And so if you've bought anything, uh, but it, it had to be over $300. Okay. Uh, so anything. Okay. And, and there's plenty of uh, memorabilia and cards and stuff like that they would have, I would imagine. And they, they it's a sneaker boutique, so you could spend over $300. Absolutely. On sneakers. But he's going to apparently refund all of those. I assume you've had to hang on to your receipt and everything uh -huh. um, if they uh, if they win at all. Over 300, does it top out at a certain level? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Man, I, don't know. I saw these sneakers that I wanted to get, and then I was like, uh, you know, I can't get them right now because they haven't, they haven't been game tested and stuff. But they are these beautiful Air Jordan 1s. That are gr that are white and Kelly green and gray, like they are so perfect. But yeah, well, you know, you'd be exactly. They haven't been game tested. Everything has to be game I tested. Just, I, I don't get it. You guys know me. I don't get yeah. the sneaker culture at all. Neither Casey, do I. I never ever look at your feet, to see what shoes you're wearing. Well, don't look now because the shoes I'm wearing are kind of dirty. Well, I mean, just you know, I just I never do. But it, it's amazing. And and on that, I have another story that that ties into that. But Nick wanted to mention something. Right? Yeah, Casey, did you see the email I sent you yesterday from Doug Wager? He's, I did. Okay, so uh, he wants to and. Uh, Tell me if this says good juju or not, but he wants to do customized footwear for Anthony and Casey and Jackie and oh, Kyle so cool. featuring Philly artwork yes. that reflects each one of them. Uh, and so he has enough time to pull it off, but it's artwork on shoes, and it's something that he does for Eagles all season for uh, Eagles Autism Foundation. So it seems legit, and right. uh, it, it would certainly be Eagles-based. And, uh, you know, uh, you would approve the no, colors. No, I think that's great. I won't wear them on game day. I that's know the thing. Yeah, I, I, I already okay. have Not my game, game day. Oh, okay. All right, yes. You can wear yeah, them yeah. on the way. Then, 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 then you're down with that. You're the good. trip out would be cool. Yeah. I would say, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I think, think so. You, you need, like, you need to be decked out in Eagles the whole trip. The whole trip. No, I think uh, what you got to do is convince uh, Gargano to dress like Jackie. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, Jackie's got something he's going to surprise everybody oh, with next week. Yeah. Is it going to fit in the car? Dude, yes. <laughs> Dress Anthony like Jackie Could you with the to the the tights the, the and bandana. the bandanas, all the jingly things. Yeah. Oh my God, that'd be hilarious. He would look like put so some <laughs> put some yeah, eye, uh, eyeliner on him. You talked about the birdcage earlier. He'd look like a cast uh -huh. member. Yeah. God. Now he needs to be in his Eagles gear too. No, absolutely. Yeah. Is he gonna wear all week too? Case have you, uh, you Gargano? Him? No, no. You know I no? can't. I can't impose. I can only impose my superstitions no, on my you family. If he said anything about wearing Eagles gear, no. the ride out. Okay. I'm sure, you're, I'm sure he'll represent, right? You're bringing all green, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to bring everything green that I can bring. Uh, and then anything that will go with my green stuff. Like, you know, like I got, you know, black. Uh, pants. I can wear yeah, black yeah, pants yeah. or gray yeah. pants. Black or but, I, anything. but I do have uh, three different shades of green. I hate to point this out, but yeah. both your hat and your shirt have red on them that you're wearing right now. In fact, it's your shirt has red and yellow. It's not on game it. week, bro. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Believe be me, I thought game about it. Week. It's yeah. I, yeah. I've, I've already thought about this. Uh, game no, month doesn't count. No. Game month does not count. Okay. No. Come on. All right, man. Are you crazy? <laughs> it, you, on. You're ignoring the science you here, crazy? Preston. You're ignoring the science. I've also had... Do like, your research. I know. <laughs> yeah, do your Be research. better. Be I, better. I've also... I, you know, I struggle with when you talk about, like, red. So the, the Sixers play tonight. Yeah. I, I'm wearing a Sixers hat. Uh, okay. You know, so... And I struggle with that. But, you know, my superstitions, okay. you know, sometimes they, they get the, the better of me. But uh, As you know, long as they yeah. can illogically control <coughs> your life, it's a win. Illogically. Okay. Yeah. Kathy, yeah. I want to go back to when you picked your head up when I said Doylestown. What was... Uh, <laughs> Oh, that? yeah. So I went to um, the auto show um, this week, and there's a section, like, right when you walk in of all of these vintage cars, mm -hmm. and there was a car from 1912, and I was like, this thing is so cool. It looked beautiful, and I'm like, who 
owns this? Like, like where where does this live? Guys from Doylestown. Oh, really? And he had, yeah, and he had a, a motorcycle as well from that era as well. But, I mean, it was it was so cool. I th- I thought that was the coolest part of the auto okay. show. All right, interesting. All right, so uh, tying in with the sneakers, um, Nike and Tiffany uh, have collaborated. The singer? On a sneaker. Nope. Oh, oh. Tiffany and company. Uh, the jewelry maker. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess oh. they got there first. Yeah. I've got a shoe now. I uh, think these are shoes now. Uh, both companies took to social media over the weekend to advertise the collaboration. In a separate Instagram post, the uh, retailers revealed the shoe box for the upcoming sneaker. Uh, Nike and Tiffany also took out a full-page ad in su- excuse me, Sunday's print edition, New York Times, featuring the words, a legendary pair. So did so- Tiffany do the box? Is that... Yeah, it's and like and, and, and there's their, their colors going to be on the uh, the shoe as well. So, okay. uh, the sneaker dubbed the Nike Air Force One Low Tiffany and Company 1837 uh, features an all black uh, nubuck leather on the upper with a swoosh in Tiffany blue. The light medium robin egg blue of the brand's jewelry boxes, according to the unofficial images leaked online. Uh, the collaboration has been rumored for weeks. Uh, but it's now expected to release this spring and retail for four hundred dollars. Come on! Shoe mm-hmm. quantities will be very limited, by the way. Uh, the shoe marks Tiffany and Company's first collaboration with Nike. But in two thousand five, the jeweler's banner colors were the inspiration for the Diamond Supply Company and Nike SB Dunk lauded by skateboarders and sneakerheads alike. Resale for those shoes now is about eighteen hundred dollars. <sighs> Jeez. And the collab comes as Tiffany works to shake off its old-fashioned image and attract younger customers. So my my stepsister is a manager at uh, Tiffany. Uh, they they have a factory in Lexington, Kentucky. Right. So oh. She's worked there for years. Did she get a discount? Years. Yeah. Actually, yeah. What? Dude, and, why, why am I just wow, laughing about this? Oh my god! This? You and, holding out on us, bro? And uh, I was I went to Kentucky a couple weeks ago and was hanging out with her, and she said that yeah, they've really been trying to push this younger demo. Yeah. Get the Tiffany, uh, and so so they're getting happening. They're partnering with uh, influencers and also people like Beyonce and Jay Z, and so they're they're trying to to aim a little bit lower. Why don't they collab with you? And yeah. their demographic, they probably could. You know, but but she said, but she told me she's like, all people want. They want the box. They want. Is that it? They want. They want, I mean, they want the yeah, jewelry, right, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, but if it comes s- in that blue box, it's a. That's a huge win. If you see that box, like you right. immediately know. Yep. You know that, that, yeah. that's what no, they're known I, for. I, I, is yeah. that box? It's the brand. It's well I known. I have never gotten my wife anything from well, Tiffany. I, I got gotten a couple things. Yeah, yeah I, I have two. I got and uh, Pierre gave me a Tiffany's yo-yo one year because of the ups and downs of the radio business. Oh, that's hey, really nice, Kathy. You know that section in Tiffany have they have it's the less expensive section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's like a little shelf that you can go to and get like you know a pen or a you know these smaller items that are not. Five thousand dollars. Which, by what the are way, you looking for today? Oh. Something in that section? I'll get you some. <laughs> yeah, what can I do for you? <laughs> you still need an appointment to get in? No. Okay. I don't think so. You well, I haven't been I in years, but no, I've never can, had. An I think that was COVID, Nick. Okay, yeah. You yeah, go yeah. by COVID? I mm-hmm. know uh, you have to. You used to have to check in to uh, Tiffany's. So s- some of them still. Uh, well, you, like at the um, True. what is it? What what store is it still? Uh, one of them, uh, not Coach, but um. We, we, uh, there's actually a line like oh Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Is it Louis Vuitton? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's four yeah. people. Inside. They do that on purpose. Yeah. Um, by the way, I remember one time being at Tiffany. I was buying Rochelle a. Uh, I was going to get her a, a birthday gift. Yeah. And I went and she wanted uh, Kathy. You remember the uh, uh, the necklaces they used to have? It had the heart uh, little mm-hmm. uh, charm on it. And uh, I was, uh, she was not really a silverware. She's a goldware. And I went and I looked at the silver. Oh, and then you were going to look I'm at the gold? And I'm pricing that. And I'm like, can I take a look at the at the gold? Because she really likes yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, the like, difference in price go is Go back obscene. to the silver section. Yeah. Obscene. <laughs> and I tried to brush it off. I did not show the sticker shock face. <laughs> yeah, I tried to. Wait, like, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Uh, no. you, like, you hold, you hold it up and you're turning it around, yeah. like, looking at it, waiting for the, the price tag to flip over so you can see it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's sometimes like when you went to better, Tivana. Sometimes it's better to just go, oh, God, geez, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was going to be the price tag. Are you insane? I'm going back to silver. Right. <laughs> I have a lot of Tiffany. I that, I was into Tiffany, um, like like just out of college because at the time a lot of their stuff, their
their silver stuff, Preston, was affordable. You know, I yeah. got my first job. I was getting a paycheck, and this was, like, the nice jewelry that I could get. But, it, I mean, it holds up. I still have it. I recently, um, within the past year, took all of the stuff that I have to Tiffany. They cleaned it all for me, and it's, I mean, they're Melted great pieces. Melted it down into silver bullets in case of a werewolf attack. <laughs> That's smart. No, I, no. Yeah, no. Oh, so no? I didn't do that. Oh. No, I can still wear it as jewelry. By the way, Marissa handed me this note. Tiffany, the singer, is going to be at City Winery in the spring. <laughs> Wow. Uh, and Coincidence? We're trying to get her in here. All right. So we'll work on We've that. We've been trying forever. She books and then she cancels. Yeah. Well, Almost we'll every time she comes. That's why she thinks she's alone now. Except for when we did our Fat Tuesday broadcast. Oh, she that was legendary. She, Leg- came, she got up and sang with Mr. Green Jeans. That uh-huh. was awesome. If that's yeah. all we ever have, yeah. that's enough. Yeah. That's damn good. <laughs> that was a win. Uh, all right. So anyhow, let me see what else we got in the junk drawer. Okay. Um... Oh, you know what we're going to do as part of the junk drawer? Because if we don't do this now, I don't know, we might not ever get to it because we got a guest later on. Right, we got right. some other things that we're going to do. do. Now. The Orbeez Challenge that you mentioned in the news yesterday, yeah. Kathy, it's it's in Bucks County, or they've, they've put some warnings out. I think it was Warrington. It's all over, yeah. And so kids are, are, are going in with these Orbeez, and they're shooting them out of, uh, like, airsoft guns, and supposedly they're to... Uh, the warrant, you're, you're supposed to go out and shoot someone in public and film it and blah, blah, blah. And it's a stupid idea. It is somebody, very stupid. Somebody's going to get hurt if they, you know, somebody thinks it's a real gun. But Steve didn't know what Orbeez were, had never seen them before. Uh, we've used them. My wife does charity events, and you use these we use these things for the centerpieces, uh, putting in them in vases and stuff like that. So I whipped up a batch of Orbeez last night. Yeah. So Steve uh, can see this. Kathy, do you see the amount that I brought in? Yes, I did. This tub? Do you know how much of the dry, un, uh, uh, not put in water, how much I put in there? Oh, how much? How much? Three quarters of a cup. That, that, That's what crazy. you have? Yes. Come on. In this I full, swear to God. So to put it into perspective, oh, there is a full tub of these things, and you say you put in just three quarters of a cup, <laughs> yeah. added water, four and gallons, they ballooned up to that. Four gallons of water and three quarters, and three quarters of a cup of Orbeez gave us if this. Some, oh, my if God. If someone were to uh, eat these oh my god yeah it could oh, yeah you know what? Yeah, yeah. it would kill you right there, there was yeah. a a story not that long ago uh, i i was gonna have it in the bizarre file and it never it's just one of those stories that didn't make it there but a kid did put some of them did swallow some of them and it very nearly killed him yeah because it goes into your system and, and absorbs expands. and expands and it could it could explode your stomach oh. i mean without question Okay. Uh, so you have to be very, very careful with this I'm stuff. I'm sorry, what are you supposed to do with these things? You can use them for a variety of things. They can be for displays. Uh, like I said, we, we put them in vases, clear vases. Yes. And and you can put things in those vases that will kind of be suspended. Uh, you know what I mean? Yes. And so you seem like, like, like centerpieces at weddings. They use these, yeah. right? I mean, like, they're, they're decorative things. They're, they're craft and hobby stuff. You yes. know, yes. Is yes. It, you would yes. use yes. it for. So oh. you say they feel really. But here's the thing. Now, also, they will use them. For like uh, foot therapy and and things like that, like I you can put that. your feet in there, Steve. They're they're slick. Right. Uh, so right. do you have that over there? Yeah. Are you feeling it? I, I, want, that. I want you to feel it because I'm once you my, can I put my foot in? Put it? your foot in there. <laughs> oh, can I? Because some... once you get in there, <laughs> you don't want to stop. It feels so good. I'm gonna play some theme music for you, Preston. Can you guess why I'm playing this song? Okay. Good. Uh, this is handle with care. <laughs> I like that. Or, 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 or be some. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's Roy like, or be some. Yes. How does it feel, Steve? It's really cool. What I really wild? find wild is that is when you move your foot up, uh-huh. it's like a quicksand suction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put both my feet in. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to stand in Orbeez all morning. I'm going to do the rest of this break in Orbeez. We, uh, whenever we have them, whenever we make batches of them for, for stuff that we're doing, like the kids will just stick their arms in there and just... Yeah. And if, if it's around, you can't help but walking by and just kind of putting your hand in there and moving around a little bit. Uh, Roy Orbeezid. <laughs> All, right. All right, I got to move this over. Let's... All right. Uh... I'm moving my foot pad and I'm replacing it with an Orbeez. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You're putting them in your shoe? No, no, no. no, no. Oh, okay. I'm standing right. in my Orbeez thing now. He uh, has a pad that he stands on over yeah. here, so he had to move oh, that and he put the bucket uh, there instead. I feel like uh, I feel like uh, I'm at the winery of the future, the vineyard. <laughs> uh, yes. And I'm stomping Orbeez. <laughs> this is very therapeutic. How much water did you put in there? Four gallons. 
four gallons of water and and three quarters of a cup of Orbeez, okay. and then it and it balloons up to that. And it so uh, you, you, after a couple hours, it I, I let them soak overnight. It okay. takes about six to eight hours for it to totally take on the. Uh, so I was wondering, like, if you put it in hot water, like, would that would that um, do would, anything for this? Yeah, let's boil this up with my feet. <laughs> well, well we no, did. if it took four hours, it wouldn't still be boiled. Oh, that's you know, right. So okay. It would be warm. No, we we did it with warm water, but oh, you did. but okay. you know, warm water cools down to yeah. room temperature and. A few minutes. Ah. It's not going to happen. It is. It is very wild. Isn't that wild? Yeah, it is wild. Yeah, do you do really this good. for your feet? Uh, uh, you're a foot I, model. I, have. So you have to take I don't. Do, I don't have like a regimen that I okay. do. But uh, before you come in every morning, <laughs> yeah, Steve. There was a, Nick. It's perfect for you because you like to wash your feet all I, the time. I do. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I love uh, a good foot massage, Steve. Yeah. Okay. So now the, the <laughs> if you're watching on the YouTube channel. Steve, they can see your feet going up and down. Ah. So if you've never tuned into <laughs> our YouTube before, and you've always wanted to see Steve's yeah. feet, and yeah. If you, oh yeah, if you're a foot guy, yeah, today's the day for you. Yeah. Absolutely, oh, my yeah. feet look like uh, condor claws. Hey, by the way, you just said, are there a foot? If you're a foot guy, yeah, are there foot gals? I doubt it. I, I doubt it too. Because women are far less <laughs> disgusting, and we are morons. I'm, and a, f- I'm a foot gal. Let, there, Whatever floats what? your boat. I, 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 this is not a judging statement. I just, I don't understand foot fetishes. I don't there, either. There's no part of that to me that seems remotely you know what, sexy. What makes sense to me, a, a vagina fetish. Yeah. 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 So good for you if you like feet. Yeah, yeah. Then you can see yeah. them more Go regularly than, a, than a, you know, a vagina out on the street. <laughs> Though you do see them occasionally with a sandwich board on. I came in here because the vagina outside said you had a good. Uh, you know, sandwich. you go to the beach, you'll see bare feet all over the place, but it's not like vaginas are flying if, all over. All right. Yeah. So if you have a foot fetish mm-hmm. and you go to the beach, are you like turned on incessantly? I would think so. I think so. Right? But you know, I would hang out at a Tom McCann, though. That would be my. Yeah. You know, yeah. Where? Can, oh. No, like a Jimmy Choo's or someeplace where you're going to see well, high, high level feet. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. people that wear shoes like that, like those high heels, they don't have good looking feet. They Probably destroy not. their feet if yeah, you are right. a regular yeah. heel wearer. It's like if you've ever seen the people that are into foot binding, uh, what oh. their feet look like when you unwrap those. It's, I would imagine, yeah, Kathy, because they're. They really cram your toes in there, don't they? Yeah, a lot of them get bunions, and yeah, it's don't, it's not a uh, bunions a fun word. By the way, your yeah. mom had a couple of toes bunions. removed, right? Uh, yes, she yeah. had her she had her pinky toes removed. Yeah, and then left in a car, toes. right? And somebody left them in the car when they were sold. <laughs> yes, it's a classic that story. That's the greatest story. Uh, right. Hang on a second. Let me go to uh, Mike. Wants to comment on Orbeez. Hey, Mike. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Great, Mike. What's up, buddy? Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know, you know, and, and share this info with any of the other listeners out there. Um, I am currently a middle school teacher, uh, but I have worked in several different uh, educational settings while I was putting myself through, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting my teaching degree. Okay. And uh, I was at the Delaware Children's Museum uh, in downtown Wilmington for several years, and we would have sensory nights where, you know, one table had... <laughs> Uh, shaving cream in a in a bag, and the uh, the next table had homemade slime, uh, and then we would just have a big pool full of Orbeez, and the kids uh-huh. could go wild. Uh-huh. Uh, and that it was sounds mess, cool. But but it was okay. Uh, and I tell you, it is for anyone out there. Um, you know, I will. Uh, my my son, my four, my almost four year old son, is on the autism spectrum. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and uh, these little sensories, you know, if they're having yeah. an uh, autistic meltdown episode. Of any kind, you know, Orbeez in their hands, squeeze them. They're great. Wow. For, sen- for sensory play. Okay. I could absolutely that. see that. It, it is yeah. is a very unique feeling. Yeah. So any of your listeners out there who uh, are looking for sensory stuff to do, if they have children or or uh, relatives on the spectrum, I can't recommend them enough. Obviously, be careful about swallowing them before yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. are water activated, as right. as per uh, uh, Steve said. Uh, but yeah, I we, they were the biggest hit at the hmm. children's awesome. museum. Awesome, that's All cool. Right. Yeah. So. Good to know, Mike. Thanks for the heads up. We appreciate it, buddy. Absolutely. All right, uh, take you know, care. And, and I and I gotta say, um, I am a transplant from uh, the D.C. area, so mm-hmm. I am a Redskin slash Commanders guy. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but but I, I would be okay with another Super Bowl ring on the birds because it wasn't the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're welcome. We got room on the bandwagon, yeah, Mike. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, buddy. All right. Hi, Mike. Yeah. Take care, man. We'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I kind of want to stick my junk in this pasta. Oh, my uh, God. Stop <laughs> it. Stop, stop, stop. All right. Stop. All right. Burrito. So, I was going to go. Not appropriate. You were going to go there? I was, no, I was going to ask you something disgusting. Oh. Uh, pre- okay. Do it off the air. I've not tried it, no. <laughs> you ever do? you ever do a dead body? Oh, my no. God.
Now that's because disgusting. Here's but the deal. Not with the, yes, yeah. see, I just I was trying to guess, and that yeah. may not have been the question you were going to ask. I need to preface this by saying I haven't done this, but I. Oh boy. Okay. Here goes so, his brain. <laughs> Uh, okay. well, what do he was talking about the sensory thing. Mike was talking, you know, and it, the, the bags of shaving cream that you can squeeze. Yeah. So yeah. It, like, I have a compulsion that I have not followed through with yet, <laughs> but when you're yeah. cleaning up your dog crap in the bag, when you <sighs> have that, like, to squeeze it. Ew, no. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely I, okay. not. All right, can I, I tell me, you? Personally, I find that disgusting because it's warm <laughs> like yeah. and it smells bad. <laughs> But squishy, yeah. I can see the squishy thing, but no, not dog okay. food. No, I no. had to preface it by saying I have not done this yet. Yeah, but which have... leads me to believe you've done it. No, no, he's no, no. thought no. about it. He wants to do it. I had thought I want to do it, but I just can't. I can't cross that line. I agree with I you, Preston. I can't cross that line. Wow. The, the more surgical I can be with uh, with a, a dog poop bag, the, the better. And tie it as quickly as I can. It's uh -huh. like a rodeo. I'm so quick tying those things up. Uh, by the way, uh, some people are... are, are uh, Sending in texts of caution that uh, you you know with the with the Orbeez, um, you shouldn't let children be around the the ones that aren't have been water, that yeah. haven't been water activated yet for right. sure. Like we said, swallowing those can be very 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 dangerous. But once they're done and they're ready to go, um, yeah, they can be used as a, as a sensory tool, which is uh, pretty cool. Yeah, they're, they're a little um, they're a little like um, slick. Did you when see you, the text that said you, you shouldn't uh, let kids eat dog poop either? Ah, no, yeah. I did not. Thank you. <laughs> very, uh, very good uh, public service announcement there. Uh, wait, let me go to Kevin real quick. We've got a break in just a second here. So, uh, Kevin, hi. Kevin, you're a foot fetish guy? Good morning. Yes, I'm a hardcore foot guy. Uh, I've been that way for a long time. Okay. Um, coming out of the, the, the shadows, I guess. Um, like, no judgment anymore. I don't care. Like, okay, no. all right, good enough. And you said we, you can answer our question. So, for the first question I had posed is, are there women who are into men's feet? There are, but they are few and far between. I've yeah. seen a lot of women who are into women's feet, and that I can understand. Right, because men's feet are hideous. So Do you know who's, who? Except for mine. Well, it, yeah, because he's a former foot model. But I'll, I'll tell you, uh, like, uh, Quentin Tarantino is, is a, is a self-admitted uh, oh, yeah. uh, foot fetish guy. And he, in his movies, you'll always see, uh, <laughs> if there are women in the movie, shots of female sure. feet. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, but Kevin, Everything what what does it have to be like? Nick said when you go to the beach and everybody has their feet off. Like, is that something for you? Um, I'm sorry, shoes off. Be, I really have to kind of consciously look away and not focus on it. Or especially since you're in a bathing suit and your boner would show. Mm. <laughs> That's a bad thing. That's yeah. a bad look. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Oh I think my, my personally, my foot fetish was born out of the the tickling realm. Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> These guys, they're the worst. All right, so so you need you need to mentally distract yourself if you do see a lot of uh, naked feet out and about in public, a yeah. la uh, a swimming pool. Driving or, in the summertime and yeah. highways and stuff like that, where the you know the women will have their feet on the dashboard out the right. window. That's, that's a distraction. That's time. dangerous. By what, the way, what will kill it for you? Will you? Um, will you? Uh, for example, if there's like a uh, like a wart or um, uh, you know uh, bunion. a bum toe or a bunion uh, yeah, or something yeah. like that, does that ruin it? Or Corns. Does that, does that provide yeah. character? A detractive, a detractive pair of feet is kind of a turn off. Yes. Okay. 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 Real right. quick, like uh, gout might be a negative thing. <laughs> yeah. I've always noticed that the uh, the more beautiful the foot, the more beautiful and attractive I find the woman. Okay. Oh, all right. You see a beautiful pair of feet, but you can't see the body or the face. Yeah. Chances are she's attractive, extremely. All right, mm -hmm. all right Kev. Uh, quick question: This is kind of a two-part question. Uh, okay. Does you know, well, and don't answer this one yet. But does uh, uh, dirty bottom of the feet bother you? And what is hotter, the top of the foot or the bottom of the foot? Uh, dirty. There are people who are sold on that. It's not sold. my personal thing. Okay. Um, and yes, I like the bottom. All right. I like the manicured. Bottom. Oh, sorry. Did you uh, pedicured? Yeah, preferably. Yeah, okay. All okay. right, preferably. I have one other thing that I wanted to mention because I don't understand. Like, there's a whole society who, who like puts us down. Like, oh, you look that is weird. Feet are dirty. Feet are this. Feet are that. No, I think I, th I think you're 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 a little higher up on the. On the I'm just trying to understand. That's an well, that's innocuous. Innocuous. Yeah. We don't understand. It, it's, I, I have no judgment here. I just it's curious as to what um, originates it in the first place. Like, where does the footish, uh, foot fetish begin? That I'm not sure, but there were a lot of cartoons when we were kids that featured like Footy McFooting scene, Disney movies even like the Cinderella with the shoe and the, the you know ah yeah oh, that's right. a good point oh, yes yeah. okay. whatever you know and um and there were cartoons that drew tickling into it because I guess they couldn't do violence at the time or something 
Okay. And uh, this is the whole thing about uh, just feet. They hey, listen, I hands are dirtier than feet, and and people put their mouths on other places on people's bodies where <laughs> are like like their babies. No, but listen, I, Kevin. I, I you mentioned hands. I think uh, hands can can either make a woman more attractive or less attractive. Yes, I personally do, and so. That's not that crazy, is it? I mean, that's why women do get, you know, Listen, nails done like and, and wear jewelry and, and stuff like that. And the pedicure is the same thing. It, yeah. it is. It is. Yes, we can. We, I, I don't. I don't think you're you're off the rails, but Kevin. I, I don't understand why I find you know hands to be a sexy attribute. I don't understand oh, it. I love same hands. reason why a woman, a, a person, might not understand why they find a foot attractive. What they about just jugs? Do. Jugs. <laughs> The nails, the adornment, the jewelry, the tattoo. Right. The, hey, the, the jugs. <laughs> the knockers. If you yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. You but, have uh, another question, Case, we got to wrap No, this no. Up. I just want to say, you don't have to explain yourself to anybody. You know, yeah, like, if you're, you're fetish, the things that turn you on. Case, you're not squeezing me. dog poop. If you're not. You're not, not into anybody. anybody. Yeah. I'm dog poop curious, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> oh, my God. Casey CPC. loves squeezing bags of dog crap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They're going to. Oh, God. DPC. All right, yeah. Kevin, we got to go, but thank you for your candor. We appreciate it. Have a great day, you guys. All right, you too. Uh, yeah. All right, we'll see you later. By the way, somebody recommended yeah. that you take a bag of poop on your cross-country trip yes. to no. squeeze if you ever feel stressful. Just keep it in the cup holder. Uh -huh. No, but okay. on Anthony's side. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what? Uh, no, Nothing. Okay. All right, anyhow. He's thinking uh, about it. This has been the junk drawer. We got we to close the drawer because... Uh, okay. Uh, we I'm have, enjoying the break. <laughs> we have too much to get to. Uh, thank you, though, for allowing me to clean out some of the things. We do appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Casey's Big Game Adventure is coming up on Monday. We're collecting items this morning for him to take small items, by the way, a little token that you might want to share. You can stop by the studios. Uh, when we come back... We are going to reveal another Eagles-related thing that we're going to do yes. next week as well. And this is for the super hardcore fanatic. If you and are, you're going to like this. It's something that you can receive from us, and we'll have the details when we get back. So stay with us. A Bizarre File coming up, too. We'll be right back. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Excited uh, and, and came in here very specifically just to say hi and, and see this interview in person. Well, it's great, and thanks for having me on. You must be like, uh, first time on the phone, then I'm here in person. <laughs> I appreciate uh, all the Jericho love. I'll tell you that right yeah. now. Coming over to the house next. Yeah, I got, I got an app next week. There's a hologram. Right. We're going to tour. There's the, the Jericho hologram and the Dio hologram. We're going on tour next month. Hey, you got to milk all the milk out of that Everywhere cow. you yeah. can. <laughs> Squeeze the crap out of every drop. Every teat. Let Absolutely. Me, let me tell you first how impressed I am with the album. I took it home the other day i listened to it on the way home and wasn't sure what to expect mm -hmm. uh you know i have heard i had heard judas because we've been playing it and, and i definitely like the song and what did i come back and tell you guys so solid this I is said, real deal my word was it's legit yeah. Nice. okay yeah. because uh, you know you have people who have a name from another uh, another entertainment industry or sports mm -hmm. industry and then they want to open the door and head down another path and try something out for a little bit and most of the times that doesn't work um, so I was uh, pleasantly surprised when I listened to it. I'm like, okay, this is this is straight up. It's the real deal. Well, it's cool. Th this is our seventh record, and we're almost like a 17 year overnight sensation at this point, <laughs> yeah. which which is good because I it think good. over the years, slowly but surely, people have come to realize that, like you said, this is legit. This is the real deal. Mm -hmm. If if it wasn't, uh, I wouldn't be doing this. Um, I think every band has some kind of a gimmick when they start, whether it's Slipknot wears masks or yeah. Kiss has makeup or all these different things. Bottom line is. Either it's good music or it's not. And it doesn't mm -hmm. matter who's in the band or what the story is. Yeah. Either it's good or it's bad. And after all these years, people are finally going, holy smokes, Fozzie is legit. They make a judgment just because I'm in the band. Yeah. I think sometimes we have to work twice as hard to get people's respect because of that. We don't mind. Yeah. When I was 13 years old, I decided I wanted to be in a rock band and I wanted to be a wrestler. And people laughed me out of the building. I remember I went to church yeah. and told people, and people laughed me out of the church. <laughs> Here I am all these years later doing both. I really don't care if people have a judgment about what I do or what I don't do. All I know is that this is good and I know that people are embracing it. Right. If you have a passion and a desire and a talent to do more than one thing, especially in this day and age, it's okay, and if people don't have a have an issue with that, Paul Stanley said in this documentary that I watched, I probably told you guys this you did, yeah. about the book, the only people that tell you you can't do something are the ones that have failed. I'm not going to tell you you can't do it because I did it. You can do it. And when Paul said that, I embraced that concept and went for it wholeheartedly, and here we are right now talking about this stuff, and it's a great feeling. Well, I think in, in a way also you have the benefit of you, you had another... 
you not I'm going to say a safety net, but you had another thing running that allowed you to say to just be tenacious and that you're okay. You don't dig it now. We're going to keep doing it. We're not yeah. going to stop. And then, as you said, through attrition, people started to come on board. And this, as you described, Judas is the game changer. So is your time uh, being on the mic and doing what you did in, in the ring helped you out with being able to talk Absolutely. to the audience? Absolutely. And, okay. I, 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 when I first started wrestling when I was 19, I wanted to be the ultimate rock and roll front man in, 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 in the wrestling ring. Paul Stanley, yeah. Freddie Mercury, you know, Bruce Dickinson. I wanted to be like the front man, the party host. And so I did that when I first started because I wasn't the biggest guy, but I knew I could have the biggest personality and the biggest charisma. Mm -hmm. So when we started Fozzie, um, I just took those same qualities that I was using as Y2J that I stole from great front men, like I mentioned, and then took it back into Fozzie. So it's very much uh, symbiotic. That's a big word for a Canadian. <laughs> but it all depends on connecting with the audience, whether it's wrestling or music. You need to connect with the crowd and let them know that you don't take yourself seriously. You take the music seriously. You have to have a good time. And when we go do these festivals, there's not a lot of bands that do that. It's very ag it's very mosh pitting and stuff, and that's fine. But for us, just drink some beer and chant Fozzie and show your boobs, whether you're a girl or a guy, we don't care. And that's when you get the connection. Yeah. Let's like, especially in this day and age with all the crap that's going on in the world, come to a Fozzie show, leave the BS at the door, and just have a good time, man. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Well, that's you know? that's it. And, and we've said this at least the, the very nature of our show is that if you know. Uh, we, over the years, you've we've heard other shows where it seems like they're pissed off all the time. Why, why, why would I want to listen to a show or go to a show where I think they're, yeah. they're not enjoying what they're doing? It's okay to smile and laugh. Yeah. I think sometimes the, the word fun and rock and roll gets lost in the translation. Those are always my favorite bands where you can go and just have a good time, man. That's what it's all about. And um, it's it's kind of a lost art. And it's something that we take great pride in. We have a reputation for being that way. Is is if you come to one of our shows, you're just going to leave with a smile on your face and that's okay. It yeah. doesn't always have to yeah. be growling and, and angst and, and, and anger. You know, go to a, a go to a, a, a Lamb of God show if you want to do that, and that's fine. But for yeah. us, we'd rather have some fun. Uh, I know with all that going on, let's not take our eye off the ball here, folks. There's a new Miss America. In yeah. yeah. Uh, they had uh, in, in Atlantic City, obviously, is where the pageant takes place. So they had taken it away for like a couple of years, right? And then they brought it back. I, I, I just don't hear about it anymore. Guys, I used to. We, afterwards. We used to watch it. It, it was, was a big deal. It was a thing years we ago, were, yeah. it was massive. Yeah. And it's just now, I think... Um, I think internet porn took care of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we have a couple of clips from it. We have, uh, well, do you want to hear the winner? Or Yeah, let's hear the winner first. All right. right. Miss North Dakota. Your new Miss America is Miss North Dakota. <laughs> so Miss North Dakota. Miss North Dakota uh, took it. Attractive young lady, as you would imagine. Wants to be the uh, governor. Yes, eventually. That's her aspiration. Yep, that is but correct. But the highlight <laughs> for the evening was uh, the town portion, especially Miss Louisiana. All right, here we go. Becky, Lucy, are you ready? Yes. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. I'm ready to talk to her. And I cannot see your listening. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I said I can't see your listening. Yeah, let's load him. Curtis. Sound good to me. You betcha. It sure does sound good, doesn't it, to be here in front of all these nice people? <laughs> it's a dream come true. What was that? It's a dream come true. What was that? It's a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> she just gives up. God damn it! I said it's a dream come true. <laughs> She's getting mad at herself. <laughs> I suck. <laughs> slams, slams the dummy on God, the ground. Freaking thing. <laughs> <laughs> to be here in front of all these fine people and mid-level celebrities is such a thrill. What are we gonna do? We're gonna entertain the team. What's that? We're gonna entertain the team. What's that? We're gonna entertain the people! <laughs> oh. 
What I said is, if you just listen for an effing second, <laughs> we're going to entertain the people. <laughs> She's gorgeous, though. She's stunning. Yeah, we're yeah. looking at a, at a still yeah. shot of her. She's a Miss America contestant. Yeah, yeah, with her two uh, ventriloquist dummies. <laughs> and the dummies. Oh, we haven't even heard the clip yet. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> you good people ready? Lucky Lucy, are you ready? Yes. Hit it. I wanna be a cowboy sweetheart. I wanna work the road and ride. <laughs> All right, I'll let it. I'll let it play. Hang on a second. I want to ride on the plains of the desert, outless of the great divide. I want to hear the coyotes sing as the sun sets in the west. I want to be. Well, honestly, what, what, where is this? Where does this fly? I think if, if you if you come in before someone's receiving a lethal injection, it's like. You might have it. Uh, we, before you get the shot, we have a ventriloquist actually. <laughs> and they're going to give me the shot. Wet. Give me the shot. <laughs> All right. We haven't even gotten to the yodeling part <laughs> yet. Hang on. Oh, there's Hang. yodeling? Yeah, yeah there's, there's yodeling. Apparently, yeah. there's yodeling. All right. Here. At that very moment, th uh, half the judges were booking flights to Naples, Florida. <laughs> right. Wow, look at how hot she is. Super we're looking hot. At that uh, video footage of her now. She's, uh, wow, she's a stunner. And that's Miss Who? That is Miss Louisiana. Miss Louisiana. Okay. Nick had sent me some information about this guy. His name was Xavier uh, at an, uh, Atencio. And he invented Leopold the FBI cat? No, he did not. <laughs> Uh, he was the Disney Imagineer oh. who helped bring to life iconic theme park attractions such as Pirates of the Caribbean and the Haunted Mansion. And he passed away just this last Sunday, and he was 98 years old. So when I was a kid, um, uh, for a brief period when I was in third grade, which would have put me, I would have been about 17, no. uh, <laughs> the, um, we went out to, you know, to live in California for almost a full year. And um, going to Disneyland, the Disneyland, there was no Disney World at that time. Uh, those attractions were, you as a kid, you might as well have been transported to another universe. You couldn't it believe it. It was just mind boggling. Mm -hmm. And they, they, you know, they just actually sort of um, re tinkered uh, Pirates of the Caribbean because of uh, PC questions, but it's still essentially the same ride there. He also wrote the lyrics to, other, to their memorable songs, Yo Ho. A Pirate's Life. He, oh. he wrote that. Did he write It's a Small World? No, that's from no, yeah. He didn't. He wrote, But he wrote uh, Grim Grinning Ghost uh, that they sing on the Haunted Mansion. Yeah, for yeah. As well. uh, in the mid 1960s, uh, Atencio's career uh, changed course. And Walt Disney called him into his office and asked him to join the Imagineering unit that created theme park attractions. He said, I went over there reluctantly because I didn't know what I was getting into and nobody there knew what I was supposed to do either. About a month later, I got a phone call from Walt. He told me, I want you to do the script for the Pirates of the Caribbean. This is a great opportunity, and if you don't do it, you're fired. Uh, and he said he had never written a script before the Pirates assignment. Uh, Pirates was the last ride that Walt Disney would directly supervise. Disney died uh, December in 1966, just three months before the attraction. It never really opened. He died before it opened. It's amazing. But uh, Atencio helped him to experience it in a way. He said, we mocked it up on a soundstage in full size, and we pushed Walt through it. We rigged up a chart. Uh, what I'm sorry. am I looking at here? We rigged up a cart that moved about the same pace. I can't see. The boat would, and we moved him through. This hurts my back substantially and we had the auctioneer why are you doing this to me and we had the auctioneer up here and he said what do you offer this buxom wench and then on the other side a pirate yells six bottles of rum etc cetera, etc cetera. 
He said, but it was hard to hear, and I said, I'm sorry, Walt, you can't hear the stuff too clearly. And he said, if you go to a cocktail party, you tune in on one conversation, and then you tune in on that one. Every time they come through, they'll see something new. And I thought, why the heck didn't I think of that? That is Xavier Atencio. He wrote this. We kindle and char in flame and ignite. Drink up, me hearty show ho. From 93.3 WMMR. All right, thank you very much, Cap. Um, you know what? Why don't we do this announcement first? Yes. Okay. Uh, where's my little info? Time is of the essence. Yeah, this is pretty cool. So for four lucky winners next week, we will be giving away something really cool and special, but you have to be a uh, diehard, I mean a diehard Birds fan in order to win this. Uh, we do a thing called Tattoos Day. We do. Next week. Tattoo. We will be adorning nothing but Eagles tattoos to four lucky winners. And here's the deal. Uh, there are, I think, five designs uh, that are available. And it will either be you get to pick one or the tattoo artist gets to pick one. I'm not 100% sure on what's going to happen here. Yeah. But nonetheless, they're all badass Really cool. It's good stuff. Uh, we're, we're looking at them right now. There's uh, there's the the love statue. There's it's a Philly thing with the classic uh, Eagles uh, logo. There's uh, more uh, the, the newer logo. There's a helmet in football. There's just the Eagles uh, name and and there's a Liberty Bell one. So anyway, there's a few to choose from. And uh, here's the requirement: you need to be able to come by the studios next Tuesday, 7 a.m. Uh, you have to be at least 18 years of age and willing to receive a permanent tattoo from one of our artists. And the artists include, uh, well, they're going to be artists from uh, Floating World Tattoo and Piercing. We have uh, Brian uh, Buchak. I guess that's how you say his last name. I'm not sure. sure. I haven't met Brian yet. Uh, Matt Slime. Slime. And Don Juan. Don Mother Effin Juan. That's right. And then from Runic Tattoo, our buddy Bob Dodge. Hey. Ah, Bob Dodge. Hey. And artist John Pohl uh, will be stopping by here. And don't call in because we're not going to take them that way. No. Uh, text tattoo to 39333 and we'll send a link uh, to meet the tattoo artist. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, and check out their art. There you go. And then you can enter to yeah. win the free Eagles tattoo. We will do that next Tuesday here in our studio. Yeah, and on PressMinistee.com, there are pictures of uh, some of the artwork and then some of the actual tattoos that are done. My favorite is actually up on the screen right now. That is from artist John Poole. It's an Eagles helmet that looks like it's shining. Like, it, it, it's fantastic. It's awesome. It looks like it's some, It looks like a, a piece of plastic is resting on his arm. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Uh, so these guys are pretty incredible, and we will do that next week. So if you're interested in one of these designs, then text the word tattoo to 39333, and we'll send you the link. You can look at the artwork and check out the artists, and you can enter to win the free Eagles tattoo. Yes. Pretty sweet deal. Uh, before we go to the Bizarre File... Um, we have an item that we received in the mail. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Hasn't been opened yet, and this is one that somebody wants us to take on John Casey's uh, Casey's big game adventure, John the Road Again. He's going John the Road Again. <laughs> uh, by the way, we're collecting those items this morning. If you want to stop by the studios, One Battle Plaza, you can drop them off. There's a tent out front, and we are waiting for someone to arrive to drop something off. Right, nothing as yet? Nothing as no, yet. All right, I didn't well, figure it We're not expecting a whole yeah. lot from this. Uh, well, it's last minute. It's very last minute. Casey, what? Am I missing something? No, no, I was just saying this This was dropped off this morning. It was okay. dropped off via <laughs> delivery driver. All right, I am, I don't know what's in here. Me so neither. I'm, I'm opening it up and, oh, okay, it looks like it says do not, it's photographs, do not bend, so. Okay. Let me. Oh, you can get it open on, if you man. bend that. Hang on here. There's a little drawstring you got to pull through there. All right, I got that open. And we open this up, and here we go. Oh, this is really cool. It's a picture of Rocky Balboa standing at the top of the art museum steps when the snow was coming down. So I think it's from the oh, movie Rocky Balboa. That's great. And it says, every champion was once a contender who ref uh, once a contender who refuses to give up Rocky Balboa. So that's going. I love that's that. Amazing. Excellent. I love it. Yep, yeah. we're going to send that on the trip. Marissa? And I just found out that a listener came by and dropped off a little, little mini eagle's gnome. Oh, oh yay. excellent. He's yes. a little gnome, and he uh, has a big Santa beard, and it says, Fly Eagles Fly on a sign. And by the okay. way, we're taking pictures of all these things. We're going to yes, catalog we them. So if you if you bring us, again, uh, you, <laughs> don't be uh, turned away if you just see the tent out there. We have the person who's going to collect it, our intern, waiting inside the lobby. Yep. And when they see you pull up, they'll come out and get it. But it's just because it's so cold. Yeah. yeah.
And uh, we are expecting a piece of the battleship New Jersey. Yes, uh, we asked for one of the guns, correct? No, not one of the guns. It's a piece of the deck. Oh, I thought it was the artillery. No, no, it is not. Let me do that while you... uh, I got it, I got it. All right, Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. That's taking place through the course of the program. Uh, And let's do the Bizarre File right now. Let's do the Friday song right now. (laughs) Thank you, Carl. Kristen and Steve's Bizarre Final. Hi. Brought to you this morning by Manhattan Bagel. Place your order today for a sandwich tray from Manhattan Bagel. And sure to satisfy even the hungriest fans on game day. Big game sandwich trays from ManhattanBagel.com. You gather, they cater. Manhattan Bagel. An assistant girls basketball coach in Virginia has been relieved of her duties after being accused of impersonating a 13-year-old JV basketball player on her team and participating in a game last week. It's one of the coaches. You can't do that. Arlisha Book Boykins. Yeah, my name's Debbie. 20, <laughs> 22 years old, suited up for Churchland High School uh, for a game against uh, Nanzamund River uh, while the missing player was out of town for a club tournament. She was the only girl on the team with a husband and kids watching them. The girl's father said coaches always preach to kids about integrity and those types of things, so I was just shocked. He also ah, said that his daughter is not planning to return to Churchland next uh, school year, and the family is seeking a formal apology. Yes. Uh, after an investigation by the school system, Churchland officials met with parents of the JV and varsity girls teams where players from both teams decided not to continue their seasons. Uh, Boykins is no longer employed in the school system, by the way. Do you remember when the teachers at your high school attended the prom? The I dates? Do. Yeah. It was embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, so this case was cold until a potential suspect was lured with the promise of a free meal. 55-year-old uh, Michael Lepege- uh, Lepe- Lepnezhgi, I guess how you say his name. Anyhow, uh, he was arrested for the murder of a Florida woman Whoa. in 1987. Wow. Uh, and due to advancements in DNA testing, police began to suspect that he was uh, connected to the case. So police advertised a free meal at a restaurant and left a flyer on his car. Oh, wow. And, and he it, fell for it? And he fell for it. Oh, uh, police a wanted murderer, but I do love an open-faced roast beef sandwich. Uh, <laughs> police were able to use the silverware uh, that the suspect ate with to run DNA tests. There you so, go. Wow. But the, the murder took place in 1987. Like, it was a really cold case, so he probably wasn't thinking at all that they were after uh, him. It couldn't be possibly that. He was arrested in Mississippi on Thursday and was extradited to Pinellas Don't County. Don't mind if we do. <laughs> uh, where Florida. <laughs> uh, and he's also a person of interest in two similar cases wow. well, as well. So. More, uh, more than one sandwich on the menu. All right. Uh, police officers running a records check on a man attempting to urinate on the Las Vegas Strip later learned he was wanted for murder. Mel Gibson. Oh, my God. Was wanted on a charge of second-degree murder. <laughs> For the death, <laughs> I said second degree murder for the death of Jeffrey Hadlock no! <laughs> on Monday, December twelfth. Several he, people he can't believe that he's getting caught for just pissing. Uh, several people called police saying that a man later identified as Mel Gibson no! had knocked out another man later identified as Hadlock. Uh, the at the hospital, doctors diagnosed Hadlock with a skull fracture and a brain b- bleed. Hadlock told officers he was not punched but was drunk and fell. Documents said, but. Uh, because of his admission, officers didn't follow up on the event until Hadlock died in the hospital. Homicide detectives reviewed sal- surveillance video from a nearby business, and it showed Mel Gibson hitting Hadlock in the face. Uh, Hadlock then fell backwards, hit his head on the ground. Police later learned that Mel Gibson, who was experiencing homelessness at the time and received services from a community organization, had uh, taken a bus to the area prior to the altercation. And uh, so apparently he did this. And now on Sunday... 
Police officers on bike patrol saw a man identified as Mel Gibson undo You're his... A pain in my ass. <laughs> undo his pants as if he was going to <laughs> urinate in a public place. He's a high-profile actor. Of course he's going to get noticed. And uh, he turned his head and stopped, but officers stopped Gibson from... Wait, are you... En yeah. Engaging in a lewd <laughs> act in public. Uh, record check uh, conducted on the radio found no warrants, and then they did a second check, and they found he was uh, 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 under a warrant for second-degree murder. Give me the back <laughs> the side of the head. So, see, oh, he's threatening. Yeah. He's threatening violence. Yeah, so they got him. All right, this is great. <laughs> Police, or wait, no, hold, hold on a uh, second. I have two monkey stories. I want to make sure I get to this one. All right, here we go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's two Monkey Friday. This is this, monkey. This is the You're a little monkey. Are you? This is the better monkey story. Uh, Momo the Gibbon <laughs> <laughs> was kept in a cage by herself in a Japanese zoo, but life uh, found a way. <laughs> For two years, a zoo in southern Japan has been puzzled by a mystery. How did Momo, a gibbon kept alone in her cage, get pregnant? You would want to know, wouldn't you? <laughs> the the, the twelve-year-old white-handed gibbon. You never thought to question the macaque in the cage next to her. Uh, lived by herself and was never joined by a companion. Some of her neighbors are males, sure, but the cages are separated by sturdy bars and jagged chicken wire fencing, and it was inconceivable to the zookeepers that they could have made it through the two layers of barriers. Hell, even I have humped through chicken wire. She gave be uh, Wait, birth what? in 2021 to a yet unnamed male gibbon with black hair and white fur trimming around his face. Mm, sounds but hot. with the help of DNA tests... <clears throat> Zookeepers in Nagasaki had identified the baby Gibbon's father, and they said that they figured out how the ape's parents met. Okay, so the identity—it's got to be the most famous thing ever to happen in Nagasaki. The <laughs> identity of the father is Ito, a 34-year-old agile Gibbon, and uh, Jun Yamano of the zoo said it took us two years to figure it out because we couldn't get close enough to collect samples. Uh, she was very protective of her child. Yeah. But that still left one burning unanswered question. If she never had direct contact with Itho, how did she ever get pregnant in the first place? Well, the zoo had no hard evidence like surveillance footage, but Yamato said the ape's point of contact was probably a hole in the wall no. measuring nine millimeters in diameter. Monkey glory hole. That's exactly uh, what Monkey it is. glory hole. At the zoo, Momo and Itho uh, take turns going on display in the morning and afternoon. Oh, in the yeah. In the oh, yeah. In the exhibition area right in front of Momo's cage. Uh, th there's so many glory hole moments <laughs> in this, so let me explain. Okay. The two spaces are separated by a partition, a perforated board that supposedly prevents the apes from mingling, but yeah. life found a way. Um, uh, Yamato said... We think it's very likely that on one of the days that Itho was in the exhibition space that they copulated through the hole. Such mating habits are unheard of. Normally, zoo pairs, the zoo pairs gibbons after a series of trial and error uh, to familiarize the apes with each other. In the wild, gibbons select their mates based on physical appearance, mm. social behavior, very similar, and vocalization, such as the complex songs they sing. Uh, the zoo didn't say what, if anything, Itho did to woo Momo. So, Momo, uh, or Itho didn't know what Momo looked so like. Oh, she's singing. Oh, my God. Okay. All right, there you go. That's what I have. Wow. Yep, that's it. We'll Momo. wrap up the bizarre file there. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back in just a moment. Stay with us, my friend. On 93.3 WMM. We slit their throats and throw them overboard and turn them into shark bait. Yeah, exactly. Escape the children and make them slaves. In the city, we're really a fright. Drink up, be hard as your home. Because of syphilis. <laughs> the robot, you know, with the mouth. <laughs> and we're all half crazy because of syphilis. <laughs> but you're right. They burned down the town. Burned down the town and killed the animals. Uh, and sexually <laughs> abused the women. <laughs> uh, pirate's life. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I think that's the how the salty uh, old sea. Mm -hmm. I think that's how the first movie ends with Johnny Depp saying, "Drink up, me hearties, yo ho." Oh, really? I think that's the last line Drink of the movie. Drink up, me hearties, yo ho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's doing that 
freaking Jack Sparrow impression. Uh, <coughs> no, he needs, he needs to be just Johnny yeah, Depp. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that yeah, be... Uh, yeah, yeah. They come into town and rock around. <laughs> Visit the Viper Room. Huh. <laughs> I noticed that it's very hard to swat a fly. Oh, they move so fast. Well, I have it kind of down to a science. I have a theory, too. What is yours? You, uh, it, in, in, in many ways, it's like sex. You uh, come down the back <laughs> from uh, from b- behind the eyesight doesn't go all the way back to the back. Okay. So that's how I come in for the SWAT. My theory is, if so, if you're just sitting there and one, like, lands on your leg or something like you that. You ain't going to win. Mm-hmm. You don't move. No, no, right. I've, I've, I have a way to do it. I slowly will bring my hand into position, and then I will wait, and I will watch the fly. And once the fly starts doing that thing with its front two little hands, yeah. if it starts rubbing them together, because at first it'll notice your hand, and it'll stop. That's right. when it gets all greedy. Freeze and won't move. Yeah. And then when it starts going about its business, it is now not necessarily paying attention to your hand anymore, and then, bam! Nail them. I'm, I'm a fly hater, and I actually keep we keep a, a scoreboard at my house for dead flies. <laughs> That's cool. Everybody's name is on there. I notice there's a fly hater too. <laughs> and uh, and if you get you get them, you get a hash mark for every one that you get. He actually keeps score. I should have done a prize at the end of the summer, but I never got around to doing that. But anyhow, so here's the deal. This question, why do they move so fast, uh, flies, was uh, put to the BBC World Service crowd science team. And the answer is that, compared to us, basically, uh, they see things that, uh, every, they see things essentially what we see in slow motion. So, um, they see the world this moving. guy's wearing a bucket hat. <laughs> Much slower. <laughs> the speed of time differs depending on your species. This happens because animals see the world around them like a continuous video. But in reality, they piece together images sent from the eyes to the brain in distinct flashes a set number of times per second. And I'll explain that. So humans average 60 flashes per second and flies 250. The speed at which those images are produced by the brain is called the flicker fusion rate. Flicker fusion rate. Yes. Flicker. And there's, it's weird how they were able to determine this. So, in general, the smaller Did the species. Did they capture a fly and interrogate him? The faster its critical flicker. They put a, a light in front of him. Uh, please, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> they start smacking him around. No. Oh, no, please. Come on. I'm, just, I'm just a fly. In general... Uh, the smaller the species, the faster its critical flicker fusion rate is, and flies in particular. Critical put us flicker to shape. fusion rate. Yeah, so Professor Roger Hardy from the University of Cambridge investigates how flies' eyes work and has. It's the, actually very interesting when you stop and consider it. And uh, has an experiment to determine their flicker fusion rate. So it's simply how fast a light has to be turning on and off, that's the flicker, right? before it's perceived or seen as just a continuous light. So, a, like a flashing strobe light, okay? Right, so, so even though... you can tell when it's going off and on, but at some point, you can't, even though it is going off and on. Right. right. So, that's how, so, what they did is they insert tiny glass electrodes into the living light-sensitive cells of their eyes... Of a fly's yeah. eyes. Photoreceptors. How do they do that? Before flashing LED lights at faster and faster speeds. Each flash of the LED produces a tiny electrical I current. assume ladybugs come in in nurse outfits. In the photoreceptors. <laughs> That'd be hot. Hey, hey, up here, buddy. Up here. Here's where the 10,000 eyes are. Each flash of the LED produces a tiny electrical current into the photoreceptors that a computer can graph onto a screen. Huh. Tests reveal the fastest fly record distinct responses to flickering up to 400 times per second. Yeah, so, but I'm, I'm amazed at, at modern science and the fact that they can actually do, take like, something that tiny like that and actually... How do they get them to sit still to put those things in their eyes? The chair is very comfortable. Yeah, it's, it's comfortable. They get a little foot well, this masseuse. Is good. What is this? Oh, yeah. my God. Look at this. The feet come up. And they have them uh, relax. Somebody said that's why electricity cycles at 60 hertz per second, or HZ. Is that hertz per second? It just hurts. Oh, 60 hertz? It hurts. Uh-huh. <laughs> God, would you stop it already? We're morons. All right. I have a list of, uh, of things from uh, various magazines of suggestions of what to do. Ooh. I love it. Is this so activities. Is this local or, or anywhere? No, this is just anywhere. Okay. Aww. Uh, uh, but no, these are stupid. A pumpkin spice latte date. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Treat your bestie to a PSL. Bestie. Wait, what's a, a PS? A pumpkin spice latte. I know. Spice latte. Okay. I know. <laughs> 
And yes, spend, uh, I just wanted to let you know that your list stinks. Uh, <laughs> how about dinner and a fall-themed movie? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. All right, Throw a, that list out. What's how about buy some movie? orange crayons and rub it on a piece of paper? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, how about wait for, them to, hey, well, wait for them to come in and, and relax the straps on your hands? Uh, bacon apple pie together. Mm. Yes. Okay. What if you're Why not you're, together? What about, if you're alone? How about this? Watch a football game. Mm. <laughs> These are just <laughs> ridiculous. These are like out of, you know, like Allure magazine yeah. or, uh, you know. Yeah, right. Or how about look out the window at your neighbor's house? <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God. Like, somebody actually got paid to do that. Th- they needed an extra page in the right. magazine. Right. Here's a good fall activity Walk to the end you. of your driveway, turn around and go back. <laughs> From the mind of, uh, of Preston Elliott, do one of the uh, the train rides that are available in our okay. areas. Okay. That would be cool, right? Yeah. They, There's one out of New Hope. Um, Sept is all over the place. What? What is it? Sept is all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so scenic. <laughs> Does and that Hey, man, I'm sorry I pissed on you. <laughs> yeah, especially the houses that live right next to the train yeah. tracks. Those are always lovely. Uh, Strasburg is the one you're thinking Strasburg, of. Strasburg, yeah. Right, is that the, that's the best in the area, right? That's, they have the ghost train. It's like the old-style locomotive. That? That's, is that... Th- that's no. out by uh, Lancaster. And okay. didn't we have yeah. a, a Not Your Average Listener? Was she from? She was yeah. an engineer. Yeah. yeah. An engineer, yeah. For, for them, yeah. That was cool. And that, that, one, really that cool. one goes for about 40 minutes. I from what I understand. Something like that, yeah. 40, 45 minutes. Most okay. of them are like a half, you know, anywhere from like 40 minutes to an hour. That's still cool. But yeah. Case, along the lines of what you were saying, and if you're in Jersey, New Jersey Transit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Yeah. I'm hey, sorry. Does it, does Listen, it it's there? not exactly the same experience, but the, the buses are always a blast. <laughs> <laughs> this Probably. also says, uh, have a fall photo shoot. Oh, I'm doing that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Who put this together? Sling know. Blade? Uh, We're doing a family photo shoot. I got shoot. some great ideas for all of them. No, mm-hmm. don't make fun of that one. Go outside looking, looking out there. I got raccoons out in the field. Uh, mm-hmm. So you're doing a fall fan, a photo shoot? Yeah, Family we're doing it, Steve, on Forbidden Drive. Yes, it'll be. Yeah, I'd love to. Forbidden that's, Drive is close to me. Huh? Actually, that's a good idea. Can you? Do you want to bring us hot chocolate in the morning? I will absolutely. Right. With spice latte, SP. What is it? Uh, SPL. Uh, PSL. SPL. Uh, PSL. Look, I brought some Pumpkin. SPLs. SPL. Oh, look, I brought some silent but deadly. Yeah. Pumpkin spice latte. Uh, I told some penis. SPLs. <laughs> what did I say? Silent no, no. but deadly. Oh, yeah. SPDs. DVDA. It's DVDA. I brought some DVDAs, everybody. <laughs> PSLs. Is and lube. In, just replace DSL is something very different. <laughs> yeah. What? All right, hang on. Just say I, the letters. The letters aren't profane. No, no, but I'm just saying. <laughs> you well, you know. know what DSL, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But a PSL. D sucking lips. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now you're P sucking. Oh, okay. All right. Thank okay, you. guys. We oh, used to say DSB, bit... deadly sperm buildup. You hadn't gotten laid in a year. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I have DSB. Here. Where's that taking place? My pupils are right. <laughs> <laughs> We are all. This is. We are. This is. This is it. We're These are fall the activities. We are off the rails. I just want to know when yes, you're I'm doing. Yes, I'm interested in where the DSL is taking place. <laughs> I believe I qualify. <laughs> I, I definitely qualify. Romano. R O M A N O. That was my nickname, by the way. What? Are you what? kidding? Shut DSL? up. DSL. My girlfriends would call me that. Yes. Wow. <laughs> How ironic. <laughs> That you is. know I wasn't actually using that. I know. That, That's but, the definition yeah. of irony. It's like, <laughs> oh, my God. It does, yeah. That's like, that's, it's talking about Sling Bay. It's like nicknaming him the brain. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, genius. DSL. That's uh-huh. funny. Wow. We still find that things out about each other after all these years. <laughs> The Warner Brothers uh, movie A Star is Born remake is pushing its release to May 18th, 2018 from September 28th through to why is 2018. Why that? You know what? They don't really give a reason why, but they're moving it up. This uh, is Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga? Yeah, exactly. Cooper plays Jackson Maine, who discovers a talented unknown named Allie, that's Lady Gaga. Uh, her eventual fame puts a strain on their romance, and previous versions include the 1937 film starring Frederick Mark and Janet Gaynor. And the one with James Mason, where I played Norman Maine. Yeah, in 1954. Judy Garland's Esther Blodgett. Yes, James Mason and Judy Garland. It was the first time it was a musical version, and that was the first time. It was a musical? The original was not. Oh, Okay. Like they did, they sang. They sang. But, there were songs sung. But did they sing? Often. Did they sing dialogue to each other, or was it just songs uh, were in it? Uh, there were songs performed. Okay. Um, yes. Thank right. you, Mister Mason. Uh, and have some Thunderbirds. Yeah, thank you. When yeah. friends drop by unexpectedly, I break out the Thunderbird and beef jerky. <laughs> beef jerky? Absolutely. Okay. And everyone leaves with a small Tupperware container full of taco dip. Oh. 
That's a reroute. WMMR. Thank you, Kath. Our next guest is going to be at Helium Comedy Club tonight and tomorrow night. Two shows each night, 7.30 and 10 p.m. It's her first visit to the President Steve Show, so we are happy to welcome Kelsey Cook hey. to the show. Hi. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. No problem. Welcome to Philly. Thank you. Did you have a gig? Did you play last night, too? Yep. We had one last night. Okay. Was yep. there a lot of, uh, was anybody yelling... E A G L E S Eagles. <laughs> None of that. We did have a super drunk lady up front, oh, but God. I feel like that's a little on brand for Philly. Does that yeah. feel right to you guys? Well, there's some some drinking going on here. Yeah. Um, you had you had a bit of a. I was reading about you, and you sure. you kind of you your drinking trajectory <laughs> kicked off in college. Yes. Uh, was it Washington? You, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? So, uh, but I I there was a fascinating thing. I, I'm a, I'm a non-drinker. I've never been drunk, but you had wow. a you were describing a pre-game <laughs> ritual to going out and drinking for the night and how you prepared for it. Yeah. Uh, and it involved deli meat. Explain what? <laughs> explain what you did. Yeah. Oh god, this is such a rough <laughs> Rough way for people to hear about me. I apologize I think, in advance. I think everyone will connect to you. I, yeah. I think they're going to be impressed by your your uh, putting this together. Sure. Uh, I, I will take that as a compliment that yeah. I'm an innovator somehow. <laughs> but um, so when I was in college, um, I used to take shots of Bombay Sapphire Gin and chase them with mesquite smoked turkey breast. <laughs> <laughs> like, because <laughs> this is only because okay. at one point I, I, love that. I ran out of chaser yeah. and I was just in a rush. I didn't want to run to the store before going out to the bars. And I looked in the fridge and I was like, mm, you know, <laughs> a smoked a smoked meat might cover up that gin. <laughs> but I didn't realize that it's, it's, you know, you have to chew it. You can't just swallow it. Right, 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 yeah, yeah. Right. It's not a regular liquid. So uh, that was the problem is that my throat was on fire while I was <laughs> chewing diligently <the> <laughs> chewing up. Would that serve, would that also serve to get to get that into your system to help m mitigate, you know, in other words, yeah. to, to prep you? Because Kathy has... One drink, one water. One oh, right. drink, yeah, one so water. Yeah, so smart. Yeah. Right? That's the adult way to do it. Yeah. This was just, I don't know. Drink, drink, drink. Wait. Drink, drink, drink. <laughs> ham, ham, ham. You did Not this more good. than once? I, I kind of started doing it for a while. Oh, my wow. God. <laughs> it didn't last that long, but, yeah. yeah, I do feel like you know you're white trash when your cocktails are bomb ham. <laughs> like, it shouldn't. That should never happen. Right, right, right. I don't that's know. You're funny. drinking Bombay in college. That's kind of like, that's... It's not Bankers Club. Yeah. I was like a 95-year-old man to be drinking. <laughs> I know. Jen. Who was I? That's like exactly what my grandpa would drink. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Benjamin Button. <laughs> that, that's the one thing now that I can't. If I smell Bombay Sapphire. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I don't know shudder. anybody that ever just drank gin like without tonic, tonic. in it. Like yeah. it, Straight yeah. gin. Straight gin. Gin on ice, Happy maybe. to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Gin martini. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Martinis. Martini, the, the classic martini is actually a gin martini. Yeah, but not in college. Not it in college. It also has yeah, vermouth right. in it, too, so there is a little bit of a mixer in there. Well, uh, let, me sure. let me ask you. Is, so is it the, the drink that you used to get drunk in, in college? And I hear people... When they smell that drink when they're older, it makes them sick. Like yes. it, because you're, you you're to, attaching mental you hangovers. Have, you right? had to have had a bad experience. Oh, with okay. It, usually, oh, right? Just sloppy bar <laughs> makeouts <laughs> and yeah. being an idiot. Well, you don't want to remember yeah. that anymore. That's that yeah. was another God, part. Making out with <laughs> guys in mesh tank tops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever want to think about that. So yeah, when I smell Bombay Sapphire, I'm like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> gotta this, get out. This can't be. A was so, how was sorry, Nick? How uh, was the lady last night? What the, did she? Oh, was she annoying. Was she? Did she funny? smell a mesquite? <laughs> she she reeked of mesquite, and I knew that there was gonna be a problem. No, she just she was the classic like really great drunk voice of like I just I don't know why this is a problem. I like, I just like we just wanna have fun, and she just wanted to participate in every joke, and so you have to make a decision early on. Like either you're going to. Talk to her right away mm -hmm. and address it, and then potentially she gets kicked out. Or <laughs> both of you guys are raising your hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that so we don't step on each other. Just oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Or you just completely ignore it, and it's like a game time call. You have to kind of check their temperature and be like, right. Does she just want attention? And if I don't give it to her right away, maybe she will shut up the rest right. of the show, or is she just going to do it the whole time? So, mm. how often do you have to call security in to have somebody, a heckler, tossed? Oh. At, if it's a club that's really on top of it, you don't even have to get to that right. point. Yeah. And that's what is the best, is if a, a bouncer sees somebody saying something, they immediately are like, you're done. Yeah. yeah. But it's hard now because I'm sure you guys see on social media, crowd work clips are so popular. They are. 
for us to post. And also, if you're on tour, you don't want to be posting your actual stand-up because then people come see you and you're like, oh, yeah. like, oh, we've seen all this online. Right. So it's become this weird psychology where you almost hope there's a drunk person in your crowd, which is completely backward. You used to never want a heckler, right. and right. now you kind of want to But you can, handle, you can handle yourself. You, you, you come with the skill set, except though you... Thanks. You don't want to deprive the rest of the audience of, right. of, a, of a lab you're now conducting with this uh, person, you know? Right. Well, yeah. then let me ask. So is it almost like a, uh, a quote-unquote freestyle rapper who <laughs> they actually have some bars written? So oh. when they go into like a freestyle game, they're not necessarily freestyling. So do you actually have some some stuff that you've worked on just in case you do, you know, have you a drunk handle. person? Yeah, do you handle a drunk person in the crowd? No, because it's so different every time. Um, and usually it happens when somebody, somebody will shout something very specific out that you just have to kind of be ready to... Right. Talk right. to them to, or maybe they react a certain way to something you just said and you can kind of interact uh, it's, that way. But it's, yeah, I actually, so I, I know that you, you ran with like a Kreischer and those guys a little bit. <laughs> sure. so, yeah, so Jim Norton. For those, years, those guys yeah. can have fun. So yeah. I was at uh, uh, Segura had a show in uh, the fall in mm -hmm. Atlantic City, and his opener, there was, a, there was somebody in the first row who just kept chirping at him. Yeah. And he gave this guy every chance he, and mm -hmm. you know and at one point the security was coming to get him he goes no 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 no. i'm gonna give him one more chance one more chance you know uh, yeah. and then uh so the guy ended up finishing his set <laughs> and what was crazy was as the music was blaring to bring out tom segura there's this melee in the front row tom has no idea what's going on <laughs> right and so next thing you know the dude swings at the security guard and i'm like you idiot like oh. now you're going to jail like oh, before God, you were just yeah. being escorted out now you're actually going to jail, and all this stuff is going on. And Tom's like, "What the freak?" <laughs> yeah, and it was awesome. And he just sat there. You know, normally when you come out on stage, you you address the crowd, you say hello, <laughs> thanks for coming out, blah blah blah. And then and he was just he just sat there and watched. And like for you, when somebody's being escorted out, are you more of just a spectator, or or do you like to join in on on everything? Oh, it's hard not to join in right. because <laughs> at that point they've been like so awful that yeah. you are really ready to be done with them. <clears throat> this actually happened to me at my special taping about eight months ago. So I taped my special over the summer and I, I shot it in Denver. It happened to be the same weekend as the Stanley Cup finals. Oh, that's a joy. Yeah. Great, great timing. <laughs> in Denver. Uh, in Denver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what happened was we had a great first show. We taped two shows that night. First show was awesome. But then the second show started a little late, and what happened is all of the people got let out of the Stanley Cup game <laughs> in a blackout. <laughs> and they were like, we should just keep doing it. We should just go to a comedy show. Like, people who have no idea it's a taping. And we had two women up front oh. who were, I mean, <laughs> like, fully yeah. deep, deep blackout, just trying to shout things at me during the special taping right and so i was like okay whoa, whoa, whoa. like we gotta we can't do this yeah like either you guys gotta focus <laughs> and like really pull it together or you gotta go because this is a taping like i can't spend my special talking to you and uh they said one more thing got kicked out but they were so drunk that they were like two baby deer <laughs> like oh. it took them 45 <laughs> minutes to leave they just were like dropping things <sighs> And so I did say, as they were going, I was like, oh, moving at a real glacial pace. And they turned around and flipped me off. And that was pretty fun. <laughs> I mean, you've, that's, you, you've coned everything to get to that point where you're going to do presented. And that, that happens, that confluence of events. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, because uh, doing the research on you, um, foosball is, is <laughs> yeah. I was blown away because I saw it written. And then I saw it, well, that's probably something she included in her, in her biography, you know, as, yeah. as a joke. Or and like a got, football right. and then auto correct or something. Right, yeah. right. And then I'm like, oh, you, so you are a hardcore player. Yeah. And you can hustle. In fact, your last tour Professional. Yeah, was, was the, um, the hustle tour, right? Yeah, the hustler tour. And, yeah. and so explain, explain how you achieved this epic <laughs> status as a foosball champion. So uh, my parents met playing in a professional foosball tournament in the 80s. Wow. So I literally wouldn't mm. exist it's, if it weren't for foosball. <laughs> it's genetic then. Which is wow. so sad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so they had me. They've been training me since I was two years old and could stand on a stool and see the top of a foosball table. Uh, my mom's in the Foosball Hall of Fame. Wow. Like, oh, this is so ridiculous. It's I know a great it, game. It, it is. But your yeah. dad's not. 
my dad's not. Ah. They're also no longer married, so foosball is not a solid foundation for, right. for life marriage. Together, but for marriage, yeah. Now beer pong. That's that. Sure. That'll keep that's the marriage where they together. went wrong. That so, would have held it together. Yeah. So I'm a foosballer. I love the game. My uncle was <clears throat> like a champion growing up too. He's not in the Hall of Fame or anything like okay. that. So we grew up with it. I have a table now. Currently, we play occasionally, rarely. Nice. But I love the game. It's so much fun. Yeah. And and especially when you're when you're when you saddle up with someone who doesn't play the game and they start spinning. Oh, the spinning <laughs> oh, Come kills on. me. And then you have to explain to them, <laughs> you can't do that. Right. And they don't get it. Right. Yeah. Well, and that was kind of the premise of this tour was um, I wanted to find bars after the shows that I was performing in and go hustle people <laughs> because that's the, like when people picture a professional foosball player, there's no idea. There's no. no image for that, no. right, of what that person Or, or, or would not like. you. They're Al Bundy, they would think, <laughs> but yeah, not, right? Not. Yeah, definitely not me. And so it's so fun for me to go into a bar and find, like, drunk frat guys and be like, oh, my God, is this chess? Like, what? Is, I've never seen this. This looks like so much fun. We should totally play. And I'll play the first game terribly. Like, yeah, uh -huh. I'll giggle a bunch. I'll spin on purpose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'll be like, okay, so, like, I think I've got the hang of it now. Like, mm. we should play for money. <laughs> and guys will put, like, $100 on the table, and that's when I, oh my you know, for the pull game. out oh my, my foosball grip Wipe glove. Them. and <laughs> go Like the town. hustler with your ears. So let me ask you, how much, oh what's God. the most you ever took in a foosball hustle? I was in West Palm Beach. And I think I left with like almost three hundred dollars. Nice. Which nice. I know it's not in general, it's not a ton of money, no, but it's if good, for like though. a night of foosball, yeah. it's pretty, <laughs> pretty fun. Good. How many no. games? How many like games? people don't slap down a grand on a on a game of right. foosball. So that's that's a great take. Three hundred yeah. bucks? I mean, I've never done cocaine, but I would assume it's a similar rush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you the are you the only foosball hustler? I've never heard of this hustle before, and it's brilliant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure that there are some other people, like actual big time players, yeah. that do it. But I think I can get away with the hustle part better because of just being like a little blonde chick. Nobody yeah. suspects that. <laughs> I, I, have I would. I, I would be risks. taken. Yeah. Oh my Especially God. since it, it, you, know, you you come in and they're probably like, oh, this is. This, this attractive girl, she yeah, she's really thinks it's chess. Right, she really <laughs> wants to play with me, yeah. And uh, it's so much fun. So I started to post clips of that online of me hustling people afterward. And then that turned into people challenging me at shows. Uh -huh. And we started to do like $100 minimum bets. And it's just, it really is so addictive. Was that the step off for Risks of Fury? You, you did a, 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 a show, right? Right. So I have a web series on YouTube. There are uh, 26 episodes up. And uh, I play foosball against other comedians. And basically just get to do weird punishments to them when they lose, which is a blast for me. So Who was the best that you played against, comedian-wise? Um, Nick Thune was good. Oh, okay. Uh, Nick was great, yeah. yeah. Chad Daniels was good. So Chad Daniels is actually my boyfriend now. Oh. Uh, in real life? In like, real that's life. Not a joke. We love Chad. That's yes. great. Yes, when he heard I was coming on the show, he's like, oh, I love those guys. Oh, he had cool. a really great time when he was here. Um, but yeah, Chad Chad is pretty pretty decent at foosball. Because of you or, or he had that skill going into the relationship? He had that skill going in. He... Okay. Uh, also comes from a broken family. Like oh, mine. Okay. So he, I think he grew up playing in uh, arcades and like spent a lot of time in bars in younger years. And you just end up being good at that stuff. What what a, what a, a, a an example of natural selection that you find another foosball player. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, and in the same business. But that's yeah, that's cool. So who did you decimate the worst? Who did oh. you destroy the worst? Who took it the worst? Because some people <laughs> are competitive by nature. And just fall apart when they don't get anywhere near a victory. So Steve Renazisi was ah. pretty upset. <laughs> and, and that was my favorite punishment was mm -hmm. because I got to. Oh, Preston has a story for you. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. I've kicked his ass at golf on a couple of occasions. Oh, yeah. amazing. And I've, I've seen him yeah. get really mad. Oh, we should text him <laughs> yeah. a video clip of this. Uh, he was my favorite punishment to do because I got to wax the letter K for Kelsey into his chest. Oh, my God. Oh, my as God. his punishment. And, man, that's a fun feeling to, like, beat somebody who was so cocky going in. Yeah. And then also get to rip the hair out from the oh root. Yes. Uh, on his chest. I, 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 I like your, your whole modus operandi here. Yeah. Thank that you. seems like So it's not just enough. To just, it's very uh, Conan the Barbarian. You destroy him and then, you know, make, make them weep. 
It's a little. It's a little Queen Cersei. It's a little. <laughs> a little, bit, a little, bit. It's a little much. I just finished Game of Thrones for the first time, so now I'm that person that I want to talk about it all the time. And it's like seven years late. Everybody's yeah. like, "Okay, cool." Yeah, Losers. You, just, <laughs> you just finished Game of Thrones. We got a show you need to watch. It's called The Last of Us. Uh, I've been wanting to start it. Oh my Bella God. Ramsey, who plays yes. uh, Lady Mormont, Liana Mormont, girl. she's the girl in this, and it's fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, so you got to check that out. It's when you the, get a okay. Yeah. I, I, here's my biggest testament to it is that I watch it when it actually airs for the first time. I never do that. I always wait yeah. until, uh, but I, I, I will okay. wait and when the show comes on because it's so great to get sucked into something like that. I, I, did you did you binge Game of Thrones? I binged. Okay. I really binged it, yeah. Longest binge session with Game of Thrones. How many episodes? Be five. Okay. I'm getting old. I mean, I yeah. can't listen. It's a commitment. It's I can't be doing past two right. a.m. anymore. But you got, you got to make it to Denny's by the end. Yeah. It's it's a whole thing. But it was so good. I yeah. really am happy. I finally yeah. joined all of society, even though it's many years later. But I think I was like the only person who hadn't seen it. No, uh, me too. I, I started it. Okay. The problem is you jump in. And there are 45,000 other new things that everyone's telling you to watch. Mm -hmm. And oh, so yeah. you got to lock and load. And so we've sort of made a, an unofficial pact here that we will mention a show, but we won't. Oh, you got to watch Yeah, we won't this. keep yeah. pushing it. Uh, because you, because yeah. everyone's got their thing, you know. And as you say, there's also a life you want to live. You yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. I, I actually tried reading the books. And the problem is, uh, well, I, I'm not words. a reader. Words. <laughs> Written word is not <laughs> good for me. Number one word. Um, but he is so descriptive about everything. So when they would sit down for these meals, like he would go through oh. the entire table of yeah, the food, you know the food uh, he focused on quite a bit, which yeah. is I oh, liked wow. personally. And you look at him and you <laughs> yeah. wouldn't think he had a food fetish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, I had tried to start watching it um, as the pandemic hit, actually. But it's so dark mm -hmm. that I just was like, you know, I went, I got divorced a week before COVID, uh -huh. and I was trying to watch Game of Thrones. I was like, this is a rough time yeah. to be watching people <laughs> getting their heads chopped off. I'm like, I think I need to wait till a better time. In but life. good for you getting divorced right before COVID. Yeah, you. going through that. I it might have ended in murder suicide if it's. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. Well, you know what's funny? Like we we're still on on good terms, good. and so it wasn't like a, a bad divorce or anything like that. He's also a comedian, so um, there weren't a lot of assets to split up either. So you know, that made it. A little That's the big nothing to fight over. Yeah, who wants the Batman? And begins DVD. That's a rough <laughs> that's, month, though. Yeah. Like a, a divorce well, leading into the weirdest phenomenon of our lifetime. Yeah, exactly. So I think you're right that it's like n nice that that happened before, but it's also you go from living with somebody for eight years into yeah. living alone in a time where like you can't see anybody, you yeah. can't travel home to see family or friends. So that it was like divorce extreme. Yeah. It felt like a Guy Fieri reality show or something. <laughs> I was like, this is Diners, drives, and divorces. Yeah. Yeah. Were you in L.A. too? Or? I was in L.A. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I was in L.A. through 2020, and then I went back up to Spokane, Washington, where I'm from originally, right. for a couple of years, and then just uh, moved in with Chad. Actually, uh, we got a place in Minneapolis. Nice. So, oh, okay. I, I'm going to say this, uh, and I think, I, I think you guys are all going to agree with me. I think... Uh, and this isn't going to mean anything to you, but it'll mean something to us. I think you could be Nick's girlfriend's, tw like, identical twin sister. Do you guys see that as well? Um, not no, identical not twin. Maybe, like, fraternal twin. No, fraternal maybe, twins? Yeah. I would maybe say friend who's good at foosball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I get told I look like so many people. It's so interesting. Do you guys feel like you get told you look like people a lot? Uh, no, oh, yeah. It's never good. It's always <laughs> a fat person. If it's somebody who's bald, yeah. even if the guy has been through some, uh, like, a kiln explosion, I'm told... <laughs> Uh, yeah. like apparently yeah, that's just like you. Yeah, yeah, my uncle looks exactly like you. I mean, after the skin grab. I I thought she had a little bit of a uh, Beth Gardner. Uh, uh, yeah, I got yeah. that. Who's got another that. very attractive friend of ours? But, but oh, uh, yeah, here's uh, here's Nick's girlfriend. Oh yeah, I, I uh, can yeah. see that a little bit. Um, Who do you get on the famous side that people compare you to? So let me see if I can say this on air in a way that doesn't <laughs> get you guys in trouble. My my friend Jay had told me that my celebrity lookalike um, is this porn star named Jesse Rogers. Is this Jay <laughs> Oakerson by any chance? No, not no, Jay okay. Oakerson. Um, <laughs> Jesse Rogers. Pull up, pull up. Oh, right. Jesse, Jesse Rogers. Rogers. Jesse Rogers. Research okay. here. And so I, I hadn't heard of her, but I Googled her. Oh, uh, yes, actually, a little bit. Uh, but here's the thing. No. When you Google... Yeah. A porn star. Of no, no. The first picture that popped up was her doing like hardcore, you right. know, yeah, yeah, door yeah. stuff. And I was a little creeped out realizing that my friend Jay saw that and was like, you know who this reminds oh, me of? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
whole gape and bee hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Gape and hole, yeah. Oh, my God. It's like, what? <laughs> Don't tell me that. There's yeah. no there's no uh, way to finesse that, right? No. Yeah. Oh. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're right. Yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty oh, funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of that realm, if I may bring up a, holes? <laughs> well, <laughs> sort of. Okay. I said bee hole. I didn't know since, if I get to say the since, whole butthole. Yeah. <laughs> since you're aware of radio restrictions, uh, the way you found out you were. Um, uh, they had a uh, latex uh, issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could, could what, you, an allergy? Oh, explain <laughs> explain <laughs> that. Oh, no. it's And the way, the way you tell it is hilarious. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, okay, this is going to be like playing Minesweeper, trying not to get you guys kicked <laughs> off. This is going to be hard to say this in a PC way. But um, so when I was in high school, uh, there was a year where kind of like all my friends were losing their virginity, and I hadn't yet, <laughs> and I uh, I felt left out. And so I decided that I was going to try... Um, Self pleasure? Sure. There we go. <laughs> this is going to be like a, a mad lib. I'm just yeah, going to put yeah, it. Adjective? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you add in whatever word <laughs> is appropriate. Yeah. This yeah. is going to be great. We will actually. help you. We will guide you. I'm actually so excited to hear the words you come up with. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, I tried using this, my mom's like manicure tool. Right. Which, you know, when you're a teenager, you're just like looking yeah. for something that you think is the. G the look guys are looking at it well, like, oh, this cantaloupe in half sure, looks yes. like American yeah. pie. Exactly, yes. yeah. So, in in my defense, this thing was like, <laughs> they were asking for this to be used, and it was like all tapered and stuff. I'm like, okay, <laughs> come on. And but I didn't know um, that I had any sort of allergies, and so I. Uh, do you want to insert a word? Uh, falafel? No. I, fa I falafeled myself. Well, we're going in a weird direction. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I, I did, and then um, I, I knew that something was really wrong right away because I felt, like, burning. Wow. When you have a, a, a latex, um, when you're allergic to la latex, it, it presents quickly. Yes. Yeah. Sure does. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I looked with a mirror. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, boy. And swollen. it was swollen shut. Oh. Wow. You must have been going and, out of your mind. And, like, imagine you're a teenager, and this yeah. is the first time you've ever done anything <laughs> with that body part. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so I uh, went into my mom's room. I was, like, pale as a ghost. And she was like, what's going on with you? And I was like, um... <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this <laughs> <laughs> because you're never going to see me the same way again. Uh, right. And she was like, honey, nothing you tell me <laughs> can make me stop loving you. And I was like, let's not say things we can't take back. <laughs> this is about to be bad. And so I was like, um, I wanted to know what sex felt like. So I took your manicure tool <laughs> and I put it. Um, <laughs> um, I was like, I put it inside me and now my vagina's gone. And she was like, <laughs> Now it's gone. Oh. Now my vagina's gone. I mean, like, I really yeah. thought that I had <laughs> sealed it up, done some sort of like Chris Angel, uh. like <laughs> magician, Hogwarts away. Uh. My turned you into my a Barbie. Crotch. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And so we had to go to uh, my. I like grew up in this like <laughs> tiny town outside of Spokane, and so it's, we've had the same family doctor since I was like oh my God. a kid. This is like very Christian man, yeah. very Steve from Blues Clues energy, <laughs> not <laughs> not equipped to deal with this situation. Oh you go in swollen shut. Yeah, yeah, and I'm like having a full panic attack, having to like tell the nurses because I'm like everybody's gonna find out. Everybody knows everybody in this town, and by the time the doctor came in, he was like, "Hi, Kelsey." So. Um, we heard you did something with a <laughs> with a manicure tool. Oh. We don't. Susan, do you know what that is? No, nobody knows what that is. Okay. Um, do I need to have a little look see at your undercarriage? <laughs> and he like straps on his miner's headlight. <laughs> just like, oh my god, just like put me down like an old dog. Like, oh my I god. don't want to live through this. <clears throat> and um, wait, can I ask? How was your mom this whole time? I think she was in the waiting room. Okay. But I mean, it's like as I can't. I'm not a parent, but I would imagine you hear that, and you're just like. Okay, well, yeah. Yeah. I guess... Uh, you rise to the challenge. We're not having corn dogs for dinner anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be trusted with anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> here we go, going to the doctor. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, he, he, you know, went down there, looked around and was like, okay, like, I can deduce that you are allergic to latex because wow. that's what that thing was made of. It was of this, course, like, grippy yeah. rubber material. <laughs> um, so he's like, you know, going forward, like, no condoms. Yeah. 
please don't do anything with balloon animals. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, um, did yeah. you just give you some Benadryl and, and it all went, went away, or? It was just, yeah, I think it was like a Benadryl situation, also just kind of like a weighted out, like it will just calm down. Wow. But uh, Acknowledging uh, that, uh, you know, uh, my mother, we was three boys in the house, and... and when she became aware that, you know, through perhaps an errant tissue that was not put sure. away. That yeah. her couch that cushions living. were no longer safe. <laughs> right. Yeah. But she, she didn't have to take me to the hospital. Yeah. yeah like, this like, is like a... That's like a, oh, okay, a knowing, like in the sting, <laughs> the nod, we're in on the whole thing. We got it. Yeah. You're the absolute worst scenario yeah. for this. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Did you, ne you could never use condoms? So it, they had to be uh, non latex. Yeah. Oh, that that exists. Oh, they have okay. them. Yeah. 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 Did it did it scar you sexually for a long time? I think I was just so um, like ashamed that yeah. that had happened mm -hmm. because that just seemed like when you're that young, you and your friends aren't really talking that openly about that stuff, and it right. took like ten years before I even considered talking about it on stage. Wow. And I'm so happy I did because it ended up becoming oh my um, god it's... what I told on this is not happening on Comedy Central. So, and then it, like, went viral, and I'm so happy, but I also <laughs> am like, oh, my God, I can't believe that many people know about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you're very honest, and, that, and your, your, your your material is great. I mean, you, you, you oh, play... Thank you. you, you, you um, the stuff is hilarious, but... It, it, and there's the, the candor is, I think, also what makes it so hilarious. <laughs> totally. Exactly. Thanks. Wow. Boy, good morning. Huh? Yeah. Good morning. I didn't know we were going to talk about all that. Yeah. I'm, I'm very awake now. I need some gin. After that. Yeah. And some Punch me. mesquite turkey. Is that what yeah. I need Some gin and mesquite. We, we need some gin and ham for sure. Uh, well, listen, Kelsey Cook is going to be at Helium tonight and tomorrow. There are two shows each night. They're 7 30 and 10 o'clock, and you can get uh, heliumcomedy.com. Uh, we urge you to come back here again so we can see you again sometime. I would love and that. I want more stories when you get back. Because that's oh my God. freaking priceless. Oh, Great. good. That's I'm happy that you're all not traumatized. <laughs> wow. Good. Well, thanks for being here, Kelsey. Thank you so much Enjoy for having your me. Time this was a blast. Excellent. Thanks. Kelsey Cook, yeah. everybody. We're going to take a break. We'll come back in a moment and hang in there. Preston and Steve. On 93.3 WMMR. Do we still have the Thunderbird? Uh, yeah. See if you can find that audio. Look up James Mason. Hmm. And Thunderbird, yeah. which was basically Thunderbird <laughs> is like the malt liquor right. that you'll find, you know, discarded bottles of in uh, alleyways. In alleyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, here it is. Yes. I like the unusual flavor of Thunderbird wine. <laughs> it's an exceptionally good drink for every occasion. Thunderbird has an unusual flavor all its own. An unusual flavor. <laughs> What does I imagine perhaps a sloth seminal fluid to taste like? Oh, oh my God. God. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's unusual for sure, <laughs> as I'm only guessing, having not ever gone down on a slot. <laughs> <laughs> unusual oh for sure. Nobody's ever said that. <laughs> oh my God, I'm wheezing like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> not quite like anything I've ever tasted. <laughs> it actually physically <clears throat> sticks in my teeth. Which you don't find in most liquids. <laughs> I suggest that you try Thunderbird. It's really delightful. Oh, best way to get rid of unwanted friends. This is peak, peak lazy. Um, Walmart has revealed it is testing a service in Silicon Valley that delivers groceries straight into customers' refrigerators. They'll pack your fridge for you? Yep. <laughs> They'll pack your ass, Prest. <laughs> <laughs> you moving? Bend over and I'll pack your All ass. All right, is it. this because, like, so... Hope you pack your ass. <laughs> Amazon, you have Amazon, oh, it's like pantry or whatever, and then Amazon Fresh, where they deliver it to your, your How about doorstep. Am Amazon Rectum, where they mm -hmm. actually feed you the food and then push it through your... Oh, dear God. Yeah. So the problem we have with the Amazon Fresh isn't really anything except for the fact that um, uh, they're, when they pack the frozen food and the um, uh, the perishable foods... They have ice packs to keep yeah. it like fresh. Now we have like, like seventy. You don't, you don't have to we keep have them. Seventy ice packs. You don't I, have to keep them. I, right? You, you can know actually what? throw some of them out if you, if you can, want. Drop them off at uh, retirement homes. They love to play with them. 
Wait a minute. So you is, so you feel obligated to keep them all? Well, all right. So they they did come in handy for the shore this past summer. I keep we, a couple we, of them. Yeah, we we kept yeah. um, you know a whole bunch in the freezer. So when we would take a cooler down to the beach or whatever. But uh, can't you return them? I, I guess you no, could. It's just, it's just plastic right, with water on. in it. Oh, all right. It's oh, not... and by the way, what is is it just plastic with water? No, in it? Because it's... those yeah. things stay frozen for days. Well, yeah. Poke one open, drain it out. Drink it. Drink it. Drink, drink it. it. Uh, no, thanks. No, and then, no, 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 thanks. Uh, no, I'm saying if you want to get rid of them, just to, and then throw it into recycling. Is well, it my point is airline think... employee semen? Is that what it is? Yeah. I don't okay. think it's just water. I will bet you. Oh. What? That would be a great idea. Oh, wait a I second. will bet you. Oh. A shopping spree? <laughs> no. That it is more than just water. What do you mean no? Make you... it more interesting. Than well, what the, what does... I want your Com rip shirt. Yeah, complete, oh, okay. complete the <laughs> you rip on your shirt. shirt. Back. Rip it all Underpants. the way Let down. Let me rip right the now. rest of your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and you got a back. We, we <laughs> now rip it below <laughs> knocker level. <laughs> you have to puncture them first, right? You can't no. just throw them away full. Yeah. Yeah. Is that too much effort? <laughs> Did you say yo? Or did you say no? I said yeah. Yeah. Yo. Okay. I said yeah. Yo, buddy. Yeah, yo. Anyway. Um, yo. Yes. My, we, we started uh, hanging on to a few of those as well, and then what am I doing? And I just started throwing them away. So. <laughs> I'm done with the coat I wanted to make out of these. Mm -hmm. All right. Hold on. What? What? We, we may. Breaking uh, news? No. It's oh, not, no, it's not breaking news. Don't do it. too late. Breaking news. Breaking news. A lot of texts breaking are coming news, in. Breaking news, breaking news. Do, 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 do. Saying that they've opened those things up and there's all kinds of blue stuff and sticky and Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Where Kathy, where's he, where's he going to take you? <laughs> where are we going? Sex, Preston, right after the show. Sex? Sex, right Sex, after yeah. the show. Wow. Sex after the show with Kathy. Here, here's another one. So it says the packs say on it that you can cut them and empty them down the drain. Oh, I don't read things. Here's somebody says, I'm an owner of a I'm the owner of Amazon. The fluid is from aborted babies. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, good God. <laughs> uh, I, okay, I don't know. That's not funny. But what, sir, see, uh, now you may be taking about your service. Yours, is yours from Amazon? No. Mine's oh. uh, HelloFresh. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. HelloFresh. Blue Apron. <laughs> uh, I want to go to this call on the line real quick, and then uh, we're, we're going to take a break in just a moment. So I'm going to go to uh, Harry. Hey, Harry, how you doing? Good. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. What's up, bud? Hey, you know, most townships have a thing like once a year or so. They call it – one of the names they use is called clean sweep. Yeah. And if you have, like, uh, paint cans or drain cleaner or something like that that you don't want any kind of chemical like that. Household, yeah. household hazardous there. waste, yeah. Yeah. That you, they, you could take it there, and uh, most of them don't charge you anything for it because they just want you know, to you get rid of it safely. I got to look for that because I have a whole bunch of paint, paint cans I'm looking to get rid of. I have all the stuff Harry. from my meth lab I'm looking <laughs> to get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, have, I have a ton of stuff that I need to throw And you out. never know, and you don't want to, like, battery acid or, or, or you know what else? I have a lot of those old kerosene, uh, not, not kerosene, those old, um, the, the fuel for the little. Um, oh, Yeah. Barbecues, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the yeah. Um, little containers, propane the tanks, propane, right? the mini propane tanks. Mm -hmm. uh, go to your uh, your your uh, trash provider or yeah. trash, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> trash provider, uh, not your trash. I didn't get my trash delivery this week. <laughs> I'm sitting here without any garbage. Everyone looks like they're far more. <laughs> your disposal provider. Where is my trash delivery? <laughs> I put the cans out at the curbside. I'm waiting. Everyone else has their trash. Do you want me to look like an idiot? Sorry, sir. What for? Do you want general trash, like, or do you want, like, hobo trash? Do you want the classic fish bones and flies, or do you want... <laughs> We go with like large, yeah, yeah. you know, so, uh, boxes, styrofoam, yeah. stuff like that would be fine. Yeah, yeah. shredded paper, something documents that made me look important. <laughs> All right, sir. <laughs> Sorry for the confusion. Oh. <laughs> Who is your the nation's trash number one trash provider. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyhow, if, if you call it your trash service, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, or or go on their website, it, yeah. it will tell you how you can go about uh, disposing <sighs> of household hazardous waste. I always forget to do that, mm -hmm. so you end up with forty-five cans of old paint in your house. <laughs> yeah, it's true. If you're just tuning in, it's Michael Cutlets who is here with us. The, the earlier roles, you, you have 90210. You're also in um, Dragon the Bruce Lee story. Mm -hmm. Right? Hey, Chinaman. Yeah. Teach us those moves. Wait yeah. a minute. He, you're, you're in that scene? Yeah, he's I'm, one of those. I am that scene. 
Wait, where, where is I'm it? Bruce Lee. <laughs> no, 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 no. Dude, where you are phenomenal. I'm amazing. You looked Asian. You looked Asian. <laughs> Wait, when he was in the uh, going to college and he's yeah, yeah. Uh, training in the. I'm, I'm like, the I'm like the, I'm like the guy. I'm like the. I represent. The man. Okay, I, I have to go back and, uh, and I've seen that movie a bunch of times. But you're, you were very forgettable in it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I adore you. Oh, what's the show again? <laughs> what do you guys do? When is this air? Is this, oh. on, this will be on TV later, right? Yeah. Later. Oh. oh but go. listen, radio. They still do that. <laughs> we're huge in Lakewood. <laughs> I know. Nobody's there, so I can tell you. Well, I'll, I'll go back and see what's going on. Listen, I got on board uh, with The Walking Dead very, very late. It was. Uh, I didn't start until the sixth season, then I. I watch every day, it, and in fact, it helped me out. It actually helped me lose some weight because I made it a decision that I, I got it on Netflix. And I'm going to watch. The only time I'm going to watch it is when I'm exercising. So it became my appointment to exercise. I could only exercise when I was watching Walking Dead. I could only watch Walking Dead when I was exercising. It was actually a really cool thing to do. So I became a huge fan of this. I've gotten all the way up to uh, the end of season six. six. <laughs> And then it stopped on Netflix. It ends. Oh my god! And then I had to wait <laughs> because I couldn't go watch the, the you know, the, the current. I, I had to wait until it came back around. So that just recently, and we kept you protected. We kept you in the nobody dark. Nobody told me anything. <laughs> and Casey says, "Listen, before Michael comes in, watch the first episode of season seven. He's a giver. <laughs> he is. I didn't watch it, but I read on my little prep sheet a little little spoiler alert. So yeah. I found out today, man. I'm sorry. All right, it's okay. I'm, I, I'm may or may not come back by the end of the season. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. There's always what. flashbacks, man. And, uh, and no, maybe... last year. She's over here going, <gasps> no, end of season seven. I mean, even yeah. now, there's still some people who are not quite sure what happens to your character. I know. Well, yes. Yeah. And that's the thing where it's, where does that line drawn? Where, oh, you can't talk about that. Yeah. Like, bro, it's like, come on, dude. It's been a year. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, get to, we get to talk about it. Abraham's dead. Dead, 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 dead. <laughs> okay, if you're listening in your car and you're driving your kids to school, Abraham is <laughs> Is dead. Uh, <laughs> not only Abraham is dead, then they killed Glenn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that was you're right. There needs too. to be there needs to be a uh, an expiration date. Oh, like a come you to Jesus what? moment. Yeah. Uh, there, there should, in fact, there should be like in the Hunger Games, uh, an announcement across on some universal PA system. Yeah. Okay, now we can talk about exactly. it. For some reason, the the final uh, the final scene in uh, the end of season six stuck with me. For a long, I thought about it every single day, uh, just because it was just it was gripping, and you know, obviously it was a, uh, you, you don't know who's who's on the receiving end of the bat, and I just. Uh, I, I don't know why, but every single day, at least once a day, I would just think Negan, bat, head, and Ooh, that's yeah. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And it was it wasn't. And we all thought it was gonna be Maggie. You know, let's beat up the sick pregnant yeah, lady. Yeah, you know, right. Network television. To me, it didn't oh, matter it. who it was. You know, I just knew that I that somebody that I had cared about for a few years was was going to be gone, and I had preferred it to be Eugene, but, uh, you know, it was Yeah, me too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was hoping for that. That annoying <laughs> bastard. It, the reaction, I'm a fan of the show, too. Yeah. So I, I was kind of, like, a little part of me was pissed off that they, they did us both at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of brilliant, too, because it's so brutal. And it, and it is that reminder that um, Kirkman always says he wants to constantly remind the audience that it's a dangerous world that we're living in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not Star Trek. Yeah. Or Captain Kirk, oh, he's in danger. But that's okay, because he'll be on next week. Exactly. Right? Like, exactly. Well, he may actually blow Captain Kirk's head off this mm -hmm. week. Yeah. And that changes the whole viewing experience. It, mm -hmm. it does. And I would argue that these two deaths were not actually any more violent than anything we've seen on the show. But you, you don't care about any of those other characters that that's a good care point about these characters because other other characters have been ripped apart oh, noah yeah. got it nailed in the in the yeah. revolving door up against the glass getting ripped apart we've right. had people hold, literally holding their guts going <laughs> what i don't oh jeez <laughs> i mean there's been some really nasty awesome visual stuff i but think it, um for for me it, i i got to the uh to the game a season late. Um, it might have been two seasons late. And for me, it was because I didn't want to watch a zombie show. And mm -hmm. then I realized me too. That, that this is not, it's not a horror show. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it until I was probably about halfway through the first episode, maybe the second episode, because I, I kind of watch horror movies with my hands over my eyes. And I, I, I realized that I didn't have to do that. And then I realized that, that the zombies are, are a background almost like the trees are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and it was really all about the relationships between these people and, you know, what that type of what, situation will what people, do to a person. Yeah, turn into when there's mm -hmm. a... 
overwhelming crisis, you know. Well, it's like if you had a chance to rebuild society, what would you do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, if a you feudal had a, society? You had a, well, yeah, and, you know, yeah. And how would it fail? What, what what are the same mistakes you would make, right. you know, even though you, you well, think, oh, this time we'll do it different? And, you know, and you see through the show, you know, that, that absolute power does corrupt absolutely. Um, and and you see people change, and you see people make mistakes. You know, it's it's the, it's, the show's very human. I want to ask you, how much does the Talking Dead series um, add to the fandom of this show? Because it's... it's the show's a very emotional show. You, you, you get very connected to the characters, and, and horrible things happen to them. Uh, and then you're left home alone. With yeah, that, and yeah. this is is a way to, I think, share what you're feeling to to sort of know you're not alone. <laughs> um, and you know, Chris has described it as the the warm hug after the show, and uh-huh. and you know, we we laugh at that, but. I, I think it is. You know, it's it's it, you get to process the the show. You get to hear what other people thought about it. If you yeah. were, you know, you know, I, maybe you think, well, I think he or she is feeling this, or they're going through that, and then you hear people talk about it, and you get to sort of bounce your ideas off their ideas. Um, so it is it is an extension in a way of the 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 sort of the social media of it all, and. Um, that I think we like. I mean, we yeah. like that interaction. We like, you know, know, knowing we're right or wrong or, or you know, being not, not necessarily corrected, but sort of like, well, what happened there? And if somebody talks about it and that is what happened there, you it's, know. It's brilliant. It's, it's yeah. great, yeah. Michael, I wanted to ask us, I know you've uh, you've voiced uh, some characters in uh, Call of Duty. They have a new World War II game coming out. Uh, Steve and I are massive fans of the World War II. I know they, they've spanned all kinds of different campaigns and so forth, but my favorites have been the one in the World War II. Did you voice any in that nothing, nothing recent. I've okay. been out of town for the last four. Okay. Is is voice acting for a video game a much different uh, animal? Is yeah. it, is it? I, we always hear it's sort of weird because you're kind of just freelining it, and yeah. that's you're, it. You're like basically this. This is a, a session, except you do it for two and a half hours. Really, we've been uh, collecting items for Casey's big game adventure. Uh, and uh, in, if you do not know about it, I'll give you a, a quick rundown of what's happening. Casey and uh, Jackie Bam Bam and Kyle Mack are going to hit the road again. They're driving almost to Los Angeles. They're going to make it to Phoenix, but it's a similar drive. You know, it's, it's pretty damn far. <laughs> now, what's out there? What's out there? Well, there's a game coming up yeah, soon. Yeah. So anyhow, we're sending Casey and company, and we are going to do It's a Philly Thing as kind of our theme. Uh, meaning, you know, obviously that's been the refrain of the season, uh, but we've decided to take some Philly things out there to kind of create this awesome, great mojo vibe of good stuff. And the, one of the Philly things that we are going to take on Casey's trip is Anthony Gargano <laughs> uh, from our sister station, uh, 97.5, The Fanatic. Cuz! And he's going to go along, and uh, he's going to be, uh, we're going to obviously be chronicling here at MMR. They're going to do the same thing over at The Fanatic, which is really cool, too. Um, and so the guys are taking a briefcase full of items that you are dropping off to us, and we're going to add some things as well that are all Philly or all personal or Eagles-related, and we're just doing what little bit we can. Casey's the king. He's the, he's the, the crown prince of stupid stition. So he knows that this is this is, this is is one of the strongest things you could do for this, right? No doubt. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. And there'll be a ceremonial placing of these items around uh, the venue, right? Yes. And, yeah. and so the, the, that will be our way of passing that juju forward yes. and hopefully influencing the outcome of the game. So we're getting some good stuff, and we got things like the Mummers represented in and, and, and uh, Tasty Cake and Wawa and th- stuff like that. Uh, but I got an email from a, a guy named Jack that I uh, have been in contact mm-hmm. with for years and years at uh, the Battleship New Jersey, and he said, can I send you something from the ship over? And I'm like, God, are you yeah. kidding me? We love the New Jersey. That'd be awesome. I mean, that's part of the, you know, the the, the riverfront there. When yeah. you look, you yep. see it, whether you're looking in New Jersey or uh, Pennsylvania, it's right there. And so he sent over, uh, this is Caroline, by Yay. the way, guys. Who's from the, the Battleship New Jersey. Caroline, what's your last name? It's Alan. Alan, and uh, what do you do with uh, Battleship New Jersey? I'm the major gift officer, so when you guys hit the lottery, come to me and make a donation. All right, ah. the major gift officer. Sir. And you're also a, an expert on maritime battles, correct? Quiz <laughs> 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 me up, guys. <laughs> Caroline's been with the ship for the, the, like a couple of months, three months, something like that? Yep. Okay. So she's kind of new, and she's like, please don't. 
<laughs> please, please don't ask me way too much about this because I'm still learning and we totally get it. It's all good. But you brought a piece of the ship for us to take with us. What did you bring? Yeah. So what we brought over, and we as an eye, is a piece of the teak deck. <laughs> the teak deck. <laughs> yes. And okay. you may be confused as what the teak deck is. So the way the battleship is built is there is a top layer of wood. Yeah. And then it's steel underneath. Yeah. Ah. So, yes, yeah. it's the best wood that you can get for all this kind of weather that we get in Philadelphia, which, as you know, can be erratic. Yeah. And I just want to let you guys know that Battleship New Jersey is the most decorated U.S. battleship in U.S. history. Wow. So bring a piece of that history with you. It was built in the Navy Yard in Philadelphia. So we're really excited to have it for you guys. Wow. You come yeah. with a certificate of that. authenticity. Wow. I love this. Dude, and by so the way, teak, right teak is used in, 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 in has been used in uh, a ship and boat building for forever because of its durability. That, but this this piece of history, we've always we we're well aware of the uh, the iconic history of the uh, of the battleship and. You know, we I've been there multiple times. I'll take people when oh, they come in it. from out of town. I'll, I'll take them over. Tours. They get blown yeah. away. Yeah. Yep. I, I love going over there. Um, so this is, I've got the piece here. Uh, Jack had initially said, he goes, would six feet be about <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, let's trim that down to about six inches. <laughs> and this is more about like uh, eight or nine inches. So Did they yeah. literally like just use a crow, crowbar and, and pry it up? Or how do they get the wood? Any idea? Know, Carolyn? Oh, guys, I'm so happy you asked. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> So again, when you win the lottery, we're looking to expand the teak deck. We have to replace it every 20 years. Oh, wow. So we're currently, I would say, three-fourths finished the teak deck. So please make a donation wow. so we can finish up that deck and you guys can walk all around. I wanted to say one last thing, Preston, if yes. that's okay. Please. So if you guys like beer, which I'm assuming you do, <laughs> we're doing a toast to the birds on the battleship with Miller Light on Saturday, February 11th at noon. We're going to fire the five-inch guns. So, wow. yeah, you might want to bring your headphones. It's very loud. <laughs> so it's a free Miller Lite to every adult that attends. So mm -hmm. your children cannot have right. Miller Lite. <laughs> but there's more than enough there to keep them engaged. Yes, exactly. It's awesome. We've been there many times. Yeah, and by the way, they do events like this. They do craft beer events yeah. and, and all kinds of stuff at the Battleship New Jersey. Have, you may not know that, that these parties are going on there. We did a band on the Battleship. We did. We yeah, did a band yeah. on the yeah. Battleship years ago, which was great. So, um well, that's awesome. We, we are happy to add that to our collection Thank of you. things that's going to go uh, to Phoenix. Uh, for for the I love this. This yeah. is perfect. Awesome. awesome. Yes. Guys, awesome. thank you so much. Go Birds. All right, yes. go Birds. Thank you, Caroline. Yay! Appreciate it. There you go. Casey, give me some more of that uh, patriotic music. Is this uh, Anchors Away? Yeah, yeah. The, I have it as the Navy fight song. Yeah, Anchors uh, Away. Okay. Uh, that's really cool. That could be the most historic piece well, that we have that we're taking the, with the us. Incredible, yes, the incredible history. The mojo, you can see it. It, it. it actually kind of vibrates in your hand as you hold it. Yeah. Uh, kind of like a manicure yes. tool. Or, yeah. or yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get down to the Schuylkill River at some point, though. Yes, Casey's, oh, really? Casey's going to take uh, Schuylkill River water. Yeah. And are you going to go through with what, what you had mentioned? So, by the way, the trip that's going across the country, um, the route, believe it or not, there are other, if you did not know this, there are other cities in America that are named Philadelphia. Uh, and the gang, this crew, as they are on the road again, are going to be stopping at these various Philadelphias. Philadelphia, Tennessee, uh -huh. Philadelphia, Arkansas, and Philadelphia, New Mexico. And Casey wants to pour out a little bit of Schuylkill River water. For our homies. Yeah, for our homies. Yeah. One for our homies. Yeah. yeah. I think that we, uh, so we'll, we'll, you know, so there will be a little bit of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in each and every one of these places. Uh, I also want to thank uh, our friends at HERS. Hers is getting behind us as well and is sponsoring this trip as well. Wow! Uh, and uh, and so our, our uh, friend across the hall, Joe Z, uh, he misnamed this thing uh, on the John again, and it is not on the John again. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's hers John is all the road yeah. Again. They lo we love on the John again. Well, that's great. Yeah. It's not on the John again. <laughs> it's John the road again. Uh, so Casey, Philadelphia, New Mexico, and I didn't know this until yesterday, is right outside White Sands National Park, and so. Some of the route that you're taking will be a little similar to your cross-country trip um, back in September, but then we're going to send you south from Oklahoma City to um, uh, to Las Cruces, New Mexico, and that right next to Las Cruces 
this is Philadelphia, New Mexico, and you're near yet another national park, which is pretty cool. Is White Sands where they would wear, land the um, uh, the space shuttle from time to I time? I believe yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Didn't they do some... There's a missile range there. Yes, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really what it's known it's, for. It's very oh. large and flat. Yeah, and, and an so Air Force base. Yeah. They can use that. By the way, so these, these Philadelphias... They're not very big towns, are they? They are not. They're very and, uh, small. The uh, There is a listener right outside of Philadelphia, Tennessee, which is kind of exciting. His name is, uh, oh, man, I'll find it. Okay. But, um, I'll, I'll tell you this, Nick, while you're looking for that. I, I, I would hazard a guess that they're not on any more Kansas cities in the country, right? Uh, well, well there's, there's a Kansas two. City, Kansas, right? Yeah, there's and Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. Missouri yeah. Kansas City, Kansas. So much for that theory. But there's also another Philly connection to White Sands, by the way. Uh, White Sands, I believe, is where this video was shot. We don't even talk anymore. This is uh, Boys to Men, and Water Runs Dry. They they sang it and did the video at White Sand. So maybe amazing. there's four of us. Maybe we'll... You can't see it, but my knees are buckling. Uh, are they buckling? What's a Philly are you band? Wet? What? A Philly band it yeah. has been there already. Yeah. So in, in a place that's kind of near the place that Casey's going to stop. Yeah. Wow. And the guy's name is uh, Bryden Aberhart, and he lives right near Philadelphia, Tennessee, and he listens to our show That's wild. daily, so uh, there he's, he's going to try to see you on Tuesday morning. There's a Boys to Men video that features a couch that was made near White Sands. <laughs> All right. I don't know why you're being such jerks about it. I mean, the, the White Sands is... I'm not, it's them. Not, no, I know. I'm talking to you <laughs> it, about it that. It hit Nick where he lives. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, Boys to Men. Yeah. yeah. Lisa Turtle was in that uh, video as well. We started the show wow. with, with Belle Biv DeVoe, and yeah. now we've made it to Boys to Men. That's Clayton's that? favorite band. He called up Kenny Knight to get a spin. And there wouldn't be a, boy, a Boys to Men without Belle Biv DeVoe. Thank hey, you. Kenny, I heard a story about uh, <laughs> Boys to Men. What was it? What's the band? What's, who's the band that performed in the, in the video? <laughs> Boys to Men. Boys okay. to Men. Yeah. Yeah. Belle Biv DeVoe helped Maybe discover Boys, Boys to Men. Yes. Oh, there's just so many boy bands. Now you know. Why did Kathy even bring it up? <laughs> it was slick blood. Come on, Kath. You always laughing the loudest. <laughs> All right, so anyhow, this is happening Monday, uh, Casey's big game adventure, and uh, Cuz down the hall is going along, too. Uh, so we're, we're gathering the items. We should be wrapping that up here shortly. And you know what? We'll, we will do it again, depending on how many we get today. Well, I'll see how much room we have left, but we may gather some things on Monday, too. And, so, yeah. and we're chronicling, we're getting pictures of everything that's going and, uh, you know, with every little story that's going along with it. And uh, I think this is so awesome. Because not everybody can make it out to the game. Yep, yep. All right, so uh, that leaves live from our um, our parking lot on Monday. Uh, hey, it is Friday, and I, we may have missed uh, the um, Connoisseur last week, so I don't want to miss it now. And I want to pass along some... It's time for the Friday edition of the Connoisseur. I was going to include this in the City Beat the other day, but we got some other things uh, that we did, and I didn't get a chance to get to it. But I'm going to put it here in the Connoisseur. Jim Stakes. Uh, will be larger when it reopens uh, later this year after repairs from the fire last summer. Uh, Jim's owner, Ken Silver, bought uh, Eyes Gallery, the iconic folk art shop next door, which was also heavily damaged in that fire. And the signature glass and tile mosaics at Eyes, which is by Isaiah Zagar, who created the nearby Philadelphia's Magic Gardens, which is cool. That is very cool. Will maintain be uh, maintained and included in the gym's expansion. That's pretty cool. Uh, gyms will gain a full floor of ADA-compliant ground floor seating to complement its second floor dining room. I've been in there when it's pretty hopping oh and yeah they could use the room oh yes they could the upstairs seating area was always too tight and uh the gyms forbade customers from saving seats that was one of the things you couldn't go yeah you couldn't have people order the sandwiches downstairs and have somebody go up and save a spot they just did not oh, allow wow. it yeah so the people who didn't understand this is according to the owner uh, didn't understand how gyms operated don't realize that it only takes 20 minutes uh to eat a cheesesteak and you're pretty much done and out uh silver said people get in line uh, they're thinking, I'm going to go and save a seat. And we had somebody up there saying, you're not allowed to save seats. We had to be pretty stern in our enforcement because otherwise people would be coming downstairs with trays of steak sandwiches and people would be sitting there with no food. <clears throat> and sometimes it got contentious. So hopefully this will alleviate all that. They're hoping that the, the, the more room is going to fix that problem. Uh, so Silver said that there also will be two small tables in what are now the front windows at Eyes. <clears throat> allowing uh, viewers of the South Street Parade. And uh, lines of patrons along the sidewalk have been a regular part of the South Street uh, location before last July. So 
I hope that I, mean, I haven't been down there, you know, but I mean, I, I hope foot traffic and everything is is picking back up because, you oh, know, yeah. yeah, it will. Yeah. Uh, and they're looking for maybe Labor Day for a reopening. Oh, nice. It's pretty cool. And Mr. Silver, I would be honored if my autograph could hang on your wall. I want my I want us, the President Steve Show, to have an autographed picture at Jim's Steaks. I, when I first moved here, Jim's was one of the first places I went to. Yes. Um, and I looked up and I saw the all the pictures hanging up there. I'm like... I want to be on there someday. Nice. I, th- I is, think we've earned is it. Is Pierre up there? He's um, a meat eater. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, so, okay, so speaking of cheesesteaks, I got an email this morning, actually, and this is from uh, Sharon Leary, who lives in Seattle. Uh, and I think she lives in Seattle. She says, I'm, I'm a proud Philadelphian from Bucks Co., uh, and I lived outside of Philly for almost 20 years. Now I visit usually two to three times a year. She said, I've noticed that cheesesteaks on menus outside of Philly very often have red and or green peppers on them. Why do people think that peppers are standard on a cheesesteak? Uh, it's always been my understanding that the standard is pick a cheese and with or without onions. And from there, you can feel free to add whatever toppings you want. Mushrooms, peppers, hots, mayo, ketchup, whatever. She's saying they default to the peppers. Yes. Uh, First, I need confirmation. Has something changed? Am I wrong about this? And then she cites a recent event. uh, A guy named Kenji Lopez-Alt, a Seattle food influencer, author, celebrity, writes for the New York Times. Recently posted a photo of a cheesesteak from a Seattle area cheesesteak spot, and the cheesesteak had peppers on it. And I noticed this and started to look through the comments, and there were quite a few posts regarding the peppers, and I felt validated. I saw one that uh, Kenji responded to asking, what's wrong with peppers? And I decided to add my response, explaining the above, that the problem is not that the people add them to their cheesesteaks, it's that many establishments also often include Mm. red and or green peppers as if they are standard ingredient. And he responded in what I interpreted to be an aggressive manner and said, these are hot peppers. And also, who cares if people put peppers on their cheesesteak? It's fine. But she's pointing out that the restaurant, and I agree, so being not born and raised in this area, when you've gone to get a, quote, Philly cheesesteak on a menu, a lot of times it comes with onions and peppers as part of what they bring to you. Uh-huh. And right. that's just what you get. So the insinuating that this is how it's eaten all the time. You have to order it without uh, peppers. Yes. N- instead of and waiting for the peppers to be on there. Yep. To me, that's a little bit of a violation. I think so, too. I think the cheesesteak, as you order it, is plain with cheese, and, and that's it. And everything else is an add-on, including... Onions. I've had this happen more than once outside of Philadelphia where you will order a quote unquote Philly cheesesteak at a restaurant and it's basically like a steak sandwich. Like it's yeah. it's um you oh. know, a grilled steak that they put on bread and maybe put some cheese, you know, or whiz or whatever on there and they don't chop up the steak at all. It's just basically like a London broil in between two right. slices of bread. I was at a place in Dallas, they brought me the cheesesteak, it was not anything I was anticipating, and I literally killed the waiter with the pencil. Right. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, you deserved it. You probably shouldn't have said that. It went all uh, wick on him. It yeah. <laughs> went a little yeah. John Wick. Uh, no, they, they. it is true. A lot of times, this is what they perceive, that they've got to goose it up, and it, it's right in the name what it is. Yeah. So deliver it that way, and then the add-on is the thing. But listen, uh, it's all right. Yeah. Whatever, you know, we've got the authentic here. That's all that matters. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. funny. The only place I ever get cheese whiz on my cheesesteak is actually like Pat's or Gino's uh, or Jim's. Uh, I'm usually just an American cheese guy, but I am a standard cheesesteak uh, for me has mushrooms. I don't know. If, did you guys have a standard mm. like? I'm uh, an onion guy. You are? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah raw I, or? or I like fried. a grilled. fried. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do. I'm grilled. Yeah, definitely. So so I do wit and uh, uh, American cheese and, and mushrooms. I like okay. mushrooms on my Yeah, own. me too. But I can go without them. Yeah. I don't have to have them. Kath, when was the last time you had a cheese steak? I was just going to, I'm literally <laughs> thinking, I'm like, I don't really eat cheese steaks. Um, I love a good chicken cheese steak. That's my, actually my preference. Yeah, yeah. But um, there's a place called, have you been to Chubby's? I love Chubby's. Yeah, I know Chubby's. Chubby's yeah, yeah, great chicken cheese steak. Yeah, for sure. Um, no, we, I when we went to the auto show, uh, the car show in Philly, uh, I took the kids across the streets to Reading Terminal Market. And they both got a cheesesteak. But you did not. I, no, but I smelled like one when I left. <laughs> you can't help Thank it. you for making me smell like a cheesesteak. <laughs> Do you guys think I should uh, eat cheesesteaks as I go across the country? And no, give you guys the don't. Re- no, yeah, of course. No. Yeah, you can if you no, want. No, salad yeah. balls only. Yeah. Well, that, that'll be Jackie. He's Case, if you can find him, I got to believe the other Philadelphias that you're going to be visit by default. Just for the, the restaurants there have to have uh-huh. cheesesteaks on the menu. If. 
there's a restaurant in any of these towns, I'd be that, surprised. That small. <laughs> yeah. so can you give us the yeah. first? So, what do you perceive to be the smallest Philadelphia of the all Philadelphia? Three of, all three of them are small, and they mm. will go through them, and they will plant the rows, and then they will keep mm. on going. Wow, these are almost like little unincorporated towns. Philadelphia, Mississippi, is a town. Like okay. you can go there and spend some time there. There's history behind. <clears throat> Philadelphia, Mississippi. Philadelphia, Tennessee is the first one, then Philadelphia, Arkansas, and then Philadelphia, uh, New Mexico. Will there be signs that say Philadelphia? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, then they'll, uh, the, right after that sign is, uh, thank you for visiting Philadelphia, because <laughs> you're going to get through them fast. you got to talk to people while you're there. Yeah. You definitely have to meet someone. Well, else. because they're, they're, they're are, there are brothers and sisters. Swing yeah. by, yeah. and if you need to swing by, like, the the, the, <laughs> the local courthouse or the, the municipal building or whatever it is, if they even have those. You yeah. know what you should do in East Town? Try to sell them band equipment for the high school yeah. <laughs> well when you go anywhere uh, outside of this area with jackie bam bam you know people people are yeah. looking they look yeah. yeah 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 for sure all right so anyhow uh so uh sharon wanted me to pose that question all right so i think right. i think I we think... i think we did that for we did her. That's 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 so um all right here's a here's a super bowl uh promotion uh that's happening with a food uh and it is DiGiorno. Uh, so if apparently if a team doinks, mm -hmm. you get a free pizza. Wow, really? Oh. Yeah, DiGiorno is giving away one free pizza per Super Bowl doink. Is that like rimming? It's a lot like rimming. Uh, just enter the possibil uh, the possi and oh enter to possibly oh win a coupon between February fourth and twelfth uh, on DiGiornoDoinks.com. That's a good promotion. Yeah. yeah. Because how often does that happen? Not very. Very rarely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if the uh, if the ball hits crossbar, uh, then that's a doink, and uh, you and, get a free pizza. Yeah, both teams actually have pretty decent field goal kickers. Yep. So I do like the Giorno, though. I, th I think they actually it's a it's a a decent pizza. So if uh, yeah, th so like we were talking about with the the other guy locally who said if the if the Eagles win the Super Bowl, yeah, he's going to refund all these purchases. <laughs> I think the doink thing is a bit of a better yeah. uh, insurance policy. Yeah. Very slim chance that that'll happen. Uh, but that's what DiGiorno is doing. So you can go to uh, DiGiornoDoinks.com <laughs> if you want to be in on that. All right. Uh, another more local uh, connoisseur story. Uh, my, my good friends at Fishtown Pickle Project yes. have introduced uh, do-it-yourself kits, which and this is for your Super Bowl party if you want. Uh, give customers the ingredients and instructions to make their own fried pickles for their party. I like fried pickles. Are you a fried pickle fan? I, yeah, I don't seek them out, but I certainly will have them. I don't order them, but if, like, if I'm at a table and somebody yep. orders them, I'll have a few. You Absolutely. Spears or chips? Either one. Okay. I think the spears, um, I might like them a little bit better. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So the customers, uh, they give customers the ingredients and instructions to make their own fried pickles. Fried pickle kits are available in either original uh, featuring uh, Philly Dilly Deli picks, Philly pickles, Dilly Deli picks, uh, with uh, pepper aioli style dip or spicy, which includes habanero dill pickles with cool ranch dip. Mm. And both kits come with a tempura mix, panko crumbs, and spices for the dips. Using the kits, fried pickles can be made three ways: tempura battled, battered and fried, breaded and fried, or air fried. Mm. And directions and a video tutorial will be provided to customers to ensure. Uh, the fried pickle making process goes smoothly. So that's Fishtown Pickle Project, where, of course, my pickles, yeah. and they benefited the camp out for hunger on the sales. Uh, yes, so, which is great. Uh, yeah. are, are there still, of, of your particular pickles, are there any available at present? Or I no? highly doubt it. They had they had, had, a, uh, they had a batch where they had 10 more uh, jars just a, a week or two ago, and I haven't checked back, but I mm. get it. I'm telling you, they yeah, were, they're good. People love them. They're yeah. excellent. Uh, I did something with pickle chips a few <clears throat> months ago where I saw it oh, on I like feel dirty. <laughs> Instagram. Uh, you get like a uh, cupcake uh, tray and you uh, you put on the bottom all, all the cupcakes like a, like a Mexican cheese. Right. Okay. Then you put the pickled chip on top of that uh, and right, then uh. you throw Mexican cheese on top of that and then you stick it in the oven and you, and you have the cheese all melt on top of it. Okay. And it gets like crusty. Yes. Like, yeah. And then it's a cheesy pickle chip. Oh, it's okay. really good. Uh, a so, finger so food? Yeah, finger food. Uh, yeah. All right, so the, so the cheese eventually becomes a little bit um, hardens. Hardens that. I love that idea. You tried it out? I did, and it's good. It's really good. So it, you know, it's just a matter of what kind of cheese you want to do it with. Also, I would recommend throwing some breadcrumbs in there as well. Okay, mm -hmm. that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, speaking of uh, Super Bowl and food, and this is, this is something you you already know this. <laughs> 
The National... Hey, Tom Brokaw, I, uh, you already know what I'm going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> the war is still going on. Uh, the economy's not so good. Is that... <laughs> Uh, I, got, I did see something on Instagram, though. <laughs> is it malt pickles and cheese? And it's also what you do is you put cheese and then pickle and then cheese on top and you kind of burn it a little. It's like a finger food. What about breadcrumbs? breadcrumbs yeah. <laughs> that sounds delish. Yeah. Jim Miklaszewski, do you have anything to say about Jim, that? Jim, what do you think? Like, oh, that sounds really good. <laughs> Yeah, I've never right. seen you like that. So here's the deal. The uh, the National Chicken Council. <laughs> yes, uh, the only all-chicken council in the world. In the world, yes. Uh, <laughs> they predicted that 1.42 billion chicken wings will be eaten during the Super oh Bowl. 1.42 billion. So yeah. with all of this story... <laughs> the, <laughs> the National Chicken, chicken, chicken Council, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for all, all for coming. Yeah. Uh, with all of the deaths of chickens and the chicken ranches that yeah. have been on by the, we've heard all across the country because of the avian flu and yes. other whatever the hell, um, the fact that they can rise to that challenge is still is amazing. Yeah, there was another, and I've left. It, they're too often. There's now. too often. Yeah, it's, it's like the mass shootings. There's like, one in like, Connecticut. Like I get uh, desensitized, uh, but uh, there was another. Yeah, a hundred thousand desensitized. A hundred thousand, uh, uh, not hundred thousand dollars, but a hundred thousand chickens. Mitch died in this one uh, most recently. Dolly, so, yeah. uh, <laughs> Davy, Mike, Peter. Oh, those are the monkeys. Yeah, so far. <laughs> yeah, these are chickens, not monkeys. Uh, of people surveyed, surveyed by the website Mashed, 35% chicken wings were the best food to bring to a Super Bowl party. Uh, fortunately, uh, for those worried about inflation, wings are 22% cheaper this year than they were last year. Well, Steve. that's a win, oh. finally. All right. The eggs are through the roof, but it just get the wings. Uh, the chicken chain Buffalo Wild Wings claims to sell about 13,500 wings per location on Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> wow. Per location. Uh, chips and beer have also risen in price. Uh, so you may want to grab another order of wings instead of filling the chip bowl. So what I have is, and my preference is, w most people would not consider it a wing when you talk about the uh, boneless wings. Yeah, but they're uh, good. Yeah, I love them. Oh, you know I, who's coming in next week? Oh, Pick 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 oh God. <laughs> Pick a Lillian? Yeah, I coming love in next that. Week. You guys sent some to me to uh, Phoenix? Please? Yes. Yeah. Welcome. You know what? Um, Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, are they client? Because they should be. I, I, I would endorse them. Have you been? Yeah. I've never been to one. Uh, Steve, um, it's, I don't know. It might not be your vibe, but like, if you want to go watch a sporting event yeah. and, and have some pub food, there's a ton of TVs. It's cold beer. It's really great service. There's one in uh, in the in Oaks right near the um, Expo Center. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. They're all over, right? Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's oh, the one I'm I go gonna to. go to Pickle mm -hmm. uh, By the way, an unexpectedly popular Super Bowl snack. All right. Popcorn. Oh, huh, yeah, really? of course. I love popcorn. Yeah, so. Yeah. It doesn't scream Super Bowl, though, to me. I know. I think more put-together appetizers, finger foods, yeah. but things that you've prepped a little bit, not just a popcorn in a bowl. You know, I think about little, you know, obviously chicken wings and, and uh, dips and stuff like that, but apparently popcorn. Maybe, like, throw some green M&Ms in the popcorn. Mm. Oh, Steve, you'd be on some I trail mix. Sorry, I'm sorry. Mightily. <laughs> oh, man, that was Rochelle's thing. We'd, whenever we'd do, when the kids were younger and we would do, like, movies or yeah. whatever, she would always put... She'd call it the surprise in the box. Yeah. Oh, uh, M and M's. M and M's. Yep. They, oh, they loved them. That was like an easy snack to do. Like if you were snack mom for the day when yeah. they were little, and you'd have to send for the whole class. And so that's a surprise, almost. Yeah, you just I got you. throw some. Yeah, throw some M and M's um, in there. Marissa wanted me to add that Rosie's kettle corn is selling green popcorn. They were at. Oh, oh they're awesome. They were at the. Uh, oh my God, they're good. Fireworks event. So uh, we are happy to announce that. So Rosie's kettle corn mm. selling green popcorn. Might have to do that. <laughs> How much time we got? We, uh, yeah, you we, got a little bit of time there. All right, right? let's uh, do another, another food thing. We're gonna we're gonna veer away uh, from Super Bowl and food there and go to food somewhere else because <laughs> lab grown meat has received uh, FDA approval and may be coming to supermarket soon. But what about um, dietary traditions? That's the question. Uh, Chief Rabbi of Israel, David uh, Brook Lau, has uh, recognized a uh, left. Farms lab cultivated steaks as kosher, and the brand will soon seek a kosher certificate for its products. So, um, mm. we always ask this question, and I always forget exactly what the parameters are for achieving oh koshering kosher status. 
So there's a couple things. It's, you, it's the utensils, right? That you can't part, share utensils. Part of it. And, Sinks. and I maybe, Nick, you'll have to look this up. But uh, number one, the, a rabbi has to do it. has to be blessed a certain right. way. I believe that the animal has to be bled. Uh, so, you know, right. it has to die yeah. that way. I'm not 100% sure. All right, here we go. Kosher meat comes from animals that have split hooves, like cows, sheep, and goats, and chew their cud. I chew my cud. Uh, when these types of animals eat, partially digested food returns from the stomach uh, for them to chew again, blah, blah, blah. All right, so anyhow, but there's, uh, but uh, for example, though, pigs have split hooves, but they don't chew their cud, and that's why pork is not kosher. Uh-huh. Interesting. So that's the main though, deciding factor. I the think. animal must be uh, slaughtered by a soche. Am I pronouncing that correct? I don't know. A person trained and certified to butcher animals according to Jewish laws. The meat must be soaked to remove any traces of blood before cooking. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, any utensils used to slaughter or prepare the meat must be kosher and designated only for use uh, with meat and meat products. So I think that they can't touch right. other products yes. other than meat. Now, we're butchering this, pardon the fun, the yeah. pun, but, you know, we're getting a, a one or two things right, I guess. I remember when, when the rabbi, uh, rest in peace, would yeah. have um, sodas around here. Like, uh, he was a Diet Coke drinker, and he could because I believe there's a, a K with a circle there around is. it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> I don't know what makes certain beverages kosher versus others. But any soda that comes from animals with hooves. I yeah. see. They have to chew their cut. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I think that comes down to the blessing. Okay. So, like, a, maybe... A, a kosher blessing? Coca-Cola gets I, a, a sure rabbi. And, yeah, all right. right. No, no, you're probably right. Yeah. Like, there's some kind of um, rabbi that says, okay, now this Coca-Cola product is kosher. Right. Yeah. It's like holy water. Yeah. It's water. And it's holy. And, and that is holy. Yeah. Now it's holy. <laughs> and now this water has now become holy. Uh, so I guess it's a similar type. I remember years ago, before holy water case, you remember in some of the churches, they had Diet Coke. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Or Fiat Froke? <laughs> no, no, it could only be Diet Coke. Couldn't be Fiat Folk. Oh, okay. Couldn't be Fiat Foctor Fepper. <laughs> Sorry? Fiat Foctor Fepper? Oh, yes, yes. That's right. Right. We dance on the line. We'll Bill, say that one. Bill liked that one. <laughs> he did. No, actually, he didn't. No, he didn't care yeah, for that yeah. at all. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, uh, yeah, there Hi, yeah, Bill. Yeah. Hey, you know. Oh, Bill West of Man About Town. He this is, is a rabbi. Song. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> all right. I need you to stop talking. <laughs> Kathy, you want to plug your gig on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead, Steve. Why don't you plug yours? Oh, on uh, Sunday. Uh, yeah, yeah, at uh, Xfinity. I'm doing What did the... you catch crap for plugging a gig? Uh, he made some weird comment in the meeting that we should talk about Steve's gig and not mine. <laughs> Which makes absolutely no sense because mine is a paid appearance that the station is making and money. And mine is charity. <laughs> okay. What is your Saturday night gig? It's at P- at, PJ Willahan's, Yeah, right? PJ Willahan's in Bluebell. And uh, you can sign up for VIP passes to um, Cardboard Classic, which is going to be a big deal because I think it's going to be pretty crowded up there. So um, if you can get a VIP pass, that'll be cool. That's so I'll be excellent. there from 8 to 10, yeah. Okay, excellent. And I will be working with a moil on Sunday. No, we we're going to, uh, it's the final step of the Burger Bowl, which had to, it became the Burger Crawl. Right. Because, um, you know, obviously they're the World Series, so we'll take that. But uh, I'll be there and I'll be one of the judges for the finals. It'll be at Xfinity uh, Live from uh, noon to two. Okay. All right, one more thing, Connoisseur, and then we'll take a break. Um, this is, it. oh, here. A Durham, North Carolina distillery is taking bourbon where it hasn't gone before. They're taking it to space. Uh, the Mystic Farm and Distillery has announced Mystic Galactic, a bourbon whiskey aged for one year in space. And what do they anticipate that will do to the taste? Uh, they don't, I'm not really sure. Uh, they just know it's gonna. They know what it's going to do to the price. Yeah, it's going to go Jack way it up. up. Yeah. Do you think so, they ever take alcohol with them, like to have like a drink at the end of a long uh, day? I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I would be surprised if. Uh, Booze hasn't ended up on all the missions somewhere aboard some spacecraft or the space station. Mm. Uh, Jonathan Blitz, the co-owner, said, uh, we're redefining what it means to make a rare spirit. Only about 1,300 people on the planet uh, will ever have the opportunity to taste and own this piece of whiskey history. It's the height of luxury and exclusivity, not to mention the first commercial product manufactured in space. So they're working with, like, um, Rocket Lab, Inversion Space, Firefly, ba- and Bank of America uh, to finance, design, test, and build the vessels to send five barrels of its 45% wheat bourbon whiskey to low Earth orbit for a year of additional aging. The barrels selected will have been aging for at least three years already. Uh, the barrels will be 
recoopered uh, by the West Virginia Great Barrel Company to help them survive the launch, uh, orbit, and reentry as well. It means blessed by Bradley Cooper? Yes. Uh, while the barrels will be full when the when they're sent to space, Mystic expects the barrels to lose about at least 7% of those contents uh, to what they call the angel share, which is when alcohol evaporates as it is being aged in barrels. At least a thousand bottles bottles of uh, Mystic Galactic will be available, and most of the bottles. What do you think they're being pre-sold for? Uh, I'm gonna take all a right, guess. All right, let's go big. A thousand dollars a bottle. What do you guys think? Anybody else? Um, I'm gonna go a little more. Fifteen hundred. Okay. Yeah, eighteen hundred. Okay. Well, I, I'm gonna go low because I want to go up on the stage here. Yeah. Uh, okay. Five hundred. All right, most of the bottles are being sold, being pre-sold for seventy-five thousand dollars. Wow. Oh my god! Oh, I lost. I, lost. Jeez. I think I won. Each purchaser will receive a non-fungible token to prove authenticity and yeah. their right to ownership. You know how cool f- non-fungible tokens are. Uh-huh. Um, wow. So, do you think there's is there or has there ever been the suggestion that a weightless condition would um, enhance would, it? would make something taste better? Not that you I know? know of. I don't think so. I think it's just bragging rights type of thing. What about pineapple upside down cake? Ooh. Right? I mean. That remained legitimately upside down. Though there's no up and down in space. There's no up and down. Right. Mm-hmm. It could be pointed toward Earth right. the whole time if you there want you to go. consider that to be upside down. Do you want to know what Wiki says about alcohol in space? Yes. Uh, so alcohol is prohibited aboard the International Space Station, uh, obviously due to the impact. But uh, Apollo 11. Uh, astronaut Buzz Aldrin drank some wine when he took course, communion right. while on the moon. Of course. Right. Oh, he took communion, yeah. Right. Yep, yep, that's right. It's supposed to be wine, not vodka. They're very strict on everything that goes on board because of uh, weight uh, distribution. So you couldn't bring a keg. And payload, probably not. <laughs> Wait, Maybe then- a pony. Yeah, because also if you, if you you once you use the keg, that'll provide inertia. Huh? Yeah, yeah. and you yeah. can uh, hurl into the sun just for a beer. Yeah, and the force that, uh, they, that you urinate with. Right, can propel you in the space. Can propel that you. was the original plan to get to the moon. And everybody just turned their around way to the moon. Yeah. Okay. Um, in 1970, they were planning on sending Sherry with the astronauts visiting the Skylab, but um, they had to scrap it because they said that they found that the smell would induce a gag reflex at zero gravity. Space flight. vomit is nothing to play around with. At zero v- gravity, there would be zero a- gravity. Yeah, during the flight test, they huh. found that there was a gag reflex that's because it. of the smell. All right. Uh, well, that's uh, all we have time for. Uh, connoisseur, we're going to wrap this up. Thanks for stopping by. Do appreciate you sharing the stories of food and restaurants and all good eats. And space travel and moils. Space travel as well and moils. All right, uh, we are going to take a break. If you're interested in getting an Eagles tattoo, one of the designs that we have, uh, we're going to do it next Tat Tuesday. Text word tattoo to 39333. We'll give you the link that has the information and the designs. We're going to get four people in here next Tuesday. All the requirements are there. Just text the word tattoo to 3933 or go to WMMR.com. We'll be back in a moment. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. <laughs> Under here! <laughs> Behind the tank! <laughs> Behind the Jeep! <laughs> For two days. <laughs> two days. <laughs> two days of that? Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's like, st- I wish I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was kidding. Oh, that's so with the cut scenes, at least, you have a little bit of... Yeah. Reload! <laughs> Can't use that one. <laughs> Reload! <laughs> Reload? That's great! Yeah. What? No, it wasn't great. <laughs> great to have you here. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. Michael Cullen. Let's go. Walking Dead, 93.3 WMMR. Visitor to Oktoberfest noticed a man slumped over at a festival exit with a baby attached to his front on Thursday. As he tore his slowly fell to the side, the anxious man took his baby from him. And Oktoberfest is the largest beer festival in the world, attracting a global audience for its mixture of strong beer, traditional Bavarian food, and fairground rides. You know who went there this year? Mm-mm. Matt Cowper. Oh, yeah? So yeah. It was sick. It was, must have been sick. sick. That's one guy who was there. He was getting so sick, sick all over the place. His baby was there, and he was getting sick. It took a lot. A lot of people got sick because they drank too much and they got sick. Uh, organizers <laughs> expect visitors' numbers to hit six million again this year. That's crazy. Uh, Cowper said that there are what it basically is is gigantic tents, benches, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, drinking, drinking, drinking. Yeah, yeah. that's how, all it is. And people getting sick. And people yeah. getting sick. Yeah. If how many million? Six, six million. A million <laughs> sick people. <laughs> <laughs> What was that again? Six 
million thick people. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds thick. All right, and then we'll do uh, one more story. Man, this is this is wild. Uh, amazing pictures from the Arctic show an army of more than 230 polar bears yeah. feasting on a washed-up whale. We will control the humans. Our time has come. After a bowhead whale became stranded and died on Russia's remote Wrangell Island, uh, the extraordinary sight was witnessed by tourists on an Arctic cruise. Look at all those suckers. Yeah, a source at Wrangell Island Nature Reserve said there were at least 230 polar bears, including single males, single females, oh, mothers, mix with hey. Hey. mothers with cubs, <laughs> even... Oh, yeah, <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> oh, wow. You've got a Russian accent. Yeah, oh, that's great. Uh, do you like whale? Well, let's go over and have a bite. <laughs> You can tell about that time you went to Oktoberfest. Yeah, oh, it was sick. <laughs> Everyone got sick. <laughs> We're eating blubber and drinking beer, and everyone just got sick. <laughs> What's my name? Cowper Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's so, a big singles. It's a big polar bear singles yeah, mixer. Are you kidding me? It was, uh, yeah, there were single males, single females, mothers with cubs, and even two mothers with four cubs uh, each. Milf bears. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Calfer bear. <laughs> Calfer bear. Experts called the this site. This is going to be a new thing that kids are going to, where's my Calfer bear? <laughs> Experts you can't go to sleep unless you give me his Calfer bear. Called the site of so many uh, polar bears together <laughs> unique. You pull the string. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it again. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone oh. loves Cowper Bear. Oh, Sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, anyhow, the huge number could, in fact, amount as much of 1% of the entire world's population oh, of really? the creatures. Yeah, tourists initially thought the bears were a flock of sheep. 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 Uh, sheep are al sick. Although, viewing them, uh, after viewing them from a distance, but as a boat drew closer, uh, the lucky... Those aren't sheep eating that whale. Uh, vacationers realized <laughs> that they were what they were witnessing. The mainly Russian tourists had Just some to... some sheep eating a whale. ...depart from a stopover on the island. <laughs> <laughs> when they spotted the bears. That seems normal. Just yeah. seems like a flock of sheep eating a whale, <laughs> the way sheep do. I think they just saw them on the hillside, yeah. oh. and they, they thought they were <laughs> sheep. One of the things that, that I've been wanting to do for a little while, I have, uh, Kathy and I both share a, a common ailment. We have lower back pain. We have, you know, a mildly herniated discs, which causes pressure on the nerves in your back and all this stuff. And we just, our backs hurt all the time. But my neighbor has has the same issue and uh, he's he's gotten past his problems. And so my neighbor Jaime, had, you know, he had done all these things and he, and he also goes, oh yeah, and I get acupuncture. And so it's, all of this together has helped completely alleviate it from his life. And I'm like, well, I'm game. Oh, yeah. I'll do whatever I can to, to help <laughs> get rid of this pain. So I've never had acupuncture before. And we're going to stick me with these little needles. Today! From Virtua Acupuncture, we want to welcome Heather Schultz uh, to the show this morning. Hey, Heather. Thank you. Hello. Hello. And uh, how long have you been doing this, by the way? I've been practicing acupuncture for seven years. Seven, seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let me ask you this about acupuncture. Now, this has to do with the, the body's nervous system. Or that's what I've always been led to believe? We, the acupuncture's effects do have positive effects on the nervous system. It also deals with the muscular skeletal system. Okay. Yeah. Um, and when we put acupuncture needles in you today for pain, uh, it releases your endogenous opioids. Your, um, so your, your natural painkillers okay, that are in okay. your body. Well, also, we've had some really exciting research lately. It, it um, affects brain neuroplasticity. Um, so your brain changes in response to um, stimulus. Okay. And so acupuncture over time can have positive brain changes that help you manage pain better. Okay. And with that, and with doing it over time, how often should someone get treated? You know, say somebody like me who has described what, what my issues are. So generally we recommend with chronic injuries, you are going to come in um, once or twice a week in the mm -hmm. beginning for a couple of weeks and see what happens. And then you start spacing them out more until you don't need to come in that much. Okay. okay. All right, so uh, so you're gonna get in my back and where else? Hands and feet. And Casey, can I get some appropriate music for? Absolutely. Preston, are you are you encouraged by this? I think because you know, yeah, this could be. I know a number of people have had very good um, results this with this. Chinese music, by the way, because it's a Chinese art, I believe, or Chinese uh, medicine. 
Um, yeah, well, you know, especially my, my neighbor, because uh, I believe him. He's, he's a smart guy, and uh, and he's had pain for years, and, and he believes this is work for him. So I'm like, you know what? I I will definitely give it a shot. So he's like the neighborhood Fonzie too. Right? He's, he's so cool. Acupuncture school. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, so I got my I got my shoes off. I can just head over there now. All right, Preston's gonna walk way. over. We're watching the process, and Preston soon will be pricked all over his body. All right, and then a question. Can I see one of the needles first, please? Oh. Let me see the needle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. How far I, does that go in? I can almost I can almost not, not even see it. It's so thin. How far in does it go in, uh, Heather? It depends where you're putting it. All right. Okay. Where you're putting it on me? I'm putting it in your low back. Yeah, and how far in will that go? Maybe halfway. So. Oh, dear God. Oh, that's my. That's, that's fine. pretty deep. God. That's fine. All right. All right wait, I'm, wait, I'm, wait, I'm wait. Heather, does it help to have someone in <laughs> sewing? Oh, my God. Oh, just relax. Oh, dear Jesus. You're going to kill him. No, I think it has to be a little bit more this is, supportive, this Kathy. It's challenging for you. It Thanks. will? You're going to bleed him out. Oh, I'm, I <laughs> tuned those guys can, out can we years dim, ago. Should we dim the lights? You want to dim the lights? Let's dim the lights. All right. <laughs> Just okay. a little bit. All right, so here, we'll dim the lights. I'm trying, I want this to work for Preston. Me so, too. What? All right, so I'm just lying here, and I'm waiting for this to happen. All right, Kathy cannot Chair. watch. This is why Kathy was screaming and begging for mercy and okay. telling oh. Preston he was The first one's in, and uh, I, I did feel a little, little pinprick, but it didn't feel like it went in very far. How long do uh, sessions usually last? So it's going to take me just a couple minutes to put the needles in. Okay. Um, and then I would usually let him hang out for about 25 minutes to let them kind of do their work. We'll try to give him a good run. You know, we can we can run the show. Preston can do most of the show. He, 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 a lot of people don't know most of us do the show completely on our stomachs anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy. How much... Um, how, how horny how, are you right now? <laughs> how much <laughs> would it take for me to pay you to get one needle? Well, listen, if, if she put it in my back and I couldn't see it, mm -hmm. I, th it it's having to look at it. <laughs> you you yeah, offer 500 was, bucks? Uh, yeah, yeah. 500. Yeah. I, I, so, Preston, you have a few in your lower back right now. I can't. I didn't even notice. See, um, and Heather, this is, um, I, as it's done, I've seen people do it. There's a little bit of twisting back and forth to, to, to move them in slowly, or how is it? How do you manage to do that without him feeling it at all? The needles are so tiny. So tiny, okay. You can fit. 20 to 30 of these needles in the head of a injection needle like you had earlier oh, okay today. all yeah. right so heather should i just relax and try to center or Preston, i what? would think of things that you enjoy think of your family uh, think of um um i don't know bukkake your, videos your, your favorite bong <laughs> bukkake videos your favorite bong <laughs> I would think of <laughs> I, 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 would, I would think of MILFs. Oh, K oh. Parker Preston. That's old school. Yeah. <laughs> I would think of a cup and two girls. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right, so how many needles are in now? Nine needles. Nine total so far, yeah. Are you done putting needles in them? I was gonna put one on the top of his head. Please do it. Uh, yeah. do it. Yeah. Three W M M R. Everything that rocks. Good morning, good day. 10 o'clock, no sad bro. This Friday morning is in fine Friday form today. We'll give away our Word of the Week prize uh, this morning. Get set for it. A couple other things uh, to mention, but uh, we have a final look at traffic. I want to get that done so we can wrap up your drive-in. Kathy, what's going on? McDade Boulevard still closed both directions between 420 and... Uh uh, Amos Land Road case? Amos Land. Amos? Amos? Okay. Amos, yeah. Amos Land Road. Uh, it, this, that's been closed all morning, although they changed that name because that was that road wasn't there all morning. Uh, it's a down utility pole. It remains closed. Uh, this being reported by PennDOT. Also on the Schuylkill Eastbound, you're slow from Conshohocken into Belmont. The Boulevard to Spring Garden, 95 southbound, slows from Cotman through to Bridge. Once you get to the Vine, you're okay crossing town uh, on... 926 out in uh, Pensbury Township. 926 at Parkersville Road, an accident. Conshohocken State Road at Henry Lane in Gladwin, an accident there. 611 at Easton Road in Willow Grove. Another accident scene, and then two more, both on Welsh Road. The first one at Lower State Road, uh, and then the second one at North Wales Road. Tocconi Palmyra Bridge has some construction work happening in both directions. Expect some minor delays there. No problems uh, crossing the Commodore Barrier, the Walt Whitman, Ben Franklin westbound. We've got the two right lanes closed. There's now an accident west on the school just before 30th Street. It is off to the shoulder. You're jammed back to Vera Avenue. This traffic report brought to you by Invisible Fence. 
Visiblefriends.com. And Visible Fence brand customers love the training process. A recent reviewer said the training made me feel like they were training our dog versus just running the playbook. Learn what sets them apart at InvisibleFence.com. And that's your traffic on 93.3 WMMR. All right, thank you, Kathy. So we've been collecting items for uh, Casey's big game adventure, John the Road again, as he and Jackie Bam Bam and Kyle Mack, and now added to uh, the, one of the Philly things, that we're sending out there, Anthony Organo <laughs> from 97.5, the Fanatic, our sister yes. station. So uh, we've gotten a bunch of cool um, items uh, <laughs> that we are taking. And so, you know, like we have a, a, a mummer's umbrella. We have, a, a, you know, a pennant. In fact, someone had, had let me see here. Um, this is from uh, listener Sean, brought by his mother, unfortunately, <clears throat> passed away unexpectedly. And she had worked for the Eagles and he wanted to bring her old lanyard and pin. Oh, Aww. that's great. Yeah. From the Eagles. And that's one of the things that's going to go along. And Casey's going to uh, I love put, that. put that out and about. But we, we had earlier an, an actual piece of the deck of the Battleship New Jersey. Yes. And now we received <laughs> a chunk of the Philadelphia airport uh, yes. to take what? along with it. Yeah, so Allison works at the airport. And her office was listening, and uh, they gave us a piece of the old control tower. Uh, she brought pictures of the old tower and sent a photo of their office posing with it, and they all signed it. That's so awesome. So this is a big chunk of concrete that was <laughs> That's from so the great. control tower you know, the Philadelphia airport. It, it exceeds the size thing a little bit, but we will make an accommodation. I think we can find a spot yeah. in the trunk. Yeah, the trunk is flat. Yep. It, it's flattened, and so it'll be like the base. We'll just yes. put it at the bottom of the trunk, and everything can kind of go on top of that. Yeah. Oh, I, that's I, awesome. I, I, and I sort of anticipated this, but now it's becoming a reality. I need to get a ruling on this from you guys. Okay. Uh, somebody's trying to bring ashes. Somebody. Uh, so we just got a, a message from our intern uh, that there are ashes here. So we need to restate that. You know, you're you're there. It's going to be left there. Yeah, right. That's, yeah. that's I don't think deal. it's all the ashes. Maybe it's just right. partial parts of the right. ashes. Has, okay. Yes. Now, are you all right with mortal remains. Well, here's the deal. Father right. Steve is coming to my house today to bless the Eagles logo me, on my lawn. Uh, no, 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 not you. Uh, are, wait, are you? A, <laughs> I am a priest. Yeah, I didn't remember. know. Yes. Yes. Life, the Universal California. Life Church of Modesto, California. Catholic priest is coming okay. by my uh, house today to bless the logo on my lawn. I could have him bless the ashes as well if that wouldn't. I thought you were going to bless everything in the suitcase, um, everything that you're taking. He's well, blessing the suitcase itself. Oh, okay, right, right. Well, the suitcase is not there yet. Uh, it's supposed to arrive. Is it coming from o'clock. Amazon? Yes. It Can you go to an Amazon distribution center and have the priest uh, bless that? I could do that. <laughs> I could do that. Uh, so, with you know, because Kyle, I'm looking over at Kyle, and he's shaking his head. He's got the, he's got bad feeling about that but ashes what about, what about yeah. ashes yeah no i, I, mean, I don't, don't have, have that. them blessed either i mean yeah. i'm sure they've already been yeah. you know covered or been taken care of i'm not asking kyle i'm asking you guys yeah. you guys no, say I, it's okay? I think it's fine i especially since that has such a it's about the love and the and the and the, the good mojo the juju yeah. whatever you want to call it i yeah. think i think and it, also you're you're it is that raw emotion it's important to this person to get those ashes out there we're so we're going to do it yes there you, you guys go. made me flush some guy's dad down the toilet at Y100 like yes. just driving no, them out there you, yes you did no <laughs> uh <-uh. laughs> it, it, that's way better don't worry Kyle don't worry about it you yeah. didn't, and, you and, didn't flush them down and the, the guy toilet. was still alive <laughs> while we're while we're on the subject of religion I got an email from someone. It's a request, and it ties into the Eagles, too. This is from uh, Jaime had uh, emailed and said, I'm a regular uh, fancy-thinking phone listener. Uh, the last time the Eagles were headed to the Super Bowl, you were notified of a church choir uh, that will be singing uh, songs with the word eagle in it. In response, you performed your quasi-religious cover called Fly Jesus Fly. And this ended up being a promo for the show, and it's a clip I occasionally listen to ever since. And since the Eagles won the last time this cover was performed, maybe it? it's worth playing the cover again. And I've included a link to the promo below. Well, let's so hear I it. have it. All right. All right. So this is for Jaime, who wants me to Jaime uh, Cavedo. So here, here you go, Jaime. Here we go. Fly, Jesus, fly. You live up in the sky. Fly, Jesus, fly. Everyone says you're a great guy. <laughs> oh my God. Hit him high. And you watch like us, Jesus, fly. Fly, Jesus, fly. Up to see your daddy 
in the sky. Glory, 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 glory. Right, get ready. Jesus! <laughs> I forgot about that, oh but I approve. God. Fly, Jesus, fly. All right. Did that audio glitch? Yes. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It's yeah. Been, we, um, <laughs> yeah. We've been dealing uh, with the glitching audio. Can't have that. I mean, we are a top flight, never make a mistake morning show. <laughs> You're damn straight. Well, maybe Jesus will fix it now that we play that song. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, but anyhow, um, yeah, we got a piece of the airport to take. You know what I would like? What? I think would be apropos would be a small piece of Lincoln Financial Field. Yes. I Not necessarily the grass, the field, no, but, but, a, no. but a piece of the actual stadium. I think that somebody could pr procure that for us, right? Like a row of seats? You would think so. Not a row of uh, seats. It's got to be smaller than a baseball. Oh, you're right. Yeah, what the hell am I, I thinking? I, I feel like, no. Pete, so I want some of the grass. I want, like, some of the end zone or something. We used to be connected yeah, to some of the landscaping guys, I, and, and they would swing by Camp Out for Hunger uh, every year, and I don't remember them, unfortunately. Uh, I don't remember their names. But it'd be cool to have one of those guys get in touch with us to send us something to take on Monday. Yes. But we, we need like to that. do it by Monday. Yeah. All right, we when got... they showed up, they were always selling grass. <laughs> we got this. This is John, uh, who's a listener. John works at uh, the Ben Franklin grave site. Oh, my God. Uh, they got a piece of Ben Franklin. And people put lucky pennies on the grave. So he brought one in for us along with some wow. of his artwork I to take, too. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's one of the great legends about the, the, the yes. pennies on the, on the grave site. Yep. So he These is. These kind uh, of things. He's bringing <laughs> one. Uh, he brought one to us to take. The, this is perfect. These are uh, exactly this is, the things we want. This is. Is good energy. Yeah. Yeah. I know we talked yesterday about uh, the clippings from Jim Gardner's mustache. Yes. yes. I don't think that that's going to happen. However, no, you, you I, reached, I reached out to Deuces Rogers. We might get a, a used toothbrush from Deuces. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. He's sports. We'll yeah. take it. That's he knows like Jim. A, that's like a whole different level. Like, Gardner's in Florida What about, right now. can Jamie a pony, pony up anything? <gasps> I'm sure. She, yeah. Just let me can know. Can she get oh. some of Jim uh, Gardner's mustache clippings? Well, you know she is very close She's to She's very Jim, close to him. But he's but not he's in Florida. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so that'd be... Can you guys swing down to Florida real quick? Yeah, well, all right. We're going to have to skip Why don't time. you send me and Marissa to Florida? Yes. <laughs> yes. We'll see if we this can weekend? track down. Yeah, yeah, we'll see if we can track down Jim Gardner and you head off. That's and, a good call, Kath. Yeah. Hey, Jim, it's Kathy. You mind if I come up to your room? <laughs> By the way, photos of all things Philly, uh, of all the Philly things that we're taking are available at PrestonandSteve.com. If you want to see the, the items and the people that brought them and a little story behind them, uh, you can do that. Thank you to everyone who's bringing by stuff. And, and we talked about this, Preston. Uh, Monday morning is the departure day, but we yeah. will be accepting up to the point of departure, correct? Hopefully, yes. Bill has said he's going to check on it. All right. Because we have to get approval from the building uh, to make sure it's okay to do it and make sure not much of a hindrance of uh, what's going on around here. So, um, But we're underway. Yes. And uh, it, oh, I'm very excited. Excited for this. Yes. Did I tell you the vehicle showed up? Did I mention that? No, it's so, here. Yeah, so we got the Ascent from Subaru, which is fantastic. And Casey, it is loaded with snacks. And uh, some sodas for you guys for the road. So uh, thanks again to Matt Ritter and everybody at Subaru. They dropped it off. And uh, Kyle Mack is going to get, like, the gear set up after the show today. All right. And thank you to Duncan for being our main sponsor oh. for this. Once again, we're running on Duncan on this whole thing. And we uh, do. Marriott Hotels. And you mentioned the snacks. So hers is getting on board. Yeah. Hers, of course. As well for this. For the, uh, what were they calling it? Uh, the, uh, on the John. On the John again. again. Yeah. Yes. It's John the Road again, by the John way. John the Road again. Casey's headed out. John the Road. Hey, originally, we were going to call it You Were Always again. John My Mind. Yeah. <laughs> and then also. Hashtag it's a Philly oh, thing, my friend. Casey's going John the Road again. Go birds. Um, another <laughs> sponsor of ours is a Philly Goat. I actually have a hat. I'm not wearing it right now. I, got a, I bought a hat from Philly Goat. It says Philadelphia Birds on it, but uh, they're outfitting me in a couple of their shirts, nice. one uh, that says fly on it, and then nice. another sweatshirt that says that as well. I love it. All right. Well, it happens on Monday. Yes. So uh <laughs> So we're, we're excited for that. I mean, it's, it happens on our next day of work. Yes. <laughs> which is crazy. Everything so. seems um really spot on and going well, which with our history makes me worry. Mm. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Knock on wood. Yeah. That'll exactly. Uh, knock on uh, the the new, uh, battleship New Jersey wood. Knock on teak. Yes, we should knock on that wood all trip. That long. should be hey, the knock. Yeah. yeah. Can I share something with you about knock on wood? Yes. Okay. 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 Um, and I know we have to do the bizarre fault, <laughs> but okay. I just okay. noticed this like yesterday. What? So the. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Hang on. I gotta tell that off. That? Um, you know the song from uh, yeah. Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Turn. Okay. All right. Make all the music stop. Stop the music. <laughs> so. I'm going to kill you. You know where he says, I never had to knock on wood. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In that song. I never really, 
uh, um, analyze those lyrics to yeah. think about what the song is about, which is not, which is typical of me. I, a lot of times I say, right. sing along to the song for years and never no, really look right. into the uh -huh. meaning of it. And what I didn't realize is that song is about um, uh, being afraid of uh, something horrible happening in your, in your life. Right, okay? right. So, so um, what's his name? Um, uh, Dickie, Dickie Barrett. Yeah. Uh, had written this song. I think a, a friend uh, of, uh, he, had a, he had a friend who had a, something tragic happen in their life. Yeah. And was just like, oh, my God, that would be horrible. And he realized I've never really had something like that happen to me in my life before. And so I, in the lyrics, I'd always thought, I never had to wait, uh, but I never. never had to knock on wood. Mm, yeah, but I know someone who had. Bad. But I had that that knock on wood part way out of reference because the first line is, "Have you ever been close to tragedy or been close to folks who have? Have you ever felt the pain so powerful? So have you collapsed?" And he goes, "I never had to knock on wood." And I always thought it was, "I never had to knock on wood. I never had to go over there and actually knock on the oh, wood." Oh, I never but had it's, to knock on I wood. I never had to deal with that kind of tragedy, right. comma knock on wood is the reference that is you know oh, what i mean yeah i, I got I, it yeah i didn't i agree with you i thought the prior yeah, yeah. i think it works but it's him ways. saying hey well listen you know that horrible thing happened to you it's never happened to me knock on wood oh well, wow. i always thought i never had to knock on wood right yeah yeah but he's actually saying i am knocking on wood right that that type of thing never happens right. to me i've never had to wow I always, i'm not on the wood. only one <laughs> thank you i thought it was i've never had to nah Conwood. <laughs> Sorry, that was so bad. There it is again, Preston. Hey, it's Friday, everybody. Grab that there. moment in case you realize you've gone too far. Well, I went too far with that one, guys. Sorry. <laughs> you know, because now... Nah. I'm going to go for it. <laughs> nah. Conwood. This is going to be the moment that defines today's show. <laughs> What's in, great in way, is that guys. he keeps going for it. Like, even after the first you fail, go he it. keeps going. Kathy, Wayne Gretzky said you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Okay. Yeah. You know? Well, right. You, you know, know what you can shot. do? You want to cover it over? <laughs> Give us a dad joke. Oh, oh man. I, I, I can't. But I, I can tell you a story, though, because there were these oh, geese. Good, there's a story. Kathy, there was these geese. They were fighting in my backyard, and I was going to yell to them, but then I realized I don't speak porch to geese. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, oh. Go home now. Hey. That's it. He's, done. He's on his way out. Get out. Oh, my God. That is terrific. Have a great trip. Oh, my God. I knew that would help. Oh, my God. So good. Better than the you other saved thing. yourself. What was the other thing? Nah. Oh, no. Wood. No, right. Yeah, Fine much wood. better. <laughs> Made no sense at all. <laughs> Porch to geese <laughs> makes all, much more. All it did was just end the conversation. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> all right. Anyway. Well, that was something I realized the other day, and I was like, oh, now it all makes yeah. sense. I never had to. Knock on wood. What I never had to. Nah. Instead of, I never had to knock on wood. So it's what's the song that's um knock on wood? The, 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 there's a song that's knock on wood, right? It, but does yeah, that make a bed? Knock, 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 knock on, on wood. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that from uh, Roadhouse? Yes, yeah, she does sing that yes. in Roadhouse. All yes. right. It was a cover when it was sung by the. It became a disco hit. Yes. And, and that was a cover at that point, was it not? That, yes. That's an old like Drifter song or something. Yes, yeah, Steve. I think you're right. So Emil Stewart. Be nice. <laughs> Emile Stewart made it the disco hit, and yeah. that was 1979. And then um, originally, Steve, it was Eddie Floyd ah. who did Knock on Wood. Uh, by the way, going back to the impression that I get, I'd always, like I said, I always half listen to those lyrics. Yeah. And when he goes, uh, I'm not a coward, I've just never been tested. I like to think that if I would have would pass, blah, 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 that whole thing. Yeah. Around that time, like uh, the AIDS scare was much, much bigger. And I thought it was, he was afraid to take an AIDS test. Because he would be afraid oh, of what might come up. Yeah. And because uh, everybody was getting tested. I got tested around that time uh, just to see if my philandering <laughs> would have led to HIV. Well, yeah, but thank God you're fine. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> Lightning. 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 Con wood. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Porch to geese. <laughs> Porch to geese was good. <laughs> With all this going on, I got a bizarre file sitting right here that I could... Now, bizarre. WMMR presents bizarre. Kristen and Steve's bizarre. bizarre File. Yeah. All right. Brought to you this morning by... Is this it? Yeah. Okay. Brought to you this morning by Manhattan Bagel. Place your order today for a sandwich tray from Manhattan Bagel. <laughs> 
What now? The same thing. <laughs> okay. Sure to satisfy even the hungriest fans on game day. Make game day sandwich trays from ManhattanBagel.com and you gather they cater. Manhattan Bagel. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. <sighs> Uh, police in uh, Broussard, Louisiana, are looking for suspects in the theft of monkeys. What? From a habitat at Zuzania over the weekend. Zuzania? Yeah, it's a, it's that, a zoo. Is that where Dracula's from? Uh, so, Zuzania posted the individual was unfortunately successful in stealing 12 squirrel monkeys. Oh, man. Uh, the remaining squirrel monkeys <laughs> have been carefully assessed. Investigation into the incident is, an, uh, is ongoing. Uh, the police chief, Olivier, said that uh, safety measures have been taken to secure the zoo and other animals. I'm amazed that all these thefts are taking place and that the animals weren't secured to begin with. Now everyone's coming to the conclusion, perhaps we need security in the zoo. He said, uh, we increased our patrols over there, this is the, the officer, uh, since they reported that to us and we've highlighted our security with more patrols. Uh, a squirrel monkey is about the size of a squirrel. So it's about a foot long, weighs two pounds, and if you keep them as a pet, they are known to be very destructive and aggressive. Oh, I hope it's tearing up the thieves' home. Uh, all the other animals at the zoo have been accounted for, and there are no public safety concerns at this time. It's like the, the, the zoo in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was an all-you-can-eat buffet for a Michigan boy last weekend. Six-year-old Mason Stonehouse was playing on his dad's phone before bedtime and spent about $1,000 on Grubhub orders. <laughs> I saw wow. this. The food started coming to the family's home, which is near Detroit, around 9 p.m. Saturday night, and it just kept coming. <laughs> the family's ring camera footage showed delivery after delivery coming to the door. Mason's dad, Keith, was bewildered until he found out what happened. And I said, he said, uh, I said, what's going on? Uh, why are you bringing me food? And it finally clicked with him that he let his son use his phone earlier that night. Um, and uh, he said that Mason, the son, was going to town with the Grubhub app. Mason ordered basically every food that ever existed, including shrimp, salad, <laughs> shawarma, chicken pita wraps, sandwiches, chili cheese fries, and multiple orders of ice cream. Jesus. They said they had so many sandwiches. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Well, they ended up, so it was so much food that his bank sent him a fraud alert, declining a $400 order for pizza alone. Oh, Thank oh God. My God. His father tried calling the restaurants to stop the orders once he figured out what had happened, but they told him to contact Grubhub. The leftover food was shared with neighbors and eaten as leftovers. So they had oh so God. much that they ended up having to pay for. Yeah, yeah. That, and it's it like, dicey territory. It's that yeah. takeout food. Like, it wasn't anything you could, like, return. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, well, he said, while all of the food was being delivered and I figured out what happened, I went to talk to Mason about it, and uh, he did it, and what he did, and this is... The only part that makes me laugh, he said, I was trying to explain to him that this wasn't good, and then he put his hands up and stopped me and said, Dad, did the pepperoni pizzas come yet? <laughs> oh my God. He said, I had to walk out of the room. He said, I didn't know if I was going to get mad or laugh. Uh, Grubhub said the company reached out to the Stonehouse family about their son's unexpected spending spree, and they offered him $1,000 worth of Grubhub gift cards. Well, that, oh. there you go. Yeah. Uh, Mason's parents said they tried to turn the six-year-old spending spree into a money management teaching moment. And then they beat him. They <laughs> grabbed his piggy bank and started taking money out, a coin uh, a coin for the pizza, a coin for the shrimp, and so on to try and teach him. Wow, it's really cheap. A bit of a lesson. Wait, and then one of the news stations talked to the kid, and the kid's comment was, I only have a penny left. So. <laughs> nice. Uh, a pigeon that had been dyed pink was rescued in Madison Square Park Monday and transported to Bur the Bird Rehabil Rehabilitation Center on the Upper West Side. Um, yeah, I'm hooked on meth. Uh, when the bird was found, it smelled strongly of perfume, uh, and its left eyelid was torn. It was also freezing cold and thought to be severely malnourished. Aww. According to Rita McMahon, the director of the Wild Bird Fund, which is now caring for the pigeon, uh, she said that uh, everyone there was horrified. McMahon said her organization... Uh, was unsure what chemical had been used on the pigeon, which has since been named Flamingo, but uh, emphasized that dyes are extremely dangerous to birds. In particular, dyes can be destructive to feathers, making it impossible for word birds to shed water and stay warm. McMahon said the young pigeon was even more vulnerable because it was a domestic bird that didn't know how to forage for food, making it easy prey for hawks and other predators. You know, it's despite everything, I, I still love New York. Uh, she said they simply don't have the street smarts. I'm, I'm not really street smart. Yeah. I'm more book smart. Uh, she did know why the bird, uh, she did not know why the bird was stained pink, but said her best guess, which was shared by pigeon advocates whom she consulted, 
is that it was used, used in a gender reveal party. I went down to the pond to see if I could find some friends, but I, I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thank you. All right, and then we'll do one more story, and we will wrap it up. Uh, let's go with uh, this one. Uh, 24 people were indicted in connection with a cross-country marijuana distribution ring that shipped thousands of kilos of pot and edibles from California to New York. We should have you guys bring stuff out. <laughs> Two of the suspects named in the criminal case, Dwight A. Singletary, a.k.a. Nut, <laughs> and Mackenzie Marsalis Coles, a.k.a. Kenzie. Nut and Kenzie. Are accused of operating a distribution network. And here's the deal. They used UPS and FedEx from small stores called Fast Pack and Ship in Fresno, California to ship all the, the why, drugs. Why did I just naturally assume that they, they, huh. they would have, like, drug-sniffing <laughs> dogs or ways of determining whether stuff like that was being shipped in bulk? Yeah, that's the thing. Big amounts. I oh, can see okay. that. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. In, the, in, in large amounts, they could probably catch it. But uh, a grand jury indicted the suspects that face charge of marijuana distribution, money laundering, firearms possession, all that stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, the authorities uh, said they had search warrants throughout the investigation. It turned up guns and ammunition at the what they call knock spots, which is where marijuana is sold through a slot in the door. Knock? Yeah. 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 <laughs> On wood? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, anyhow, uh, it, oh, they seized over $300,000 in cash and funds from bank accounts, several vehicles, including a Mercedes G63, which wow. is a pretty badass car. Uh, over $500,000 worth of jewelry, including a uh, Patek Philippe watch worth $114,000. Luxury items, including chinchilla fur vest and firearms and ammunition. I want that to be my new thing, my chinchilla fur vest. Yes. That would be my thing. Is what I have in uh, the Bizarre File for you this morning. All right, we're going to take another break. When we return, the lesson question for today, we'll get trash and music news too. So don't nobody go nowhere. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Don't nobody go nowhere. Kristen and Steve. On 93.3 WMMR. No, I didn't feel that at all. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, do you, you you seem at peace, Preston? I know you, you usually yeah. come in here screaming and throwing things around, and here you're at peace. I'm on enjoying your this. Do you, feel, you, do you feel anything? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just trying to relax, not move, and, you know, accidentally roll over and jam these uh, needles all the way into my skin. Well, as Heather said, this, is not, this isn't the optimum condition, but if you were to um, follow up and stay at it, do you have every confidence he, he would start to experience the benefits of it? Yes, certainly. Okay. He would start to see oh. benefits within a treatment or two. Within order. a treatment or yeah. two, Preston. Yeah, and I, I, I plan on it. You remember I uh, said earlier in the week that I think it would be nice if, if everybody uh, tried to do one nice thing. I want to thank my buddy Casey here. Ah, what do he do? Well, the past few days, I have come into the studio after doing my prep work yeah. uh, in the other room here, and then I come in, you know, about five minutes before the show starts to get ready to begin, and there has been a nice, piping hot mug of coffee sitting Wow. There. Isn't yeah. that... Wow. Isn't that as... That's made my wake week, dude. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and it might know, make my wake, too. <laughs> it made your wake. Hopefully not. I'm just planning ahead because, yeah. obviously, the whole Alabama thing. I mean, you, <laughs> know. you never know. You're what flying it? into a hurricane. But it made my week. Thank yeah. you. Simple little gesture now, like that. Today, I was only paying it forward because Steve brought me a nice... Uh, piping hot cup of coffee as well. You see? It's yeah. Spread. The movement it's like, is uh -huh. spreading. It's like cancer. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, it's no. uh, that's not good. It's like, no. it's, like, it's, like, it's like a wonderful thing. Yes. Yeah, so, it's so, awesome. So do that. Have a cup of coffee ready for somebody when they come in today. They'll be so delighted and happy. Spit in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. Don't, don't spit in it. Don't no, spit in it. it's, it's, it, it's, it's a wonderful, <laughs> you, you feel good when you pay it and, forward. And you know what else has been nice? What? Kathy's been extra gussied up the past couple of days. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 I think it's the glasses. Yeah, maybe it's you a You look really, look that's a you. sexy look on you. <laughs> you look, well, you looked much you. better until, yesterday. <laughs> until you just made that face, right, you well, ruined it. Dear God. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she, I just, I'm having issues with my contacts. And that's why I'm wearing my glasses. She smushed her face when she said, "Thank well, you." <laughs> 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 You do look great in glasses, though. You do. If you have uh, people with express, you have large, you have beautiful eyes. <laughs> um, 
thank you. <laughs> the glasses look. Uh, I think it, uh, girls with glasses. That whole thing is it's BS. Hot. I think it's. I, I think they look. You know, it's, it's a great. When my wife got these great frames, I'm like, keep wearing. They look awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wear glasses every day, but at night, right before bed. You know, where I'm in my house, I yeah. don't usually go out in them. But the past couple of days, so I've been wearing them. Why, why not the contacts? Sometimes do they irritate after a while. Uh, no, it's called pink eye. Oh really? Oh, <laughs> okay. So now we're going to move on to something that uh, that I. I, I've had in mind for a long time, and now it's the dream is coming true. I actually have sitting next to me a bag full of vibrators. Yes. Uh, so th- if that gives you because it's Friday, it's Friday, yeah. and <laughs> sometimes someone likes their butt tickled a little. Well, the best thing was Marissa comes in today, and she just walks up next to you. Her desk is directly next to mine. She t- uh, turns this bag upside down and just dumps five vibrators out on the table. But it's for there's a, a reason for this madness. There and it's is something that has caught your fancy. You saw a video. I did, and, and you said was, we got to try this. Probably a couple of years ago, and I'm like, why do, Why have we never done this? So we've created, actually, Casey created this. I, I said, dude, can you build me this? He said, well, let me look into it, and sure enough, he has done it. We have in our studio a vibrator race track. So we're going to do we're going to do a live test of this track here in our studio. And if this works, then we, we'll have an idea of something that we can expand on this okay. and I'll, I'll get you that in a moment. So we'll expand you, on dildos. Do you want to try this out? I do yeah. very All much. Right, so I'm going to reach in and just randomly grab one. Now you've never met these dildos. I've never met this so I I grabbed a <sighs> You picked a good one. Is this a pink one? Yeah. yeah so that's kinda, yours? Yeah, so this will be me okay. and then here. <laughs> I'm rubbing it on the microphone. The force is strong with this one. And, and we'll do a couple. We'll, we'll try a couple of these and see um, if it's if it's. I don't the, want that one. <laughs> just, just grab one, Preston. At the adult oh. store, is this the way most people select their stuff? Yeah, <laughs> they reach they, into they a big bag. bag. You reach in here. Goes. All right, thank you. I went with this one. You can see it vibrate. Oh, that, oh one's, that one's much louder than mine. Hang on. Big. Take it away. This is mine. And then yours. Okay, Casey has what I would call the hot rod. <laughs> what color is this? Copper? Uh, like a maroon. Nah, maroon. Like a burgundy. Burgundy, yeah. Burgundy. I'm okay. gonna like, Come mine on, is sort of a happy medium. All right, Kathy. There are two remaining. Well, I, 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 feel good. I feel bad that Marissa can't take part. Kathy's reaching in. First time ever her hand has been on a on a vibrator. Oh, she oh. got one that's kind of contoured oh, and, oh, yeah. and has a little curl at the end. Now yeah. this is a European model, Preston. <laughs> Turn that on, Kathy. Let's hear it. Ooh, that sounds almost you, nautical. The, the two of you just yeah. got, like, turned well, on, it, maybe. No, no, no. It sounds like it's singing. It's like, oh. it's like my voice. Hang on, let me, let me harmonize. Hold on. No. Does that sound? That pl- I'm playing chords on the guitar. Yeah. All right, stop. Hold on. Ready? Play it. <laughs> what is it? That's very cool. All right, Nate. Pull yours up. All right, so in uh, typical McElwain fashion, I got the skinny pink one. Yeah, you yeah. did. You got the littlest one. <laughs> this will get the job done fast. Hey, let's go racing, fellas. Yeah! yeah! Boogity, boogity, boogity. <laughs> uh, All right, so take your, take your chosen vibrator over to the tracks. We have to turn them all on. All right, they're placing them on the track. I'll call the race. Ready, and three, two, one, begin. And they're all, Steve's is taking off down the middle. Steve's already crossed the finish line. In second place is, who was that? The blue one. Casey! Casey came in second, followed by Nick McElwain, third. Look at me. I'm uh, Kathy Romano is fourth, and mine is not even halfway down yet. Oh, my God. That a is, despicable display. It's still just taking its time. Where's Kathy? Kathy's finished. Wow. Here comes mine rattling down. Still not across the finish line yet in three, two, one, and there it is. Oh, wow. Preston, does yours have the most girth? No. <laughs> Casey's does. <laughs> Surprisingly. <laughs> Let's put him back up on the on the track again, and we'll try. I'll turn the mic back up over there. You're out. Yeah, it's too fast. It's too fast. It's too fast. Man, do right. I know how to pick a fast dildo? Though? Get him in place. Let's oh my God, it. Preston, uh, we've been to both the Poconos and Daytona and Dover. That same sense. I mean, Dover. That same sense of excitement. 
right, we got them lined up. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Let's go race it. And here we go. Now we got a race. Oh, man. Casey's is off to the lead, but it's neck and neck. Nick McElwain is pulling ahead. Come on. <laughs> and it's taken a full length lead at this point, but you never know what might happen towards the end. Nick is still headed towards the finish line. He's hey. just about there. Casey's slowed down considerably. Nick, our winner. Woo! All right, now it's uh, it's neck and neck for uh -oh. third head and, and head. fourth. It's head and head. Kathy is making way here. Casey's is coming up. And Ooh. Kathy's is slowly catching mine, which has now trailed the third place. All right, Casey came in second. Kathy looks like she's going to take. I'm going to come in last place again. Again. Man. Look at this. And Kathy in fourth. All right. Me in last place. Son of a bitch. Now I want a new dildo. All right, our next guest is ready to go. Man, we've had so many people here in the studio, and we saved the rock and roll for last uh, because it's rock and roll time late in the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're happy to have him here this morning performing at the TLA tonight. Uh, please welcome Andrew W.K. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. Thank you very much. Good morning, sir. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Here. Yes, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, you know, as, as I said, rock and roll time, early in the morning. Difficult. You build up to it. Yeah, you build up. <laughs> it's sort of a way of calibrating your system, and it has been quite a lineup. I've been enjoying the uh, preview uh, tweets and posts that you guys have been putting up, so I feel very privileged to be included in such an illustrious group of folks. It well, is pretty you. amazing, but uh, yeah, there has been a, a great deal of excitement about you, and uh, you have a very loyal fan base, and that's got to be very rewarding. Rewarding, right? Well, uh, we're all in this party together, and I certainly don't take it for granted that there are other folks that identify with this celebratory attitude, and uh, we're all looking for the same thing, that kind of enthusiasm, that kind of joy, that kind of party fuel that helps you get through each day and make the most of it. Well, listen, I think it's, uh, it, it is a huge badge of honor when you have uh, reached a point in your career when you've actually become a, a Halloween costume. <laughs> yes, and, and I designed it that way to make it very easy, <laughs> as you can see. Anyone uh, can find a white t-shirt. The white jeans can be a little harder to find, yes. but uh, they're not always that hard. Even painter's pants will do if you don't have anything else. And, uh, yeah, you throw on a wig and a bloody nose, and you're good to go. <laughs> but generally, you go with denim for the, the pants? I white do. denim? Yes, the denim is durable. <laughs> Um, and I need durability. I need support. I need uh, yeah. that harder, thicker fabric. Uh, and denim is, absolutely serves that bill. So. It does. It and really it, does. The costume is cool enough that people in the know, you can kind of say, okay, they, they know. And other people like have no clue. So you, you can break up the crowd immediately. Yes. Uh -huh. It's a litmus test for partiers. <laughs> right. yeah. I used to wear white pants all the time when I was Did a you? Kid. Yes. <laughs> you and now, Mr. They Rourke. They weren't denim. They were just like, you know, whatever kind of fabric, uh, cotton or something like that. But I can't. I can't because like nine times out of ten, I'm walking around with skid marks, and I no, just that's can't the point. Let them. Oh. <laughs> that's the whole. Those are the hard-earned party stains. You got to showcase those yeah. Yeah. proudly. They're like bruises, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, we we wanted to welcome uh, somebody else here into the studio because she's a massive fan. She produces our afternoon show, so she came in very very early for this. Uh, Sarah Parker is yeah. here. Yeah. Hi. 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 And Sarah made it a point to be here uh, nice and early in the morning. What is it you love about uh, Andrew WK? Oh, my gosh. The fact that he is so very positive, you know, especially nowadays. Love so it. It's Friday song if I've ever heard. Nirvana Breed on 93.3 WMMR. Everything rocks. Absolutely. 1036. On this Friday morning, Word of the Week Prize, we will give that away in just a little bit. We're getting close to the end of the program. Uh, before that, we have some other things to give away, which we are going to do right about now because we have a pair of tickets to see the Impractical Jokers Drive, 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 Drive show. It's tonight. Uh, Nick McWayne's going to... Are you going to be there tonight? I can't make it. You can't make it? No, um, I was going to try to go, and now I can't. So, okay. uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to go. I love those guys. Well, whoever gets this answer correctly will get to go. And the question that we pose to you is, when listening to Kenny Knight, which hip-hop artist did Bill Clinton <laughs> request to hear? 215-263-WMMR. <laughs> Call right now if you know the answer. When he was listening to Kenny Knight, which hip-hop artist did Bill Clinton request to hear? 215-263-WMMR. We want to see if you know. While you call in, we will do the... The trash business is a gold mine. 93.3 WMMR with Preston and Steve's Hollywood Trash. Brought to you by Montage Mountain Resort. It's a cardboard classic Mountain Fest warm-up party hosted by Kathy Romano at PJ Willihan's in Bluebell. 
It's a chance to register for VIP tickets, and it's tomorrow night from 8 to 10 p.m. You can go to WMMR.com for details, so make sure you do that. Let's take a look at the trash. What's going on this morning, Steve? Well, Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis are reportedly making headway in their battle to decide child support issues. Sudeikis is apparently willing to move the court proceedings to Los Angeles to appease her, while Wilde is willing to admit that she has a square head. Oh, oh my God. Vanilla Ice revealing during an interview with Madonna... She once proposed to him after the two had been dating for just two weeks. Ironically, <laughs> that was the exact length of time that Vanilla Ice had a career. Huh? <gasps> and finally, a Chicago prosecutor has dropped two pending sex abuse charges against singer R. Kelly. Kelly says that if he ignored the multiple convictions that have him spending 30 years in prison, he has basically been proven completely innocent. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a Hollywood track. All right, we are looking for the answer to this. Um, when he was listening to Kenny Knight, which hip-hop artist did Bill Clinton request to hear 215-263-WMMR? And we're going to go to uh, Danny for the answer. Danny, good morning. Good morning, Gadzooks. Gadzooks to you. All right, Danny, which artist did Bill Clinton request? Bell Biv DeVoe. That is correct. Cool. And now you know Hang on a second, Danny. Got yourself a pair of tickets to see the Impractical Jokers. Drive, 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 drive tour, which is presented by the President and Steve Show. It's tonight at Freedom Mortgage Pavilion, and tickets are on sale now via Ticketmaster. Let's do music news. Now, Preston and Steve's Music News on 93.3 WMMR. Yeah! All right, brought to you by Family and Company Jewelers. And uh, if you are ring shopping this Valentine's Day, visit Family and Company Jewelers on Route 70 in Marlton, New Jersey, online at familyjewelers.com, South Jersey's diamond destination. Judas Priest has shared an update after Ozzy Osbourne revealed that he could no longer tour due to his ongoing recovery from uh, the accident that hurt his spine. Uh, the band sent their love to the musician and said they were looking at feasible opportunities to see each other again. Uh, in a statement, the band wrote, We send all our love and support for Ozzy and thank our fans in the UK and Ireland, especially for your loyalty by standing with us. Right now, we're looking at feasible opportunities to see each other again, and we'll post updates accordingly. Slipknot surprised their fans with an unexpected release of a standalone single uh, Bone Church. Bone Church? Yeah. That sounds fun. Uh, the band also released a video uh, for the single, which was directed by Sean Clown Crayon, entitled Yen Director's Cut Bone Church. I wonder if they're talking about that one church, Steve. That's made of bones. That's all bones yeah. on and, the inside and, of yeah, it. Yeah, skulls uh, and everything. In Europe, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. Not, um, not in France. The uh, catacombs? No, it's not no. the catacombs. There's an actual church. Oh. Made of bones. Um, that, uh, that has, but I know what you're talking about as well. Uh, speaking about the new track, Clown said, On the road, we have a jam room set up backstage at every show where we play. I love jam. Practice, warm up, and sometimes try out new ideas. Uh, he said, Bone Church started life in a jam room on the five, the Great Chapter Tour. And he said, We've been bringing it closer and closer to life ever since. And finally, here it is. Uh, this one is for the fans, a further vision deeper into Slipknot's history, which is still being written. He said, Enjoy. Bone Church. What is the name of that, Nick? The Sedlec Ossuary. Okay. It's in uh, the Czech Republic, and uh, there are over... Um, the Ossuary is estimated to contain the skeletons of between 40,000 and 70,000 people. <sighs> oh, my God. Man. Where are all your parishioners? <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> But, Steve, I, I, I don't know if I knew about this. Maybe we talked about it before, but the, it's actually quite beautiful, the way that they've decorated it. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. So you stop and consider that those are human bones. Uh -huh. And you can't get... We, Home Depot is completely depleted of the human bones uh, yeah. section. Got to go yeah. to Bone Depot. Yeah. <laughs> Bone Depot. Would be Hang good. on a second. You deserve something for that one. There you buddy. go, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Mick Fleetwood will pay tribute to his late uh, Fleetwood Mac bandmate, uh, Christine McVie, on the 65th annual Grammy Awards telecast this Sunday on CBS. Legendary drummer posted an, on Instagram that he would be saluting McVie along with Bonnie Raitt and Sheryl Crow. Those are good choices. Uh, McVie died last November 30th. She was 79, undisclosed causes. Uh, her latest solo set titled Songbird, a solo collection, uh, features guest appearances by Eric Clapton, Lindsey Buckingham, and Steve Winwood. Uh, so they're going to be doing that, which will be really, really nice. So the Grammys are this Sunday. Yes, that's right. Do, Steve, you're going to watch that. Are you going to watch Last of Us? Last of Us. Okay. Yeah.
I, I will record the, the Grammys. And then finally, uh, Steve, this is for me and you. 45 years ago, Saturday, 1978, the Bee Gees Staying Alive yeah. began its four-week run at number one. It was uh, it was just four weeks? Yeah, I thought it would be more oh than that. Oh, my God, yeah. Uh, the song along with the but the, the, the album was right. huge. The song along with the group's other 1978 number ones, How Deep Is Your Love, Night and Night Fever, uh, was part of the soundtrack for Saturday Night Fever. I think they probably bumped themselves out of the chart. Right? Which, bumped themselves maybe, yeah. maybe, which had uh, opened the previous December, shortly after Fever's runaway success. Barry Gibbs spoke about the music to Rolling Stone, explaining, I didn't know anybody was going to call it disco, but they did. We thought it was R&B. We liked the stylistics and the Delphonics and the people who sang falsetto. So that's what they thought they were creating, which it's... It's great music. With Steve and I are big Bee Gees fans. Absolutely. He went on. He went on to say that the physical and spiritual vibe of New York City is what drove the song, both as a record and a statement. He said, "Staying Alive" was born of those feelings and the lyric of the New York Times' effect on man. Uh, New York, in fact, was having that effect on the whole world at that point. Not so much California, but Studio Fifty Four, the nightlife, and the young people trying to find a future for themselves. Uh, where without this nightlife, they might not be. There might not be a future. And they said, I think uh, Travolta's character Tony depicted that. The bulk of those songs were written not with Saturday Night Fever in mind. I think the only one that was written specifically for the movie was How Deep Is Your Love. By the way, the soundtrack uh, for Saturday Night Fever went on to become the biggest selling soundtrack of all time, <laughs> selling over 16 million U.S. copies to date. Wow. Uh, the four, n four number one hits came off of that album, How Deep Is Your Love, Staying Alive, and Night Fever by the BJs, and then Yvonne Elman's If I Can't Have You. Yep. But <laughs> that was written by the, the BGs as well. Yep. Are you I'm left? sorry, what, what's going on? You said the BJs. And, uh, <laughs> I said the BJs? Oh, yes. I totally you missed did. that. <laughs> I, I, that's, that's awesome. I'm an infant this morning. And, no. Uh, no, no, that's I, a Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, by were, they the were always... BJs. Written, by, <laughs> written by the BJs. Yeah. <laughs> they were not, eventually knocked out by the rim job. <laughs> <laughs> Be right, Casey, could you play the latest one from the BJs? <laughs> followed up by the rim jobs. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. All right. That's um, right. So wait, that soundtrack is... Yeah. <laughs> I totally missed yeah. it. <laughs> that soundtrack uh, sold more than... Because, I like, Forrest Gump was... And stupid. <laughs> he was pretty stupid. You can't say that. Oh, I'm sorry. He was intellectually challenged. I thought the Big Chill was the biggest, but uh, I'm wrong. No. I, it's it, my source yeah. says it was the the biggest selling soundtrack of all time, selling over 16 million copies. You got to remember that that you know um, to date. Yeah, and those songs were they debuted on that album. Yeah. So and they yeah. were all like originals. Right. The Big Chill was a time. collection of pre-existing. As yeah, was yeah. Forrest Gump. There were right. no there were no um, originals in Forrest Gump, right? Uh, I don't think so. Stay in Gump and <laughs> Gump Fever. <laughs> All right, anyway. Uh, well, you can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a little slow. Not good at talk. <laughs> Ironically, he was very fast when he ran. He was. Actually, he was. Yeah. Yes, he was very, but very not quick. walking. Right. All right, anyway, we should stop now. <laughs> I can't believe I said BJ's and didn't even notice that. Oh, man. I totally missed it. I, you know, I looked at you, Steve. You didn't. I was no. like, okay, because if you. I'm a, such a Bee Gees fan that I will even, for, uh, I won't acknowledge a BJ. Mm. <laughs> we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back and wrap up the show. So please stay with us. We'll be right back. Preston and Steve on 93.3. 3 WMMR. For two years, it disappeared. The shining light of positivity. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm thinking that perhaps you should explain what partying means to you because someone who's wow. not familiar with Andrew WK might think that's just drinking all the time. So what does partying mean to you? Well, it certainly could mean drinking all the time for someone. I'm not really here to tell someone what it is. I guess I chose that word because I thought it was actually something that everyone did understand, that everyone was familiar with that. It didn't take a lot of uh, explanation or elaboration that a four-year-old or a 94-year-old, I should say a 93-year-old or a 33-year-old, they all understand in some way how to enjoy the fact that they're not dead. And that's really the beginning and the end of the party mindset. Um, you can apply it as vastly or as simply 
simply as possible. Uh, there's a great video of Andrew, if you haven't seen it on uh, on YouTube, you can find it. He's being interviewed, and uh, the interview is asking a pretty long, drawn-out question. <laughs> and in that time, Andrew's face contorts into um, a, a scowl of sorts. And then you answer the question very quickly. And uh, it's hilarious. It's got over, like, 3 million views. But are, are you, uh, faces, is that something you were always good at as a kid? Were you making, uh, you know... Gurning? You know, yeah. Yeah, hamming it up. I yeah. mean, the, the face is uh, a very fun thing if you can control it. Uh, I don't have complete control. I think in that uh, s video you're talking about, maybe some kind of demon took control yes. of my face. But <laughs> very much so. Let them let them have have at it. Let I mean, them out. Yeah, let them have their fun with my my face. <laughs> you seem to be obsessed with pizza. Well, uh, who isn't, really? I mean, even That's the person true. who hates pizza the most, they still are engaged in the phenomenon. You have a, a, gu a guitar? Uh, sh uh, look like a pizza slice. I right? have a pizza slice guitar. Which is pretty badass. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to the great folks at ESP Guitars for making it for me. Yeah, very nice. And we um, just made another one, too. Yeah, a taco I, guitar, right? That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Literally, it's just days old. It's that. It's still oh, a very wow. fresh. Yeah, I've only played it, I think, maybe five times now on stage. We just got it during this tour. Okay. Hey, Andrew, with the, with your signature look, the uh, uh, the whites and, and the, the bloody nose, did the bloody nose happen by accident at some point? And then you were like, hey, that's that looks kind of cool. That was part of the initial vision I was presented with, so I executed huh. that um, in a rather painful way. But I have gotten bloody noses on stage by accident, much to my dismay. Uh, right. Most of them were um, accidentally self-inflicted, meaning I kicked myself in my own face. When I was trying to do a very impressive high kick um, in New Orleans, for example, I saw a friend in the, the crowd I hadn't seen in years. I said, I'm going to really blow his mind. I'm going to do the highest kick of all. And it was so high that I almost kicked through my own head. Wow. But I got a bloody nose. I did break my nose that night as well, which, as you can imagine, is, is rather painful. But the uh, adrenaline got going and the blood started flowing and people thought it was all just part of the show. Hey, listen, man, thanks for getting up early and stopping by. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about partying. Of course. Have a great time in Philadelphia. Andrew WK, yeah. friend. We love this guy who's in our studio. He's uh, he's a great guest. He's a great star, and uh, he's got a film that he is promoting. Uh, it's coming up on Netflix, and it is called Wheel Man. Let's welcome him back to our studio, Frank Grillo. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. It's good to see you again. Yeah, I miss you guys. We miss yeah. you as well, bud. You came in and you, you blew us away the first time we had you in, in the studio. Great stories and full of energy. And we, <laughs> obviously you were attached to something. We were just, you know, it was the, the, the Purge and obviously the, the Marvel Universe as well. Got to tell you, man, the Wheelman is a solid movie. Yeah, you saw it's it. Your, I did see it. Yeah. on uh, uh, the. We got the advance. Uh, uh, it's going to be on Netflix, yep. which is turning out to be Valhalla for these kind of films. It's amazing. I mean, this film, you know, cost five million bucks for me. My, my buddy Joe Carnahan and I. Joe Carnahan uh, is the the gray. Yeah, the gray uh, and and uh, smoking aces and and narc and uh, love his stuff. Yeah, he's great. So we're partners with this company War Party, and we we made this movie for like five and a half million bucks, which which is insane because you know, but you that's the that's the deal. You're producing this movie. Yeah, is your first pro and really we you know boots on the ground like we produced them. Yeah, so yeah. you did it in in, uh, in Boston. In Boston. Okay, yeah, at night. So that's a, a point I want to make about this movie, which makes it so unique. You have the first a first time director Jeremy. Rush, who wrote yeah. the, the screenplay. By the way, the guy was a PA for 13 years. Right. right. Never Absolutely. directed anything. This this yeah. idea that he has, which is very cool. That so you get the you get you're in this car and you're you're a wheelman. You're a, a, a driver for hire for for criminals. Right. You're gonna go on this. Uh, you take these guys out. They're gonna rob a bank. But you get this call. The guys when they get back in the car are gonna kill you. And now there's this stuff, and you're off and running, and it's all, it, it has everything I love about a period of time in Hollywood, 70s movies. That's it. High, like a high you're good. Wait a minute. Did you talk to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're, you're, you, when you turn badass, <laughs> there's a scene where you grab a guy, you know, you pull up. But the, to get back to my original point, there's angles from the car. When you leave the car, a lot of times you're seeing you through the windshield, and you're hearing... And you bring the guy back. And so yeah. the car itself is a character it is. It in, is. in the thing. And so you have your claustrophobia, but it's also your one way of getting away from the crap. Yeah. And I and there are angles and stuff uh, that I thought were just really brilliant. For a first-time director, I'm like, yeah, he, that was good. all him, too. This guy was knocking on trailer doors for 13 years and writing scripts. And he sent it wow. to Carnahan, and Carnahan read it. And gave him some notes, and they started dialogue, and uh, he sent it to me, and I was like, man, this is really interesting. Like, this could be really bad or really good. I, we brought it to our agency. They brought it to Ken, 
and Netflix bought it like the next day, and we were making the movie in a month and a half. That guy was knocking on doors for 13 years. But it took, it took like a, a so uh, Carn it Carn if, if the, not for Joe Carnahan, it wouldn't have happened. What did you not anticipate being a producer of a movie that caught you off guard? Um, you know, I, we, at one point, this movie was going to be 23 days, which is kind of Herculean in right. itself. And we were like, I think we could save money. Let's make it 19 days. <laughs> so I shot like 35 pages of dialogue the last two days of the film. Wow. So, so we could save like $11. <laughs> well, because it's, it's, you're on the other side of the yeah. uh, of the of the, uh, yeah. the check now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you're you now to save. As an actor, you might piss him on as I, I need a little bit more time or whatever. On the producer side, he's yeah. just saying, can we do this for cheaper. Yeah. I have to bring this up too. Uh, doing the research on this movie, Wolf Warrior Two, which yeah. is explain where this is. Well, we have not heard Wolf much War about this movie no, because it's not in America. But globally, how about this? So I do a movie in China last year, right? And it's a big deal because you want a Chinese kind of presence. But uh, uh, it had there had been Wolf Warrior One. It was very successful, made like a hundred million bucks. And they, they paid me a lot of money to yeah. go to China. J Joe and Anthony Russo produced it. They produced, they're the, the directors of uh, Captain America. Yeah. They said, go do this. It's our whole stunt crew is going to really. And so I went and did it and made a ton of money. The movie's going to make a billion dollars. Oh, my God. It's like the, the highest. It is the second highest domestic grossing film ever behind Star Wars. Yeah, what? and I play a character named Big Daddy. I'm the bad American. Yeah, okay. Wait, uh, you have okay. to see the jacket I'm wearing. <laughs> all right, we're looking <laughs> at the show. It. We're looking we're, at the trailer. This was all shot right in now. China, by the way. <laughs> I am, and I'm going to say this on the radio: the biggest American star <laughs> <laughs> in China. <laughs> yeah, this Dude, movie is a phenomenon. I was okay. reading the wow. numbers yeah. on it, like surpassing. Yeah, you got to realize globally where this movie falls. Well, yeah. we, into we, the list. we live in this tiny little bubble in the United States, right? And, and there's a, I mean, there are more people in China, yeah. meaning there's there's more money to be made, I guess, over oh, there. Yeah. Well, yes. that's, that's what happens, and they, they talk about you opening up in other markets and so on and so forth. Their movie opens up in India and does well. The Bollywood, you know, is is a yeah. Whole I mean, this is literally the second. This is only behind Star Wars. It's, it's <laughs> like, so, like Joe Russo called me and goes, "You are a unicorn now in China. <laughs> We're gonna go make Lethal Weapon." <laughs> With you and a, and a Chinese movie star, we're going to go do Lethal Weapon next year. So when you, when, right. when you play a bad guy wow. and you you're known for the you're sort of a, a bad yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. And, and, this. and I played it campy, like I was over okay. the top. Oh yeah, oh, that's in China. Be I didn't think anybody was going to see it. <laughs> 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 I was like Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman. <laughs> 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 that's great. Look, okay. that's Big Daddy. Oh, man. Yeah, man. I represent everything bad about the world. Wow. <laughs> hey, where did you guys shoot uh, for Captain America Civil War? Was that in Africa? Uh, part part of it was in, I think part of it was in Africa. I didn't. I was always in uh, in Atlanta. And by the way, Crossbones is not dead. Is he dead? I don't know. He seems dead. <laughs> Come on, man. He seems dead. Dude, I want him. He seems dead. We, uh, he, I was just down at Marvel, you know, with every said Nobody mentioned that he wasn't dead. <laughs> He's dead. They don't. That's one of the. <laughs> I think he's, he's definitely dead. dead. He's, he's definitely dead. dead. He's dead. Man. That no, uniform's dead. too freaking No, cool. no, he's dead. I know. So I'm too old. Listen, I think at some point they're going to have to change the Avengers. We're going to have a long You too. Beautiful song. Beautiful day. 93.3 WMR. It's everything that rocks. It certainly is. We're seeing some sunshine, that's yes. great, but it is cold today, cold and windy today. It's going to be even colder tomorrow. As Kathy said earlier this morning, temperature's dropping. Yeah, and very windy today. Yeah, as the day goes on, so it's going to be biting cold. And then tomorrow's high is going to be like 29 degrees. By the time we get to like 3 o'clock this afternoon, it's going to be like 25 degrees. It's going to be cold. <laughs> really, really cold. And yet, cold. no warming up on the other side. Uh, yeah, by the time we get to Sunday and Monday, it warms back up into the 50s, which is going to be good. Uh, we have a lot of things uh, going on before I do the thank yous and all that stuff. Uh, I, I got handed. People keep ham handing us stuff to send with yeah, these guys yeah, on yeah. the trip. Uh, and uh, Bill is a guy who fills our vending machine. Yes. Uh, here, great guy. And uh, always has good stuff saying he's a big Eagles fan. He is. So he gave me to give to Casey an entire box of Rosenberg's peanut chews. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it won't need to take the whole box. I probably do. Yeah, I, so. I don't think so. No, I yeah. think I should. Listen, I'm the superstitious guy. I should probably take the whole box home with me this weekend to watch. Oh, right. Yeah. And then if there's any left. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give that to you, Case. And then, Marissa, we, we got more uh, we got more deceased ashes. <laughs> 
Uh, and Marissa gave me this. I guess this is the envelope that the ashes are in. It says, in this envelope is a small amount of my dad's ashes. Bob uh -huh. Moomy. Bob Moomy was a diehard Eagles fan. He was also extremely superstitious. Like, full-blown silver linings playbook, throw you out of the house if you're oh bad luck God. superstitious. Oh, perfect. He sent me to wake my sleeping baby because uh, things went south when she fell asleep during a Dallas game. Oh, my gosh. These ashes have spent the season with me, and I feel like they're not only lucky, but that he'd be the first to chase off any bad juju. Side, <gasps> side note, my dad's band had a song called Sanctuary played on a show called, uh, I can't read that. What does that say? Uh, Begat Street? Oh, Beat Street. Oh, Be oh that's an E. Uh, Beat Street on MMR back in 1989. Uh, he was always very proud of this and would be happy to know that he was going to be uh, going to go to Arizona for an Eagle Super Bowl on behalf of his favorite station. Thanks for this opportunity. And that is from uh, Rachel Moomy. And she wrote Go Birds on there. That's awesome. Love it. So Casey, I, like, I like the Ashes stuff. I feel like this, this is yeah. good luck. Yeah. I think it can be really good luck. And it's, you can't get more heartfelt than that if yep. you're yeah. wanting to create a good vibe. Only, wouldn't it be great if there was, uh, like, a big Lebowski moment? Right, oh, yeah. Don't see ashes <laughs> <out>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any time, by the way, there was a, there was an ashes moment in uh, The White Lotus. Uh -huh. And, like, before they even do it, I'm like, the wind is going to blow. I think the ashes are going to get in somebody's face. Was it you, every movie. Was it you and I, Nick? Or was it you, we, when we did the wood chipper with yes. the ashes, it blew back on our face. Yeah, we were oh, standing outside. Yeah. So we ate some dead guy. In the back oh. parking lot. Yeah. Wow. Oh, gosh. It was fun. Uh, so anyhow, uh, Casey will be glad to take this on the, his. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're watching the Big Lebowski scene. <laughs> it's horrible. Uh, Casey's big game adventure, John the Road again. I'm excited for you, man. This is going to be a really cool trip. Me too. I can't believe you're doing it again. I know. You're really doing it, aren't we, buddy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know. I can't believe you guys went for it. Uh, I just, I, I threw it out there, and uh, you said, yeah, I'm kind of into it. So. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, you had, like, I just feel like you had to go out there, even though it's another road trip, like how it, it it needed to happen, and now the fact that it's another road trip is okay. It's and, the most obvious impetus to do it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I am this superstitious. Let's say I get out there, and Burt Kreischer is going to be out there, right? And he's probably going to the game. And he said, hey, here's a, I, I actually have a ticket uh, free of charge. I, and I'm not just saying this because I know it's not going to happen. I, wouldn't, I would not go. Uh, I you wouldn't would, go? Nope. Oh. I, I, mean, I, I want to be with my family. Okay. All right. All right. Family. All right. Yeah. Is Gary coming over? No. <laughs> No. No. Right. No, but I want to be with my family. I was with my family last time, and yeah. it, the night was magical. It if was they, great. Or when they win, you want to be with your family. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I get, get it. it. All right. By the way, we're going to mention Gary again here in a moment. I'll get to that in a second. Oh. In the meantime, let's see what's up with Ringo over here. How you doing, man? Ringo? <laughs> yeah. You're wearing a bunch of rings. I just, it uh, just popped in my head. Ringo. How you doing, Pierre? Oh, fine. Thanks. Wonderful. Um, I was um, in a little bar right off of Broad Street uh, with my tape recorder, uh, when they won last time, and um, I uh, I went to a party for the first half of the game, and then I went into town for the second half of the game and found this cool little bar, and the second they won, everyone started pouring mm -hmm. out into the street. Ah. Yeah. And um, it was the wildest thing I'd ever experienced. I'd been there in the street when the Phillies won a World Series, but when the Eagles won, it was entirely different. I wonder... I, a, I want you to do the same exact thing that you did last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, but I wonder... If people are doing the same exact thing that they did back in 2018. I, and I, I don't even wonder. I know that people are going to yes, do but I, I bet I, you they are. What I uh, wonder, at least a tremendous amount of them are. Yeah, I wonder what percentage of people are going to be doing the same exact thing with the well, same exact people. I interviewed these two young guys, and the guy was wearing his grandfather's Eagles jersey. Love it. Yeah, and who never lived to see it happen. Yeah, and, you know, and uh, he had tears in his eyes as he was telling me, and I just thought it was so cool. Uh, so, um, the, yeah, that's it is it's good stuff. So uh, there's a certain degree of superstition that's followable there, and then there's Casey. Yeah. Uh, but what this you call thing, stupid station? Isn't that cool? It's actually it's it's got a lot of percussion to it. Yes, a piece yeah. of the Philadelphia Airport Tower, right? Yeah, that's a piece of the Airport Tower. Wow, wow. it's going with Casey and company. It's kind of Eagles Green too. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I don't know if they painted it or, or if no. It was I think the whole that color they because they sent a, a picture of the side of the building and there it, you it go. did have a strange. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. Clearly, it. That's yeah. Fantastic. So.
Um, yeah. And all the signatures. It's wonderful. We love this. We have a piece of the battleship New Jersey that's going. Right. We've got uh, a whole bunch. you got a bunch of dead people going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Someone sent a long text in yesterday, and I meant to, and they said, please let me go, or please let, well, I don't know what they wanted to bring. <laughs> and and it was so long, and I meant to get back to them, and then the text disappeared as they continued to scroll down. Um, so hopefully that person, man or woman, got in touch with uh, one of you. But yeah. uh, people can't just come and drop the stuff off. Well, they though, did this right? morning. No. Yeah. We did. We collected this morning, yeah. and we might have an opportunity for people to do it uh, Monday morning as well uh, okay. before we send these, go- these guys off. And I think the plan is to send them off around 9 a.m. or something yes. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Okay. So we'll see about that. Uh, but we do have a prize giveaway. You ready right. for the letter? Here yes. we go. Preston and Steve on 93.3 WMMR. Now, the Daily Letter. And the Preston and Steve show is brought to you today by the letter... N as in Nancy. N as in Nancy. Okay, let's take caller number 6 at 215-263-WMMR, and we'll let you take a shot at winning our prize, which would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Uh, by the way, I forgot to thank uh, Kelsey Cook. Kelsey uh, Cook. was on the program this yeah, morning. She was great. She was awesome. Yeah, she was good. She was I a lot her. of fun. Yeah, I did too. She'll be at Helium Comedy Club uh, tonight and tomorrow. Whatever you do, don't play her foosball for money. No. Yeah. <laughs> She's like a world champion. Uh, but she'll uh, be at Helium Comedy Club, which is really cool. Uh, what's up on your show today, Pierre? Uh, well, we will have uh, Brian Adams and Joan Jett tickets to give away. That just went on sale this morning. Uh, some other shows just went on sale, too, but we'll do a combined block of Joan and Brian in the workforce blocks. Uh, Alice Cooper's 75th is tomorrow. We will celebrate with Alice and uh, Dave Davies, a guitar player of the Kinks, brother of Ray, is uh, celebrating a birthday today, so we will get to that. And it's also uh, the day the music died, the day the plane crashed. So I think wow. on vinyl we will probably play that nice long American Pie, nice. uh, which we tend to do usually every year. I think we still have it. I th- thought you did Joan Jett and Brian Adams yesterday. Uh, not to the best of my you knowledge. You mentioned something about he, he said something about that, I right? I gave away tickets yesterday. Okay, all right. Uh, um, all right. But uh, no, I didn't even play them yesterday. I okay. played Joan the day before because uh, it was the anniversary of Crimson and Clover hitting number one by Tommy James and the Shondells, and I played her version and gave away tickets. But I uh, haven't didn't play anything yesterday. Okay. Can, you I, know, can I request Cuts Like a Knife from Brian Adams? Yes. I love the guitar solo in that great. song. Great. Yeah. Uh, it's a great record. We it played is. it. I mean, yeah, it's funny because you don't think of him that much anymore, but we played him like we would play Shine Down and, sure. you know. Run to You was Caesar. probably a big hit. Oh, my God. We played at least eight songs. You know what? Nine song songs I, from him. To, uh, there are a bunch of songs from him. The Kids Want to Rock actually has got yes. some balls to it. Yeah. And uh, the, with him and Tina Turner, It's Only Love. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's a great love. song. Great. Yeah. Great he tune. is wonderful. Uh, he's a great performer. Yeah. He's got great songs. And uh, I, so it's an interesting lineup because uh, you wouldn't think of him going out uh-huh. with Joan Jett. And yet the two of them bring something entirely different to the plate. So I think it'll be cool. I like it. Uh, I want to thank, or no, I want to get a winner. I want to yeah. get our phones. And we have Debbie, who is caller number six. Hi there, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, job donkers. I don't care. She said job donkers. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, Debbie, what is the word of the week, please? Oh, I hope to Jesus it's learn. Great day in the morning. <laughs> That's correct, Debbie. And you're going to. So awesome. Well, you're going to get to stock up at the Heart Rock Cafe of Philadelphia because we're going to give you a $250 gift card for the cafe and a $250 gift card for the Hard Rock shop as well because they're celebrating their 25th anniversary in Philadelphia. So, congratulations, Debbie. Thank you, guys. Case, look for me in Arizona. Ah, oh, she's going to be out in Arizona, Case. Oh, well, then let's hook up. Yeah, okay. When are you leaving? Are you driving? You flying? What's going on? Flying Wednesday. Okay, uh, flying awesome. Wednesday. We'll see you out there. All right. All right. Awesome. Stay tuned to find out where he'll be and when, Debbie, okay? I will. All right, we'll see you later. Hang on the line, and we'll get your info. And make sure that you stop by the Hard Rack for Hard Rock. Hard Rack. Yeah. <laughs> are these silicone? The, BJ, the BJs are playing there. <laughs> uh, and uh, giveaways through February 8th, and you can reserve your table today. I want to thank our sponsors, Preston and Steve Show. Brought to you today by Duncan. The President and Steve Show runs on Duncan, as does Casey's Big Game Adventure. Also brought to you by Acme Markets, Fresh Foods, Local Flavors, and by Trinity Rehab at locations all over. Now open in King of Prussia, trinity-rehab.com. Uh, next week, we have, oh, you know it's going to be great? Dick Vermeil will yes. be joining us. Yes! 
next week. That will be awesome. Uh, we will also have Allison Bree and Dave Franco in the studio next hey. week. Married couple. And it's Gary Lauer's birthday. Oh! So we'll have to do something special with Gary. I don't know. We'll find out. And, of course, it's Super Bowl week, and Casey and company for Casey's big game adventure are John the road again. <laughs> They're headed out and about, so we kick that off on Monday. It's going to be exciting. That's it. We're done. Rage on. Have a great weekend. Keep it in nooch, and we'll see you later, gang. Bye-bye. <laughs>